I think I have a bat in the cave. Let me see. I don't see nothing. All right, it's gone. I don't see shit. <laughs> Hi. <gasps> Hello, I'm alive now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's amazing, like, what the comforts, like, little, the littlest comforts can do. Showering and, then... and like, rose water spray on my face. Nice. And I had it. I made myself a scrambled egg. Nice. And a hash brown. And some coffee. You feel brand new, don't you? I feel like a new person. <laughs> I thought a shower might help. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I actually did lay back down on the couch for like another 20 minutes when I hung up with you before. Good. I just need to. I just need to do it. <laughs> it has been quite a long year. I'm exhausted. Are you exhausted? I'm, I'm really exhausted. tired, but it also feels very fast. Yeah, it went by quick. Because we're here and neither of us were, we've been putting this off for a couple of days, partially because like we're so tired, but also because maybe there's a little part of us that doesn't want year one to be over. I know. Because it's all, it can't, can never have a year one again. I know. But we learned a lot. I feel like we leveled up pretty quickly. <laughs> I mean, there's still some leveling up we could do. Oh yeah. But for year one, I would say it went off pretty, pretty well and we were very consistent. Great success. I know Great we got success. to like have a few doors open and a few things that are like, Jesus, this could really be a, a thing for quite some yeah. time. I hope so. I hope You're so. Hoping. Yeah. I hope so. Gonna manifest the fuck out of 2024. Right? Manifest the fuck out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm Christina. I'm Justina. Welcome to Magnolia Street, your one and only Practical Magic fandom podcast, where every week we give you new episodes every Friday, Practical Magic related, from yeah, yours truly. We, we deep dive into the books and the movie. So, you know, if you like one or the other, or you like both, or even if you don't like both, maybe we can persuade you and change your mind. Right. And I feel like that's been the case with like some people, some of the people that listen to us are like, mm -hmm. I didn't even know there were books. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, totally four, yep four of them and we talk about them all and we spoil them all for you so <laughs> this is probably the, the worst episode to start off on if you're yeah don't start here this is our last one of the season so... also don't start on number one either actually no i lied this is not our last one of the season we have one more song episode coming up that's going to close the season out and then we start the next se the new mm -hmm. season yeah. close it out with a bang and a song yeah but this episode we're not really talking about any one thing in particular, any kind of topic or anything like that, but this episode is going to be more so, more of like a look back on our year, right? And all that we've accomplished, all the cool people we've been able to con get in contact with and connect with. We have uh, some of our favorite moments over the past year that just had us rolling. Belly laughs all around that are just going to be a lot of fun, I think, to look back on. Totally. We have some questions we're going to answer. And also, Justine and I finally got to watch Practical Magic together and got to do a commentary over it. So stick yeah. around for that. There's a timestamp if you want to hop right to that. But guys, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dude, okay. <laughs> Christina put together like a two minute reel of our entire commentary and we are just the most annoying people ever. So if you ever annoying. plan on watching this movie for the first time, do not watch it with us. We will right. ruin the whole thing for you. Yeah. I think I'll put that reel out after the episode comes out. Yeah. So at least there's content, you know, there's yeah. a substantial substance content. Right. I forget who it was. I think it was Kim. I don't remember who it was. They posted a reel or like, you know, they reposted somebody's TikTok and it was this guy talking about if somebody was going to give you $100,000 to recite every single word to any movie, what movie would it be? And then like the split screen was like Practical Magic. And then I actually reposted it. I was like, I'm pretty sure they would give us $100,000 to shut the fuck to up. To not do this. It's just so <laughs> fucking annoying. About Most of the time, it's one of us was saying a line and then the other one would say, it right afterward in like a different voice which was like <laughs> we just doubled up the whole script basically oh it was, it was good and gee i wonder why the whole thing was an hour without like hour and 20 
Yeah, so. that's crazy. Yeah, so I think for Patreon, it will be visual. I was able to keep the video. And then we'll yeah. just intersplice where what scenes we're looking at over there. So if you want to see us being absolutely ridiculous go to our yeah. patreon under the eight dollar tier our rose yeah. tier check it out um so this year was like me and christina had never met when we started this project so this year we actually did get to meet this past month when we recorded our first single in boston and then by the time this comes out we'll have had our salem trip already <gasps> that's right it's 12 oh days God. away from right now this month is just this year is just flying by remember like when Salem was so far away, we're like, oh, mm -hmm. when we go to Salem, when we go to Salem. I remember talking to you last year about when I got back from my Salem trip. Yeah. Yeah. And we did, there was a whole special. It's on Patreon about all your, uh -huh. you, where you guys went. Yeah. But yeah, this year we got to, we got to meet a new friend. We got to meet a person. We got to travel. We got to host interviews as well as give interviews to a few different people that was really weird it's so surreal other people uh, yeah it is surreal and we still have so many people that we want to talk to which season two or i feel like we're, we might up the ante with the interviews a little bit maybe mm -hmm. i don't know i feel like there's so many people that we just like we haven't gotten to talk to this year just because yeah. i guess we were trying to like establish our roots kind of get our you know get in the but, swing but... in the groove of like you know what our format is and like grow into like w who we are as podcasters and just trying to we're find still our like tiptoeing around each other, learning about each other, yeah. and now we're full on like bitch, <laughs> <laughs> bitch. We also got to record our a single together. We got, I got to experience like recording studio Justina yeah. for the first time. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. At the time you guys are listening to this, when this comes out, which is October twentieth, we should still be in the swing of our campaign, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know what you, the end date is, to tell you the either. truth. I feel like it's November sometime, but I'm really not sure. So if you guys do want to support our campaign and help us get the rest of our album recorded, we recorded one single so far. And if we meet our goal on the Plaid Dog Recording website, which we'll post the link in our show notes down below. And also, you can also find that in our Koji bio on our Instagram. If you can help us meet our goal we will be able to go back to Boston to Plaid Dog Recording Studios and record four more songs for you guys and hopefully release this as an EP. So I I don't know who needs this um, EP in their life, but we feel like we just, we need to do this. We just need <laughs> to do it, right? And it just, it's kind of bittersweet to have to pick only four other songs from yeah. our catalog of songs because there are other songs that I think encapsulate P Practical Magic as a whole better. However, we're going to go be optimistic and say we're going to be able to make those other four EPs because there's five altogether. We're still writing. So right. who right. knows how many more we have after this? This campaign is going to end on November 2nd, 2023. Okay. So there when go. this comes out, there's only about a week, two weeks <gasps> left. So guys, please help us go, out. Go check out our, our link. Go get your donations in, please. please. So yeah, yeah, go check that out. Yeah. And also we do have a lot of cool perks um, in store for whoever does support us. Like we have some stickers, we have signed posters. We have a whole like, I think digital like PDF of all of our, um, I guess all the stuff like lyrics and all Anything the behind that we, the scenes yeah. clips and like it's yeah. like a digital portfolio Pack package yeah we have yeah, hours of studio footage yeah. so yeah <laughs> lots of good stuff for you guys if you guys want to help support us we you know we'd love to show you some of that uh behind the scenes stuff yeah who knows where practical magic concept music could take us right that is a very big possibility and we're, we're hoping we can share that with everybody yeah we're just going through this with an open mind and just you know, being open to any opportunities that come our way. And we are just so grateful for all of the people who have opened door those doors for us thus yeah. far. And Absolutely. We can't, can't wait to keep going. Absolutely. So, yeah. Are we ready to dive into this episode? We got some lists happening here. I don't even know yeah. what we're about to cover, but we wanted to try and do a giveaway. Uh -huh. Is that running until we get to 1000 followers on Instagram? That's what we're yes. doing. Yes. Cool. Yeah. So uh, we're going to keep this giveaway running until we reach a thousand followers and we will be giving away one t-shirt of your choice from our Teespring shop, one Magnolia Street season one poster. And it's got all of our show dates on it, kind of like a tour style kind of tour poster, but it's got all of our uh, podcast episodes on it. 
And then um, also you'll win a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with us and you can interview us, ask us anything you'd like, and we'll edit the interview and feature it on an upcoming episode in season two. By the time you guys are hearing this episode, we will have some kind of giveaway post uh, pinned to the top of our Instagram feed on our on our grid so um there's just like you know your typical rules like you must be following our instagram at magnolia street podcast on on instagram that i uh, reshare our giveaway post it in your stories tag a couple friends and then some of the bonuses that i thought would be would be cool uh these count you can get like 20 extra entries for Ooh. these bonuses okay oh, shit. So this is a good way to increase your cool. chances of winning our giveaway. So if you leave us a written review on Apple Podcasts and comment below in our Instagram giveaway post the name that you submitted your review under so we can keep track of like who is entering their reviews, then you, we will give you those 20 extra entries toward winning this giveaway. Nice. Um, also, story reposts of our main giveaway posts on Instagram, those count as five entries per day. It's just a nice way to get those, to bump up your chances of winning. And also, we just really would love more Apple Podcast written reviews. Sure, yeah. <laughs> right? Because those are going to help us get, you know, get featured or get more discovered in the feed and people's algorithms so yeah yeah your your reshares and you guys talking to all your friends about what we're doing and all the different projects we have going really really helps because justine and i have like little tiny followings on youtube and, and yeah. instagram but guys you're just helping spread the word we haven't done any advertising for this we're just using utilizing hashtags and stuff yeah. so please use our hashtags um and tag us and anything practical magic related be like oh my gosh go over to the, the magnolia street would love this yeah that helps out tremendously and word of mouth is like honestly so impactful i think maybe even more so than like targeting like ads i just feel like you guys have the power the fans have the power so yeah and you know your friends better than we do right you know what people kinds of people in your circles are gonna be into us exactly yeah. um some of our listeners have you know they always say like I told my whole family or my my all my all my friends about you guys yeah. like you people really need to listen um, so thank you to anybody who's, you know, been shouting us out to their inner circles. We really, really appreciate you. The winners of this giveaway, we will actually draw the winner's name um, that like the first Friday after we reach that 1000 follower mark. And we will do that through an Instagram live and we will contact you through the Insta messages. So be on the lookout. A failure to claim your prize within 24 hours of the winner announcement will forfeit to the next name pulled. So we're just going to use like a random name generator. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, that that's gonna be really fun. Um, That's all I have to say. <laughs> oh, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, my brain right. shut down for a second. I know, dude. <laughs> it's, it's, I feel like I'm still falling asleep now. And like, uh -huh. I I have some coffee here. Yeah, dude. I played a show last night, right? Okay. I have not played a, sh I have not sang a gig in years, years. I have not done a full band gig in probably since like 2014. Nice. So I'm a little, I'm a little rusty, I'm a little out of shape. Like we played three sets yesterday and after the first set, cause they ended the first set with Evanescence, Bring Me to Life. So oh I was God. just like, my voice was just shot. And I'm like, fuck, how am I gonna sing two more freaking sets? But I just took a little beat, drank my water, popped in some hey. gum and just, you know, kind of tried to cent center. ground and center again. Oh and then God. the rest of the, the rest of the night was pretty good. I tried not to go as hard, <laughs> <laughs> but like Vince, my friend who um, was the guitarist at the gig yesterday, uh -huh. He texted me this morning. He's like, how you feeling? My neck is so sore from headbanging. And he's old. He's like 10 years older than me. Oh, my God. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, yeah, we're fucking old. We can't hang in. Let anymore. it rip right out of the gate. Can't play these sh freaking rock shows anymore. <laughs> um, Studio musician only. Exactly. Studio singing he was, only. He was asking about our band and like, you know, the whole Stina's thing and stuff. And you see. I don't I don't know if any I don't know if he realized like, you know, we're, we don't live in the same state like uh -huh. we're remote we're a remote band uh -huh. <laughs> we're the postal service yeah 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 um, so I, I was just trying to explain to him how like you know we never even met before we got in the studio this past month we're just a virtual band and i'm like 
I'm like, I'm fine with that. I'm so used to like the gigging thing and like doing that whole rock band thing. And I'm just like over it. <laughs> Good. I'm like, it's a relief to be in like a virtual band that has no other responsibilities other than recording and writing the stuff. Just I'm showing up, it. you do your no, lines and then exactly. you sit on Mike's couch with a cup of coffee. For the and, his, and his puppy time. dog. Right. Dog. And Hi. and we're just like the peanut gallery in the back just giving our two cents and he's like, What's up with the commentary? <laughs> he's like, Shut up. Hey, poor guy. Oh. I, know. I, I think they were getting a kick out of, of all the little like little one liners we were adding to the mix. Dude, I think we're funny as shit, but that's just because we hang out with each other all the time. To be to me a duo and have them be the way we are, I would be so annoyed. I would be so <laughs> irritated with these people. Well, they were being very sweet about it if they were annoyed with us. They were very gracious with their time. We appreciate you guys. Yeah. Anyway. Even as recent as that was, that was a, almost a month ago. You know, it's been three weeks since we were there. Crazy. But when we were making some of these lists, we were trying to think, like, dig dig into the vault in, like, the first couple episodes. Like, what? What were some of the really cool moments or like side splitting moments? So Justina started a little list. Um, Before we jump into the greatest moments, do you want to go kind of like go over our stats for the previous year? Okay. All right. So we're going to start off this bitch with, <laughs> this being, a bitch. I guess, our, our top 10 most listened to episodes. Of course, our episode number one, our pilot episode I was our that. most Listen to episode with 1,248 plays. I hate that so much. It sucks. It's and really we just bad. went, meow, psh, just declined from there. <laughs> so I don't know no, what no, it no, was. No, no, no. I don't know if we just like talked a big game and then they listened to the next episode and they were like, all right, this is bullshit. And then just stopped listening. But I those know. of you who stuck with it, you got to hear our audio improve. You got to see our Instagram, like little reels improve and our dynamic between each other, like just grow. So mm -hmm. whoever is stuck around, bless your ears. Thank you for sticking yeah. around. That's what year one is all about. It's about finding your audience, right? We know we're not going to be for everybody and that's fine. Yeah. But, you know, as long as we're getting our name out there, I look at it this way. At least 1,248 people know who we are, even if they That's didn't screw around. That's you know? true. You know, haters going to hate, players going to play. All right. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. Episode number two, our movie versus book part one with 703 listeners. I'm curious, like, all right, so you're telling me 703 people listened to our part one but didn't care to, li to like, hear the rest of the movie the two? versus book? I know. What the fuck? Because... The next step, oh wait, actually no, okay, so next we have episode 5, which is our Sally Owens character analysis with 612 listens, but then after that we have episode 2.5, which is the book verse movie was the only episode that we ever split in half, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. once we, we did ask. that, yeah, once we did that, people were like, no, we want longer episodes. We were like, all right, we'll never split an episode ever again, and now look, we have like up to five hour long episodes. <laughs> Good job, guys, who voted. Look what yeah. you've done. Yeah, Look what you've done. So, so yeah, uh, 557 people did listen to the part two. This next one, I was like, oh, really? Uh, the episode six, Brew Magic and Lore. Yeah, that's our fifth most listened to. How about yeah, that? Yeah, 538 listens. Our sixth most listened to episode is episode three, The Death Watch Beetle with 521 listens. And then people were like, fuck this. And they were out. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, what the fuck? Cleopatra? Fuck this bitch. The story beyond Rofa Oliosin? What? They were like, Moffat, these bitches can't read. They can't Next. read for shit. <laughs> Still can't. <laughs> At least now we know why. <laughs> Um, all right, so the next one is episode number seven, and that's our 90s witch fashion and witch core episode with 462 listeners. Touching the nostalgia bone. Yeah. Uh, our eighth most listened to episode is episode nine, uh, titled I'm a Witch, and that's all about our coming out of the broom closet, and that was that, that had 443 listeners. At the time, then, that was like one of our longest episodes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a pretty long episode. And then our ninth most listened to episode is episode 24, The Owens Family Grimoire. And that was our interview with Isis Chandler. And that had 439 listeners. And then our number 10 most listened to episode, 
is episode number four, The Owens House, with 363 listeners. Damn. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And we can see that most of our listeners, 78% of our listeners, are from the United States. But 5% are from Australia, That's which crazy. is friggin' awesome. It's crazy that we even have listeners that that live that far away in other countries i know so we do apologize when we're like like happy immo happy <laughs> solstice and it's like the opposite for you guys we do apologize yeah, yeah, yeah. but we have three percent listeners in canada two percent in germany and one percent in ireland that's pretty freaking cool one percent for the rest of the map it looks like so we might have a few listeners sprinkled you know throughout the world yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. we do have a lot of you know, the majority is Apple Podcast listeners. So we know you're listening and we would really appreciate that review and get your, oh, you know, yeah. put your name in for that giveaway. Don't you want to have a one on one Zoom with us? <gasps> right. <laughs> Maybe, are you just scared? You guys are scared. Yes. I know we're a lot. We're a lot to deal with. We're a lot to handle. But just curious um, if you have not gotten in a written review in yet. Why? Ha why have you not? I'm just yeah. curious. Yeah. So get your reviews in so you guys can maybe you know what it is. I know what it is. What's it? What is you know it? How, you know how when you find something you really, really love, like something that's kind of like still underground, you don't want it to explode yet because you don't want other <laughs> people it? to find out about it yet? <laughs> that's exactly why. They don't want people to find out about us because they want to be the only people who are cool enough to know about us. That's why. <laughs> I'm just stroking our own ego right now. My, my brain goes to like, oh, maybe they don't want to leave a review because they think we're going to fuck up and they're going to be like, oh, I used to like these guys. I even wrote a <laughs> review and now they fucked it up. Well, they can't go back and delete their review. I have no clue. I don't know. I'm just, I'm trying to be more optimistic about it and yeah. be more Jack Black about like, you know, Jack Black is the spokesperson for Tenacious D. Like he's their, he's their own hype man. Yes. Aside from Lee, he's like, we're the greatest band in the world. Like, you know, so I'm just trying to come at it from that. Like, I know we're awesome, but people just don't want to, don't want other people to find out about us. Cause then they're going to, you know, we're we, not, we're not going to go mainstream guys. Just share, just share us. <laughs> Tell your friends. <laughs> We want more neighbors. Uh, yeah, we just want more people to to hang out with on here. So yeah, yeah. please give us that review. We we would really appreciate it. Um. All right. So we yeah. So fifty three percent, fifty three point two percent Apple Podcast listeners, thirty six point six percent Spotify listeners, three point one iHeartRadio, and seven point one I guess like Amazon Music or wherever else we're featured. And if Apple had a way to like, I don't know if Apple has its own podcasting platform, but like the reason why we cater to Spotify is because we're with anchor.fm, which is directly affiliated with Spotify. That's why we cater to Spotify listeners in case anybody was wondering like, right. no, why don't, why don't they put the music episodes on Apple podcast? Because sorry, like we Apple don't have that capability. Don't give us that option. So yeah, yeah. Yep. that's, that's why. Our most, our most, the age bracket for most listeners is about 28 years old to 34 years old. That's our, like, that's 31% of our listeners is that age bracket. I guess that makes sense. I would have thought older because I feel like the, like the 20 year olds don't know practical magic as much well, as. 28 is only, they're not that young. Well, all I'm saying is that I played a showcase for college kids. Well, I guess college kids would be a little younger than that, but no, nope, none of them had any idea what practical magic was. I was like, "What? What year is this?" But that is surprising that we have eighteen to twenty-two year olds, right? You know, and we don't have under eighteen. I think because our uh, episodes have the explicit thing on them. Yes, maybe yeah. that's why. But we do yeah. have younger listeners, so hey, guys, hey, yeah, hey, Thanks everybody, yeah. And I love that um, for the option of like who listens as far as like male, female, non they put non-specified and non-binary on there, which yeah. I really like, yeah. but I'm not surprised that it's majority female because yeah. this is such a chick flick love movie, but the guys who have written us or at practicing witches that um, identify as male, I'm like, guys, thank you so much. Cause <laughs> yeah. as women, we can give one side of the story and to have an opinion from a male, witch sometimes is really fascinating. So we refresh it when you write in right yeah we appreciate all of you guys so thank you so much for sticking it out if you made it this far with us after one year of all the craziness mm -hmm. we really appreciate you and yeah we can't wait to bring it in for season two i'm looking forward to to that so yeah. are yeah. we gonna bring back the emoji guessing game because that's <gasps> where you started should we start that again but that was before we even started we knew we wanted to like get some um get some chatter going 
Yeah. We had news and we wanted to be cryptic, but we wanted, you know, if you knew, you knew. Yeah. Great. And like, who the fuck did we think we we were? Like Taylor Swift? Like with the cryptic messages? We had maybe like 50 followers, 100 followers on our Instagram. It did generate some buzz though. Like people were getting in on the like they they were commenting their guesses or their answers and even if everybody got the same answers they all like kind of responded in a different way or like they all had their own favorite movie quotes or things about the movie that reminded them of you know it was just really cool how that whole emoji guessing game kind of got the party going as far as like generating some buzz and some interest mm -hmm. and like people always love a cryptic puzzle like <laughs> yeah. maybe, why that's why taylor swift has so many fucking fans because like People like being a part of being in on the secret, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So she's she knows what she's fucking doing. Yeah. And guess what? We're ripping off of that shit. <laughs> we, we ripped her off. So sorry, T Swift. How do you feel about me for these greatest moments? I will go sound grab. Yes. These absolutely. moments and put That's kind of like what I was imagining, like when we're talking about them and then kind of like doing the pixie dust thing and then like yeah, yeah, yeah. putting the actual clip. You don't yeah. want them just clipped in like we're having a Tourette's breakdown. <laughs> People <laughs> might be like, what the fuck is going on? Or you'd be um, like, number two. <laughs> <laughs> number we one. Do, we can do countdown style. Can you hear the. Okay. If you guys have been listening for the past year, you will know my constant battle with the landscapers. Let me close my goddamn window. Hold okay, on. Okay, okay. Oh, it's actually my husband this time. Oh, hey, Avi, hey. He's got the leaf blower. It's autumn. Autumn officially. Oh, and we have this huge maple on our front lawn. On our front lawn. So mm -hmm. we, the leaves, if we don't stay on top of it, like it's a, you walk out to a sea of leaves they're it's, gonna kill your yard gotta get them yeah up. exactly so <laughs> he's taking care of all right now all right so we quick we just put these in in some semblance of order guys but we're gonna take you to the top 10 our favorite moments where we fucked something up couldn't stop laughing or just were outrageous this new jersey turnpike episode from blood on the moon was no joke when i went to visit justina it looked exactly like how she described it and there was a dunkin donuts every corner i told you I you told, told me you. I was not exaggerating. <laughs> you are not. <laughs> oh my gosh. But you went completely off the rails and made for a fantastic episode with our Blood on the Moon uh, oh, episode yeah. where you kind of pulled apart where they were, where they were going, how you knew, all the evidence, every stop, screen grab. Yeah, man. I I went through that scene with a fine tooth comb and I was like, I think I know where the fuck they are. And you know, that dude on TikTok that like pinpoints like exact locations, we need to reach out to him and see where this really is yeah. because I would love to freaking know. But everything about that scene to me screams New Jersey Turnpike. Mm -hmm. so and then just driving through Newark, like on the way to the studio, I was like, any one of these little corners could have been where they were standing and shooting. Exactly, exactly. This moment that we're about to show you guys right now, it just like took a very funny turn because <laughs> it was it was a Charlie Day with the red string on the wall. <laughs> yeah, I was literally trying to match up every single scene, every little like Easter egg in the scene. Did anybody ever notice that Dunkin' Donuts wrapper? Ever? No. And when so. we when you finally pointed out to me, you'll we'll, we'll hear it. You guys, yeah. this is our number 10 spot. This is Justina's uh, revelation about the New Jersey Turnpike from our Blood on the Moon episode, which was episode 17. 17? <gasps> that was so long ago. Episode 17. Here you go. Jersey Airport. Listen, I have an advantage on this theory because I am from this area. I know exactly. Right. <laughs> right. What the Newark, Newark Airport looks like and all the, the uh, locations surrounding Newark Airport. When you take off at the Newark Airport, you can see all the refineries all around you. And it yeah. looks exactly like where they're driving with Jimmy that entire time. I also want to know if you've ever noticed this. Are you ready for this? You're I'm ready. This is going to blow your fucking mind. Okay. Right. I'm strapped in. All right. Put your seatbelt on because you're going to go fly in. <laughs> click, click. All right. Here. Ready? Ready? Fucking boom. <gasps> Dunky Donuts wrapper on the ground. Oh, Dunkin that is that Donuts type. That wrapper. fucking font is so recognizable. I don't know why I've never noticed that before. Messy. All right. So, oh, okay. So for you listeners listening in to give you some context, because I know you're probably like, what the fuck are they looking at? <laughs> the scene where Jimmy is attacking Jillian in the car. Sally gets on top of him in the car and starts punching him, punching him, punching him. There's a scene where it cuts really quick. You got to look or you'll miss it. All right. I'm, I noticed this at my parents' house. 
watching it the other night, I was like, oh, it's a Dunkin' Donuts cup. Because I was always like, in my mind, I was always like, where I want to know where, like, where do they get donuts? In my mind, I always associated with Dunkin' Donuts because I just grew up. Dunkin' Donuts was like everywhere. Their, market, their marketing is on top of it. Dude, you're blowing my mind. <sighs> Dude, that was a fucking wild ride. So much to unpack here, though. I feel like I've just gotten off the Jersey Turnpike with my (laughs) life intact. Christina, if you ever visit New Jersey, I'll take you for a nice little ride down the New Jersey Turnpike. No, thank you. Thank you. (laughs) The smell is amazing. I'll get you a Dunkin' Donuts. I'll get you the jelly donut with the cream. (laughs) Then hit me in the face. And then I'll punch you in the face. And it'll be (laughs) the best trip you've ever had. (laughs) I'm pretty sure this was from the episode when we were talking about coming out of the broom closet and Christina and I were both talking about our experiences with the Catholic Church. In 90s fashion. In 90s fashion? Oh wait, was it 90s fashion that we were talking about this? I or think it was 90s fashion. Oh, okay. you know what? I can double check. I'll just you're probably check. you're probably right. Yeah. So Yeah. So it was episode seven about 90s wish fashion because I was talking about Buffy's leather pants. Okay, there yeah. you go. All right. So yes. What episode was that? Seven? Seven. Seven. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, we're really pulling them out of the uh the the vault here. Not the vault, the uh the archives. Okay. They're dusty. So- we're blowing the dust off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get we'll get to the Billy Zane in a, in a minute, okay. but yeah. Um, yeah, we're really really pulling these out of the archives and um this was from the episode where we were ta- it was episode 7 we were talking about 90s which which fashion Christina was talking about Buffy and her appreciation for leather pants and then she disclosed a very interesting she revealed something that I yeah. would not have expected of her. I just stopped mid sentence too. <laughs> like mid paragraph and I was like, "You know what? I used to have a pair of leather pants." And you're yes. like, "What?" Not only did she disclose that she had a pair of leather pants, she also disclosed that she wore these to church <laughs> underneath her altar server robe. I'm like, so you're just like robing it with, with a pair of leather. So on the surface, she's an angel of Jesus, but underneath she's David fucking Blaine. <laughs> I'm the devil in disguise. You're and the devil of the desert. And if you, some of you had seen, um, it might have been on our studio, recording studio live. I have since bought myself a new set of pleather pants and they are so comfy. When you revealed your new pleather pants, I was like, oh my God, she did not. They're so cool. They're did you so find cool. those at a thrift store or did you just bought those? Okay. Yeah. So she, store. she found them in a thrift store. Those might be your ones from... <laughs> Could you imagine? No, these are cool. These are cute. They're like jeggings on the back. They're so okay. soft and stretchy. And then like pleather on the front. The ones I had <laughs> when I was growing up were all over pleather and they were boot cut. They are like, like flare, flare leg. But like raw style from friends who who yeah. needed baby powder to get them off. Yes. Okay. Mm, these are much better. Mm-hmm. All right. So without further ado, this is, uh, this is number nine, Christina's pleather pants. Enjoy. We're doing this like WMSR. <laughs> Tina's mother pants and joy. <laughs> like it's a song. <laughs> hey, now we got to write a song about him. I would be honored if you could write a song for me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, oh my goodness. Gerpa Hurler. Gerpa Hurler. Buffy's most iconic looks has got to be the red pleather pants. Girl, I had a pair of black pe- pleather pants once and Ooh. I felt so cool. I wore them to <laughs> church. <laughs> What? <laughs> I was also like 12. <laughs> oh my god, I'm crying. Why did you wear pleather pants to church? Oh my god. Is that like slick? Dude, did you ever see that episode of Friends where Ross is wearing those leather pants? <laughs> yes. He's trying to get them off in the bathroom. He puts the baby powder down his baby powder. <laughs> That's my favorite episode. Hands down. Oh my god. All right. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Dude, that is actually, I need, we need to put that on the list somewhere on here. That is my favorite. I would run two minutes of that all over again in this one year thing. The the exorcism episode? No. Yeah. The exorcism clips all together. Should we put that in as a special, a special feature, a special like um, honorary placement? There's a lot going on in that episode. A lot of, a lot of golden nuggets. Let's just say. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But anyway, number eight was our. I don't even know when this happened, so I'm glad we had it on the Patreon. We're going to take the audio, but Alice Hoffman ended up following us 
kind of early on, maybe like four or five months into this project. Yeah. yeah. And we about lost our damn minds. We were <laughs> melting on the floor. We were very emotional. We were getting the tears in the eyes and we were just like, this is not real. This yeah. is not real. Yeah, we couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe that. We did know that she was very in touch with her fan base. She would always repost stuff that her fans would post. And she's, you know, she's just very, I guess she loves seeing her story just resonate with so many people. Yeah. So she's, she's great. And she just reposts everything that, you know, her fans post. And we're grateful that she has reposted some of our stuff. And, but when she followed us, man, <laughs> it was like, cause you posted, Christina posted an Instagram story with the music, like that really triumphant Amas Feritas at the end of the movie, like the, ba -da 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 -da. La, da, da. Like, I don't know if there were symbols crashing or whatever, but that's what it felt like. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my and God. I saw that and I just about probably teared up a little bit. And I was like, I can't believe it. Yeah, we're honored. We really enjoy having Alice over on Magnolia Street and she's she's lovely. Yeah, we, we hope that uh, maybe season two will uh, bring to fruition. Maybe we will get to chat with her. By the time this episode comes out, we will have met her. Oh my God. Yeah. Dude, if we can, I really want just a sound clip of her saying, this is Alice Hoffman and you're listening to the Magnolia Street Podcast. I think she would do Mic that. Drop. We can only ask. Yeah. I'm going to let the Gemini be the squeaky wheel here. You got it. You got it. Yeah. We should bring her some daffodils. Actually, we can't because they're not in season. <gasps> or we could bring her some fake ones. <laughs> That's true. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, because then they won't die in transport. They won't wilt. Like, you know, yeah. at least it's a sentiment. We could bring her something. something. Yeah. I don't know. We'll bring her something. We'll have to we'll have to toy around with what, what we can do for her. All right, so this is the audio of Alice Hoff our realization that Alice Hoffman started following us. Enjoy. Girl! I'm having a moment. She shared our review. If we I hope we get an influx. I hope we get an influx of followers for this. Um I'm feeling all the feels right now. It's surreal. This is surreal. I was like counting the days. Was like, how long is it gonna take for her to to for us to get on her radar? I can't, I can't, I can't wrap my mind around it. Ah! I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just walking around the house. I'm just pacing, and I'm like, ah, ah. I don't, I don't um. You know, that's nice that she followed us, but then to go and share, like, that's really nice. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is so awesome. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of the team. I can't believe it. All right. I just called my mom. <laughs> I called my mom and I was like, oh, this happens following us. She was like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> I think she thinks I, I think part of her thinks I was like lying or maybe it was like a fake Alice Hoffman account. I'm like, no, this is the Alice Hoffman. Per, uh, blue check mark certified. Um, man, that's so freaking awesome. All right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go stalk her account again. I screenshotted that she shared our post. Um, I'm gonna repost and just say thank you so much for resharing our post. <laughs> oh, oh my God, you're. Your Instagram story, when I opened that and heard that music, my heart just stopped and I just like, I wanted to cry. I was like, oh my God, we did it. We did it. Like, oh, I really wanted to cry. I wanted to cry about it. Like ugh, the most happy tears. Like it's, it looked like a, a victory. It's like a victory song or like a victory post. So cool. So freaking cool. I'm going to go look at it again. And then I'm going to go repost it. Oh, so like, I know this project wasn't like, even the music stuff was, we're not setting out to like, make it, make it big and famous or even get on her radar. Well, like, it would be cool to get on her radar, but like, we were just doing it because we love the movie and we love the books. And it's not like we're BFFs or anything with Alice Hoffman, but I'm just saying. So this is number seven, and I think this should probably be higher on our list because mm -hmm. I feel like, all right, so number seven is the birth of Billy Zane on our podcast, and obviously he's a real person, so we didn't birth him, but 
the the idea of i guess he just manifested himself onto our podcast as his own kind of character i don't even know like synonymous with like who he is as a real person but like who he is in our minds and kind of like bridge the gap between this newfound connection with practical magic and the titanic movie right Mm -hmm. and the whole storyline kind of colliding like since then the birth of billy zane on our podcast has fueled a whole entire fan fiction in and of itself and a whole connection between the two so episode one episode one yeah right out the gate (laughs) out the gate gate. yeah i just don't know names very well and i think i just smashed the two characters together when i was because i was so sick i had a call for so long remember and i just kept coughing and i had to like mute myself well we we'll just let you listen to the clip here it is I was like, this is it. This is how we're going to get our songs out there. Nice. So it will come to us. The answers will come in due time when they're ready, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just done. Dude, I'm so sorry. Like in Hocus Pocus. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what's his name? Billy. Uh, yeah, Billy. Billy but- was, Butcherson? What's his name? I was going to say Billy Zane. <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy from Titanic. <laughs> Can you keep all of this in? <laughs> if this is staying oh, in, by the way. This is staying Billy in. Billy Zane. <laughs> okay. Um, so number six is Louis Lamoa. I freaking love how Louis has has popped back in and out in a couple episodes since then. But when we had to, I think it was an interview and I was Dan Rather, Justino is Louis Lamour. And just the dynamic between us was so fucking funny. Yeah. And we got to learn a lot about an author I had no clue about. Neither one of us did. Uh, so this number six placement goes to Louis L'Amour. Enjoy. This yeah, is he's... Louis L'Amour. He spent a life <laughs> separating fact from fiction. <laughs> he's America's most prolific Western writer. Other Western writers like Zane Grey, who was a New York dentist, may be better known, but no Western writer has sold more books than Louis L'Amour. So, well, in the first place, let's get back to one thing. The movies have entirely over-dramatized the gunfighter in every stance of the word. The gunfighter was here. He was a natural product of the times, but... There were very few men who are known as a gunfighter who wanted to be gunfighters. They became so largely by accident. They were men who simply had a natural skill with guns. And with the time, they'd be won two or three fights. They had reputations as gunfighters, well, whether they wanted it or not. And most of th- most of them didn't want it. I'm just thinking of, like, I'm Forrest Gump right now for some reason. <laughs> I can't hear the Southern. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I don't know much about Western novels. That was quite the ride. So number five, we're going to talk about the parking lot violinists. That was very strange. And I don't know if like, all right, so since then, and I think this was on our um, Sudbury episode, in the intro of our Sudbury episode, we talked about how those were actually a scam. Oh, yeah. Yep. Right. Uh, So we've since found out that those parking 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 lot violinists are actually a scam but it wasn't so much like that that we thought they were real or anything like that i think it was more so the synchronicity of us both seeing them on the same day which was very strange when we had right? never seen them in that area before and that the one that i saw was playing a titanic song right Hash- yeah. back to billy zane and this was in the winter i want to say this yes. was, this was pretty early on too so it was just so strange yeah very strange and like now, yeah, now we know that they're fake, but, and we did give them some money, whatever. Yeah. Who so cares? it's a scam, but who cares? Because what we were saying, right? It's like putting the money back in the universe's ATM. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. how many like synchronicities have we both seen simultaneously t- like, together, even when we were in Boston, kind of just like everything seems like it's lining up, right? Yep. Pay it forward, man. Pay the universe forward. will pay you right back. I thought it was just so bizarre how that happened to us on the same day. And we're still seeing some synchronicities play out. And it's like just little, little nudges. Like you're on the right track. You're, you know, you're, yeah. doing, we're, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And, you know, we're not, we, we know we're not doing anything that's saving the universe or anything like that. But being a part of their day to day, that's not everybody can say that they're like in somebody's life that they never met before. You know, right. we're in people's yeah. ears all the time. And bless you guys for listening. Yeah, but that's because yeah. practical magic touches a safe place in people, and we hope that we can be your little safe place on Magnolia Street. Yeah, so so we uh, we thank you guys for that, and 
if we see more parking lot violinists, are we going to keep giving them money? I don't, probably not. Yeah. Now, that, now that we know it's a scam. <laughs> yeah. But, but listen, ignorance is bliss. We didn't know any better at the time. We mm -hmm. just thought it was really strange. And we both saw them on the same day. And you gave them some money first. So then I felt like I had to give them some money. So we kind of like, you know, we both were leveling up together. It feels like we were kind of making a deal with the devil. <gasps> we were like, oh, we both gave them money on the same day. And it was almost like triangulating. Okay, we got both of them now. Holy Maybe shit. Maybe not our souls, but you know, something was happening. Something was definitely playing out in the cosmos. So I think we definitely, and we took the bait. We both took the bait. So we're so, e <laughs> we're so gullible. It's like, it's like if Pennywise was standing in a sewer and was like, hey, Georgie, or hey, Jess, uh, just, you want, you you want a your, dollar? You want a dollar your boat? You? Come get this kitty cat. And I would have gone right into that sewer. I basically did the same thing when I found Punky. I like dove into that sewer to fucking get him out. So like, are you we're just, easy guys. Seriously. <laughs> just, just show me a kitten and I'm good. I'm good to go. <laughs> it does not take a lot to get our attention. Just put my heart will go on on a boom box and we'll be there. <laughs> that is how you summon us. Oh All right. So anyway, without further ado, we haven't even introduced the clip yet. This is number five, the parking lot violinist. Put my shit away. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go give him some cash. Like I know it's hard, hard times. It's holiday season. He's out there. I can see him. He's like rubbing his hands together between sets, <laughs> sets. Yeah. And, um, so uh, I put all my shit away. I get in, get, pull my money out of my wallet, put the keys in the ignition, turn it on. And he starts playing Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On. And I lose my mind. <laughs> I, lose, I was like, are you serious right now? Like to the universe, I was laughing so hard to myself. It's just because like we <laughs> always talk about Billy Zane. And it's Dude, just like, seriously. The Dude, spirit of crazy. Billy Zane is haunting this podcast and he ain't even dead. Like, <laughs> I know. He's like, oh, you want to take my name in vain? Take this. <laughs> Which if that's how I'm going to be haunted, I, that's perfect. My, your heart, my heart will go on following me around is like, fine. I remember but once like, I got into the store, I was like, did I fucking lock my car? Did I shut my door? Because <laughs> I was so like taken, I was so entranced by what was transpiring in front of me so I get the box again not sure if I even shut my car I get the box and I I start walking toward where the music was coming from and before I knew it this uh this figure starts to take shape in front of my very eyes and I'm just like it's a violinist <laughs> and it's Billy Zane <laughs> it was not Billy Zane and I'm not playing Titanic but I was like what the fuck was it like, National Violinist Day yesterday? What the fuck? At number four, there's not much intro to this. Just This just came in in our Apple episode, which was episode 14. I was trying to look up. There's a specific phobia of apples. Crazy name, can't remember it. But I just wanted to look up how, what was the average number of people who had that phobia. And the following was the first thing that came up. Wait, wait. Well, first of all, before we take a listen, this article took Christina out. <laughs> like, I sat there for like five minutes waiting for you to get your composure so I could just hear what the name of the article was. And every time you tried to say it, you were just like, start crying. Yeah. So fucking funny. Yeah. All right. So, number yeah. four is apple throat punch. <laughs> throat punch dude that would be a really good like spiced uh like tea like an mm -hmm. apple tea like, like a, throat a punch throat coat, like a throat coat except yeah. it's a punch yeah throat right. coat apple apple uh apple uppercut like, apple yeah. uppercut like right in the larynx right in the throat <laughs> box all right guys here yeah. you go enjoy <laughs> okay so i what what christine I'm dying <laughs> I just typed in what is the average number of people with that phobia, and one of the things that pop, one of the links that popped up is what it's like to want a punch. <laughs> <laughs> Christina can't even say this without dying. What? What, what it's like to want to throw a punch? Someone. Wait, wait. <laughs> what? Did you say what it's like to want to throw punch some throw punch someone? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> What it's like to want to throat punch someone for eating an apple. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to throat punch someone for eating an apple? I don't think I've ever felt that. What the hell? 
That's hysterical. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I just wanted to know, like, the average number of people with this phobia. Um, well, apparently, people feel so strongly about this that they want to throat punch other people. So. It's literally the third <laughs> link that pops up. Uh, is the first one Billy Zane? Oh, I love oh, Apple, uppercut. Apple Uppercut. Right in the larynx. That's the tagline. <laughs> just get you right in the larynx. <laughs> I'm going to let you introduce this next one because this, this kills me this kills every... You every time we had our whole month of jimmy as you know and uh we did a i think it was the bobby wygant interview yeah and justina tried her hand at goran's croatian accent which she fucking nailed and it was cracking me up so hard because it turned into it kind of turned into him not giving a shit because he was saying everything so nonchalant, nonchalant. And, then this, this, and then i did this and you know just keep singing and she's like and now i got on now <laughs> i i'll go i go back just to listen to that part oh my god and so, we showed well, that part to your parents and i was crying at their table because i was yeah. laughing so hard yeah and like this it girl probably, is nuts they probably did not think it was as funny as we thought it was but like i just think it's so funny because right before i went into that whole interview when you were like how about you do it this time? And I'm just like shit in my pants because I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It just came out. It, it came out how it wanted to come out, and now like I'm I'm good on now. Like now, <laughs> that's I can just s flip the switch right like that in. and be right in his boots, right in his uh little uh cowboy boots, snake skin boots, snake skin boots. The fan fiction for the second bullshit sewed. Yes, was so good because. Because we had chat Jat PT as we as I accidentally called it Jat PT Chat GPT uh generate a story from Goron's or from Jimmy's perspective of how he sold his soul to the devil down the old dirt road which is a lyric in our Devil of the Desert song. I started telling a story and you were like no 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 it, he needs to tell this in first person regenerate it for to tell in first person and when we flipped the switch to first person it made it so much better. And I love how, like, you edit it with the music, and you, every time, like, we broke character and started talking about something else, the music would just cut out, and then when it, I, when it was time to get back into the story, the music starts again, and then I'm like... Anytime you were to go on the Dracula the music came back in. So fucking funny, man. So <laughs> funny. I listened to that episode. It's probably one of our shortest episodes. Mm -hmm. I probably listened to that episode maybe five times over. It's I, so funny. You're Don't like, you know, and then the, there was lightning crashing and his glowing red eyes, but you know, it was okay. Yeah, you know, he's so nonchalant about everything. <laughs> but I just thought they were both fucking hysterical. And by the time we got around to that second fan fiction, I just had his voice like down Nailed to down. like, yeah, when, once I got into like his mindset, I could switch over real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone introducing Justina Karubia as Goran Viznich. One fateful night, as the moon hung low over the Balkan mountains, I embarked on a treacherous journey that would change my life forever. I heard her tales of a mysterious older road that led to unimaginable power. The villagers spoke of it in hushed whispers, warning of the dangers that awaited those who dared to tread upon it. The road was said to be gateway to the realm of the devil himself. <laughs> 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 I don't know if I could hear Jimmy saying undeterred. Undeterred by the ominous stories, I set out on quest. I packed my meager belongings, included a tattered map I found in, hidden in the attic of my family's home. I want to know his family story. The map, faded and stained, revealed the route to the older road hidden deep in the Rodopi Mountains. Days turned into weeks as I journeyed through the rugged terrain, surviving a... <laughs> <laughs> a little more than determination and the scraps I could scrounge from wilderness. <laughs> finally, <laughs> finally, after countless trials, tribulations, I stood before the entrance to the fabled road. The dirt, the dirt road stretched out before me, winding through a desolate landscape of gnarled trees and eerie fog. My heart raced as I took my first steps onto the path, feeling an overwhelming sense of foreboding. But, desire for power 
overcame my fear. As I walked further down the road, the air grew colder, the sky turned a deep shade of crimson, and suddenly a tall figure emerged from the shadows, cloaked in darkness and exuding an aura of malevolence. <laughs> So our number two is, was this episode number three or four? This, yeah, number three. This one was very early on. Technically, this was this is labeled episode three, but technically this was our fourth episode because mm -hmm. we did the whole house episode in two parts, mm -hmm. right? So that was like the house. Oh wait, was it the house? No, not the house episode. The book first movie was like episode two and two point five. So by the time we got to Death Watch Beetle, this was episode four, but we had it labeled as three. So technically um, we're gonna have fifty three episodes for this year. Uh-huh. We'll a bonus episode in there, there for you people. Go. Cool. So um in this episode, I think we were just laughing so hard because we could not get a hold on the Latin on all the <laughs> of the Latin, right? This was our first actual like informational episode right. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Scientific information, history, <laughs> magic, lore. It was kind of the first episode we were kind of trying to find our stride, kind of trying to find our formatting. Yeah. Um, and also the first three were very casual, like stuff we already knew and we were just using bullet points. Yeah. And this is when we discovered that Christina has dyslexia. I can't fucking read. <laughs> so you said a few things in that episode. I think it was, you're trying to say motif and you said Moffat. Mof Moffat. And then also coleoptera was how um was another word for death watch beetle and Christina said Cleopatra that and that happen. just that just took us out we just we could not <laughs> get a hold on all of and then once we started giggling we couldn't stop so mm -hmm. here's number 2 our giggle attack from the death watch beetle episode so enjoy <laughs> Let me try to read through my just, ears just, Yeah <laughs> this is where she lays her eggs uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to cut this no just leave it just leave it it's fine I'm gonna just leave it but I can't see so give me one second <laughs> your, face, your face is bright red I know because I'm so hot I'm so hot oh, All right. ooh, ooh. okay we're gonna have fun editing this one alright we're good we're good we're good, we're good. <sighs> alright we had to collect ourselves from a, a giggle <laughs> <laughs> right, we're talking about the mother death watch beetle so this is where she lays her eggs from meaning that I can't see. <laughs> sorry stop it <laughs> all right and then um number one this is our take this takes the cake moment this was from episode number 35 all about mugwort and in this episode uh we had a chart reading which was wormwood verse mugwort and all of their similarities similarities and all of their differences and we decided Sounded like to... on <laughs> similarities similarities and differences uh so we decided we would give wormwood and mugwort their own personalities yeah. and christina was wormwood with he had a hard life in jail and i was mugwort spice mugwort and spice. hot emoji skull emoji send so we, we gave them their own voices and we just we thought it was hilarious and um without further ado here it is here's our um uh, wormwood versus mugwort reenactment <laughs> cue the music cue it cue, yeah cue, cue cue the clip this is like chart okay i'm gonna be wormwood i was gonna i was gonna say, I was gonna say we should give them like voices like character well i will be mugwort spice so mugwort spice i'm artemisia vulgaris and I reach up to six feet tall on ridge-like stems found in green or purplish red shades. Leaves are uniquely shaped and pointed, growing opposite each other with small hairs on the underside and deep green in color. Flowers grow along many stems, small and varying in color, white, yellow, or red. I'm Amnesia, Absinthia. <laughs> oh my reaches God. up to five feet tall on groove straight stems found in shade of green and gray. Leaves are rounded and uniquely shaped with small hairs on the tops and bottoms <laughs> growing spirally around the stalks. The tops of the leaves are gray green, whilst the bottoms are whitish silver. Flowers grow in small round buds, primarily yellow, surround and surrounded by leaves. Wormwood sounds like it had a really hard life. <laughs> It 
It sounds like if he were in a jail cell, he'd be in solitary confinement. He's the guy who gets you what you need. (laughs) You're catching what you need. As you guys know, like, if you're following us on our Instagram, we were, from the beginning, we thought we were so fucking funny. We were like, these could be memes, right? We were like, these are meme-worthy sayings. But some of the memes that Kim, Kim kind of helped us out quite a bit. But yeah. we wanted the Magnolia Street out of context hashtag. This is where it was born. Because unless you listen, you're like, what the actual frick is this? Because one of our first, I don't know, it was after the first episode was the Billy, the two Billies with the swapped quotes, the Billy Zane and the Billy Butcherson. And I, this is a Practical Magic fandom podcast, so I know it was confusing to many people. <laughs> but that's where it all started was with the Billies. Right. And then Punky made an appearance because... You were telling a story about how you got him. He was going to go down into the gutter. And I was like, what if he was working for the, the Ninja, Ninja Turtles? Turtles? Yeah. I got his pizza. Some of the other ones Kim made were really all about me mispronouncing things, I think. But the one that was so fucking good that I didn't even put on here. Actually, it might be in the quotes. So we can wrangle that in. It was about you making your confirmation. Oh, <laughs> yeah. it's on there. It's on there. But we also yeah. had like, Justino has given me shit about love and trusses. So she made a Meg Ryan having a, a big O moment <laughs> big over o. trusses. Yeah, yeah. And Justina was like, I don't even know what episode it was, but you were like, I love songs about wine. I think it was the lilac episode because we were talking about the lilac. Because who was singing the song about the lilac wine? Right. Yeah. Miley Cyrus did a cover. Miley Cyrus. Yeah. 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 yeah so like I think it was wine. the lilac episode. And then the most recent one is uh, Irene Has No Chill. And that one blew up. People <laughs> love that one. I think they all agree. She really does have no chill. You see the claw marks in the glass window in the window? She's much more calm at the end of the film, surprisingly yeah. for that situation. Well... Do you think she's calm or do you think she has no voice? Isn't she mouthing along the spell? Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's all she can do, though. Maybe she can't really say. Maybe she can't, like, have an opinion anymore, but she can, like, you know, help a sister circle if she needs to. (laughs) She can't have an opinion anymore. No, no more opinions. Like every other woman. (laughs) No more opinions for Irene. She can only only, uh, speak Latin at a um, coven meeting. No input Irene is what they call it. Right, right, right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah and if you guys have your own like if, if you listen to the podcast and you guys think like any one of our stupid offhand comments like just takes you out or gives you full-on belly laughs feel free to make a meme about it and tag us at magnolia street podcast or hashtag magnolia street out of context and so tag then, us yeah. yeah and tag us so we can see it um, yeah but yeah we would love if you guys want to get in on the, on the meme making we would love it so yeah and some of these quotes were meme worthy also do you want to go down our quote list yeah, these are no so order we've had many quotes over the course of this past year the the main one that i think we can think of is it's all connected right all because connected. how many connections have we made throughout all of our research and discoveries and rabbit holes like some of these things like we never expected to be connected like somehow like remember when we were what episode was it the magnolia episode when we found out that um beetles beetles were their pollinators beetles and something about cocoa or chocolate or something like that like they like went in tandem with each other i don't remember Mm -hmm. But, like, there were some crazy revelations on our Magnolia episode, right? And there was a big one, the most recent one, and the hauntings and exorcisms about the murder with the skillet. Yes. There, there, yeah. We have almost every other episode, at least it's all connected. Yeah, because we yeah. keep finding connections between practical magic and everything else going on in the world. Or we force them into being connected. Or we force them. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. This was our broom closet, coming out of the broom closet episode, right? I was making fun of my mom because she made me go to my confirmation instead of um, letting me stay at talent show practice. (laughs) So I'm like, you're not going to dance. You're going to make your confirmation. (laughs) I lost my shit. (laughs) Oh, my God. And that Kim was nice enough to make a visual for that one. You're not going to dance. You're going to make your confirmation. You're going to make your confirmation. So Which is not was, how she sounds, but it's so funny. No, no, no. No, no but <laughs> in the in our recent episode, The Hauntings and Exorcisms, when I, when we were giving Avi the quiz, and I was like, stock a Channing, and you're like, stock a Channing? What is D here? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> My mom with her friggin' strong-ass Jersey accent. <laughs> so, what is D here? We always give Stockard like a transatlantic kind of thing or like a New York, yeah. New Jersey. She doesn't sound like that at all. No, no. Not at all. No, Stock of Channing. Stock of Channing. It was so D funny. Here. 
D? What's going on here? Number three. <laughs> Do you want to introduce this one? I this was so early. This was like episode three, two, three, four, something like that. Ooh, and I just think, yeah. I think you were delusional. <laughs> <laughs> it's so loud in my mouth. It's so loud in my mouth. So I'm gonna try to hold the phone out here and see if that helps. Okay. <laughs> I hope it doesn't sound like shit. That sounds so- <laughs> uh, I'm gonna like randomly. So Health. I'm gonna randomly think about that like throughout this recording and just like start cracking up. Can we slide that in at the end of the episode? It's so loud in my mouth. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like, I don't know why I said that. Yeah. Because I think the we Lulu. were trying to use headphones. Oh, or, or we were still using our actual phones because uh-huh. the anchor app at before lets you like have a phone call basically and it records it yeah. and she's we were trying to get the audio straight and she goes it's loud in my mouth I'm like the fuck i meant to, to say loud in her ears i meant to say loud in my ears but for some reason my mouth felt loud at that moment so <laughs> i needed to say it's loud in my mouth it's loud in my mouth and that just took us out for like five minutes i like i still don't even know why i fucking said that um i think this was the gardening one this next one do you remember why you said that? I can only think it had to do with gardening. I'm sure the number of the episode is act- on the actual Instagram post. Okay. But we were talking about like gardening and didn't your mom pick up like a snake accidentally when she was gardening? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mm, it might not have been that. It might have been the nine- the witch fashion. And I was like, I can't wear skirts in the garden because I'm afraid a spider's going to crawl up my ass. Oh, I don't remember. I'm too vulnerable. Yeah. Okay. I'm too vulnerable. <laughs> too vulnerable in the garden. All right. So yeah. number five, this, this one is, I love songs about wine. <laughs> That's you. That, that was, was the, the lilac- one. Yeah. That was the lilac episode. Yeah. Cause we were talking about the lilac wine song. And also there's a strawberry wine song. Deanna Carter, I think. Right. Yes. 17. Yeah. July moon. And That's I just love everything. Songs. Just love me some songs about wine. So number six. I don't remember what we were talking about in this episode, but you have that little, Christina has a little uh, small scale version of the Practical Magic house, right? I think it was the uh, architecture episode. Was it the architecture episode? And she goes, hold on, let me get my diorama. (laughs) You must have been that kid in like school that like had their science project like all good to go and just were so proud to show it to the class. Nobody else gave much of a fuck about it as you. (laughs) Right. Science, no, but any art project, I was like, I know I'm going to kill at this. So yeah, yeah, yeah. let me just hold myself on a pedestal. Let me just get out my diorama. <laughs> <laughs> this next one was Skyclad episode. Number seven. Yeah. Um, we were talking about like the reality of working Skyclad, I think. Yeah. And I was like, I oh. never felt it necessary to show the moon my taint. I love and that quote. Lost it. But then also, I love the story that you told about working sky the one time you did work sky clad and you just like ran outside your house what'd you say you- i was in like new balance new balance oh sneakers God. just butt ass naked with new balance sneakers on i'm like what that visual <laughs> and the, the, the motion sensor like came on and i had a towel with me thank god but the motion i was out there for 30 seconds <laughs> running in circles around the yard in my new balance oh my boom god. there goes the light i was like gosh i had to go back gosh, inside shit. justina fucking kill you were so funny in this episode this was the um anne of cleve no sybil of cleves episode where we talked about all of the portraits in the owens house in the movie and in the books anne of cleves was sybil's sister who the portrait of sybil is actually in the movie practical magic but anne of cleves was also she had some portraits done of her as well and we found out that she may have very well have catfished Henry VIII, right? Yeah, but you stopped me. You were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did Anne Cleves catfish Henry VIII? <laughs> we're like, the amount of effort, right? You were saying yeah. that it would take for a portraitist to take that time, have you sit there just to get you to be the Queen of England, right. basically to like embe- embellish your features. Yeah, to show and to he- the king. He even had a friggin' wingman that lied to him, who later that got- Cromwell. Yeah, he later got, a uh, not part not pardoned. What's the other- He was tried for treason. Treason, yeah, yeah, for lying about this catfish, uh, scheme. So- <laughs> This Ponzi scheme. No. This Ponzi scheme. All right, so number nine. Um, was this from our- Daguerreotype. Daguerreotype, Mercury Vapor. <laughs> 
vapors. Was this you? What do you mean, mercury vapors? I was so confused. What do you, yeah, what do they mean, mercury vapors? To help, to like, yeah. you're not even supposed to look at mercury, basically, and they're going to just put that <laughs> shit in the air? Yeah, I guess so. Wow. Yeah. That whole episode was just bananas, like, wild, like, learning all the shit that they, like, not just the chemical process, but, like, just the dark mor morbidity of that whole topic alone, like, post-mortem photography especially babies like mm -hmm. people photographing their children post-mortem mm -hmm. it was just a very dark topic but that episode yeah. was so fascinating to me he and other people at the time were renaissance men like they were the first to do so many other things than just invent this type of process right which is really cool mercury vapors yeah. we missed the whole bit on uh, about the uh, victorians the victorian architecture how we were talking about somebody going to make a sandwich like a kitchen snack with the oh, candles yeah, and the kaboom <laughs> just, no wonder there's so many freaking victorian ghosts who just going in to make a sandwich and then boom the toilet explodes i totally forgot about that one that's a good one there's so many good moments man it's really hard to fucking choose but yeah. um and then i'll let you i'll let you talk about number 10 <laughs> number fucking 10 this was so good that it made its way onto a t-shirt and that's our commoners t-shirt i don't even know how it ended up in the frogs episode where you're talking about common frogs yeah we were just talking about like common toads or common frogs like just like your run-of-the-mill yard frog or something like that and then <laughs> i just i think it goes commoner like under her breath it <laughs> like was so insult. perfect yeah i was just trying to like use it as an insult and then christina just thought it was so fucking funny she had to put it on a t-shirt <laughs> and then and then and then after that you like posted the link to our facebook or whatever and you're like here buy this t-shirt confuse your friends because we don't even know what the fuck it means i want that little sassy looking frog in the dark it was pretty funny where'd yeah. you find that picture of that what what's that frog from i don't remember i hope it's free <laughs> I hope it's free. Just like the uh, the mac and cheese and the, the beefaroni at the hotel that Christina just like. <laughs> it's free. Don't worry about it. Took a whole armful, ran back upstairs, and, you know, it was like, it was yeah. free. There you go. I didn't even get to eat the mac and cheese. Free. That's right. We left it there. This next quote is from our most recent Hauntings and Exorcisms episode. And I'm pretty sure we were talking about, what were we talking about? We were saying that it was, if you really want to fake a possession, you probably oh, could with yes. certain things. However, the fact that sometimes there's levitating lamps and people getting thrown across rooms and shit like that. Yeah. You see, it goes, you, you can fake a seizure. And, uh, and you were serious as a heart attack when you said this. <laughs> there was no giggle afterward or anything. You can fake a seizure, but you can't fake a levitation. And then you were like, well, yeah, what the hell, David Blaine? Like, yeah. I took it out on David Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that whole episode, in all of its five hours, it's the whole episode was just full of, like, hysterical moments. Because we were in the same room together for the first time recording, like, ever. We were so, just playing off of each other. We were just going balls to the wall. We just had so many great like one-liners and so many funny little moments that if you guys are a member of our Patreon, the $8 tier, totally worth it just to see this one fucking five hour long visual yeah. episode because you could just see me and Christina just like going balls to the wall with each other. I'll just say time. our physical our physical comedy, just as funny as our verbal comedy. Probably funnier, funnier. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And it, not even just like talk, we would just make noises. And then the other one would make a noise. It would just we just knew what we needed to do. Every two minutes, we would check over on Avi because he was on the couch with his on TikTok or whatever. We're like, are you, "Hey, how do you feel about that?" And he's like, "What?" And we're like, "Oh, never mind. He's not even listening to us." But then, <laughs> but then he would like chime in with like his little two cents from the peanut gallery about exorcisms and how he, like he's always been afraid of exorcisms and like how many exorcisms has my husband been a part of that I don't fucking know. About? <laughs> I've always been leery of of exorcisms. You know, I just, you know. I yeah. try to stay away from him. What? Like, I'm what? like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> How many exorcisms has he walked past? Because <laughs> that took me out. This next one we just pulled up because we heard the audio, but I don't yeah. remember what episode it was in. You were finishing up talking about a folklore from the UK. You were so tired. Was it the rabbits episode? Oh, it might be. Yeah, we're something. I was. We were talking about whales in the UK, and then oh. my stupid ass and tired. Very. We must have been tired. I was like, Wallace? Because it's like, I saw W-A-L-E-S. And Christina's like, you mean Wales? I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, William Wales Wallace. Wallace. 
when you hit a funny thing, it's usually not because you misspeak. Yeah. He's usually very well placed. I yeah. get that from my dad. He's yeah. very he's very witty and this next one I'm looking at, his timing is impeccable. Impeccable. I, I, impeccable. You were the first person to say this like really early on and it I died. I was like, I haven't heard that. Nobody uses that. <laughs> like it's such an old timey word to use and now we can't not use it. But the way that I said it, I said it like Beetlejuice. My voice just went so deep. And now Avi, now he does it. He's like impeccable. I'm like impeccable. We're rubbing off on people. It's working. It's working. Our plan is working. Impeccable. <laughs> comment, comment, guys, and let us know. Do you find yourself saying impeccable now? Or any of the shit we say? Because that would be like such an ego boost. Hang on one second. Yeah, yeah. Cat, cat coming down. Come on. Come yeah. on. Yay. Yeah, Can't confuse let... your friends. Quote, quote Magnolia Street Podcast. Confuse your friends. And then when they ask what you're talking about, you just say, you just got to listen to Magnolia Street Podcast. Then you'll understand. You had to be there. To be part of the cool club you want to run down these uh some of these names so our cool. thought was to whether or not we actually did this in salem who the fuck knows but whoever came to our listener event we you got a name tag because mm -hmm. that way the bartender would know that you were part of our group and you got that special yep. drink that we put our little touch on and this the this list was the list we were going off of when we were giving people names because you weren't yeah. you for the rest of that night when you showed up right. you were part of magnolia street you were no longer you. Yeah. If your name was Becky, your name was no longer Becky. If you had the name tag on, your name was now Jimmy Stupidass Face. <laughs> or oh. that puss from the secret garden. Or or an arbiter of taste. You yeah. could be a Bi Billy Zane. Or you could have been a Zestoibian Royfoboliosum. And yes, whoever addressed you for the rest of that night had to address you by Zest Oh, um, welcome to um our meet and greet Zestobia and Rofoboliosum. Like that's how they would have to address you for the rest of the night. Right? Good luck picking up a date. <laughs> <laughs> good good luck picking up the date with the name Coffin Cutter. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we had Billion. That was Jillian and Billy. Oh, that was a fan fiction. Billion. Billy Zane Jillian fan fiction. Or just simply Jillian Hip Thrust Owens. That was a good episode too. Do we have a lot of we have a lot of good zingers here? Um, we have Christina's Orifice from the uh, Death Watch Beetle episode. Mugwort, Wormwood. And if you got the name tag Wormwood, you gotta speak like this for the rest of the night. And Mugwort Spice, if you got Mugwort Spice, you have to speak like like Mugwort for the rest of the night. Daddy Satan, Fifty Shades of Hades, <laughs> Rapture Raptor. <laughs> That was from our Blood on the Moon episode, right? Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Raptor Rapture. Rapture Raptor. Rapture Raptor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, wait. How did the Salami Roses not end up on our top 10 best moments? When oh I was my god. Salami what Rose episode was that in? I don't fucking remember. But I was getting so pissed about Salami Roses. Because remember that's when uh, me and Avi were trying to go to that family gathering? They requested a charcuterie board. And Avi made all these beautiful salami roses, and Punky was fucking, he ate, he like stole a whole entire salami rose off the board, and like Avi's freaking out, and I'm freaking out. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna find it. I will pop that one in. That needs to be popped in, because the fact that you're like... We were commissioned, not commissioned, we were instructed to bring a charcuterie board because we brought one to Easter at my mom's house and everybody loved it so freaking much because Avi's a perfectionist and he got out the whole board and he had to lay everything out perfectly. He's like a master at charcuterie boards at this point. So everybody was like, you know, this is awesome. You need to do this again for Mother's Day. So now, okay, this was so fucking stressful. So usually like the first time we put Punky away, but he was being kind of good this time. And like, you know, we were kind of, me and Avi were like huddled in the corner of the counter. So I don't think there was like any way he could get up there. Avi let his guard down for one fucking second. He was making these beautiful like salami roses. <laughs> he had two salami roses on the board. He let his guard down for one second and Punky jumped up and he stole an entire salami rose. That's like... 10 pieces of salami right there he took the whole thing and he ran under my bed and i'm like screaming Avi's screaming he's Avi's like i told you to put him away in the the place. so we bring the meat and cheese board okay <laughs> and then trying to fucking wrap this thing was impossible okay so i did like kind of like a quick job just like you know to cover it so Coraline wouldn't get up because she loves cheese so she would have jumped up and maybe started sniffing the cheese. So I just wrapped, like, very loosely, just quick, because Avi was in the shower. I was waiting for him to help me wrap it the right way. Mm -hmm. So he gets out of the shower. He gets dressed. I kind of clean everything up. And before I let the cats out, before we leave, 
I'm like, you might want to help me rewrap this because it's just like, I did a quick thing just to keep Coraline off of it. And, you know, she's not aggressive like Punky. Like, she's not going to just go, like, snatch friggin' shit off the board. But she's curious and, like, I don't want her little nose sniffing around in there, you know. (laughs) So he gets out of the shower and he gets ready. He's done. And we're, we're, like, packing the car and stuff. He's got the meat and cheese board. And I was like, I'm telling you, it's not wrapped right. We need to wrap this better. He's like, we don't have time. So I was like, all right, fine, whatever. Fuck me. I'll just like go back inside and, you know, fiddle around until we're ready to fucking leave. So it was so windy out that day. <laughs> the things just, the, the the saran wraps was flying off the fucking board. And he's like, can I get oh some God. help here? I was like, I fucking told you. <laughs> God dang. I was like, I told you that I needed you to help me wrap it the right way. And you're trying to rush. And now look, now we have another debacle to deal with. So I had, I had the saran wrap and I kind of like just did like the board is this long. Okay. It's like more than 12. It's more than a foot long. This board, it's ginormous. Mm -hmm. So I just like took the, uh, the saran wrap and I just like held it down on one end. And then I just like, kind of like did the whole, like wrap it around the entire thing. Like in one long piece. Obviously, like, what yeah. are you doing? You're flattening the salami rolls. I was like, ah. at this point, I was like, I don't give a fuck about the salami rolls. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about the salami rolls. <laughs> and it just became a whole fucking thing. That was definitely a funny moment telling you that story and recounting that whole, whole entire experience. Um, you could have been, hello, my name is Charlatan. For Charlatan. The night. We, like to, uh, we like to yell that a lot in reference to people who we think might be faking their magical powers, right? Like what uh, the uh, commentary where you're like, who is that guy? He looks shady. <laughs> He's a charlatan. <laughs> charlatan. He's a yeah. charlatan. These were coveted, very coveted names. And I think we were going to give ourselves Donna and Darlene, but I kind of really want number 20, but we're not there yet. We had, you could have been Spooky Eyes, which was 19. The uh, the daguerreotype episode where we were like, Spooky Eyes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then the Transylvanian Chad was from the Jimmy character analysis. Christina also put that one on a t-shirt. So if you guys want to go scoop up some merch that says Transylvanian Chad on it. Somebody was go. like, no idea what this means, but I love it. Yeah, I think Kim, did Did Kim comment that? Maybe. So. And lastly, we got Bad on Boats. Bad on Boats. And th- do you want to explain what Bad on Boats was from? I think this was from our Saguaro Cactus episode. Was it? Was that what yeah. we were talking about, the mummy? Yeah, like before we, dump- before we jumped into our topic. Because you had texted me. I was on my way to dinner one night. Like on a Friday night, you text me. We're like, guess what? Me and Aaron are watching. We're watching. We're watching the Mummy with Billy Zane or something like that because we were laughing. How I thought. Remember how I thought Billy Zane was in the Mummy for the longest time, and you were like, no, that was not Billy Zane. I was like, yes, I was it is. I think what episode that was. Then you were like, and the Mummy. I was like, I'm pretty. Wait, what? I'm pretty sure Bad on Boats came from the Saguaro Cactus episode because oh you God. texted me to tell me you were watching a movie with the Mummy, not starring Billy Zane, and I was like. You want to see something funny? Because I went to Billy Zane's profile a couple days before that, and I was like, I'm going to keep this one in my back pocket for when it's necessary. (laughs) And sure enough, I was like, this is the perfect time to show her this. His profile, Billy Zane's profile, his Instagram, says, Billy Zane, hashtag, was not in the mummy, hashtag, bad on boats. (laughs) So Perfect description. Perfect perfect. bio. Never seen a more perfect bio in my life. Exactly. (laughs) So we just thought that was so fucking funny. Yeah. Bad on boats. Bad on boats. If you got that name, let us know how your night turned out. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not like the end of Titanic. I was just, what, uh, 21 names? But there's so many. I'm sure there's so many other references we could have pulled from our episodes to throw in here. Mm-hmm. 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 These are, yeah. these are, good. These are some good ones, though. But stuff. you know what? Some other good stuff and some other really good names that we got to include in our year of 53, 52 episodes, where our guests, we had some amazing guests, which you were kind of hesitant about interviewing people, but how do you feel now? Um, I think I always wanted to interview people, like the idea of it, I thought was really cool and like exciting, but the introvert in me was kind of also hesitant because, you know, you talk to a new person, you're not sure how the conversation's gonna flow, you're not sure if things are gonna be super awkward, but I think it went better than I had anticipated it going. Good. Because I had my fellow Gemini here in my corner, kind of like, you know, Christina's more of the squeaky wheel. Is that what you call it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Wheel gets the grease. Is that what it's the... Yeah. Yeah. But we're also Um, talking about something we have no problem talking about nonstop, which is helpful. Like if you're interviewing somebody just about their day to day, you know, it's a little different. But we got to talk to 
five different we included five different um special guests in our year-long project this year our very first guest that we ever had on magnolia street podcast was laura laura den hertog at from at enchanted journal on instagram and we had sh- We've come to know her as Auntie Laura, right? She just has this, like, this presence, like the aunts, right? Mm -hmm. So, so sweet, insightful, had really kind advice. And she came on so early, like episode 18. I was like, let's talk to people. We got to talk to people. And uh, she was our first one because we were doing the Owens Black Soap episode. And she just so happened to make her own Owens Black Soap. And we learned that she is basically living like a practical magic life. She lives with her sister. She makes witchy products. She lives in the country in this beautiful home. Yeah. She's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That was a very fun episode. And she's also a fellow artist. So, you know, we had some stuff that we could relate. And she gave us some great advice. And what was the one advice that she gave us that I really took to heart? And I think we both kind of, because like, you know, we're me and you I feel like we're both kind of modest like we don't like to showcase our own stuff too much on this podcast but auntie Laura said you girls need to showcase your own stuff like what you're doing that's true yeah your own artwork and you need to tag your own your own personal pages and you need to let people know what you do outside of this podcast because what you guys are doing is amazing and I think you're both so very talented and I was like oh auntie Laura I know I know she was so sweet sweet. and she was saying this because being able to connect on a more personal personal level. Yes. You know, we, I feel very casual and personable and like no filter on here, but there's something about seeing who we are on the other side of Magnolia street on your Justina's world official site, you know, yeah. handle on my second artistry. Like you, there's so much more to us than just like gabbity gab, gab, gabbing. Yeah. So we hope you guys um, go and check out those, but we also want to just thank Laura for giving us the courage to do that. Yeah. The courage, exactly. Yeah, she's like, again, like the aunts, like just giving that little nudge of courage or like Aunt Isabel, like talking about courage. Is mm-hmm. it courage or caution? And Auntie Laura's like, you girls need to choose courage, not the caution. Yeah. So, you know, she's so sweet. Thank you, thank you Auntie you. Laura, for all of your beautiful insight, advice, and just knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. Thank you, Auntie Laura, for being our guest. I really wanted to stay true to the original recipe. So in the original recipe, she uses ashes. She makes her lye from the ashes of rowan and hazelwood. So I thought, okay, well, I don't want to leave out the rowan and the hazel. So as far as I'm concerned, in order to be authentic, it's really important that you have the right energies present. So I thought, okay, I need to find a way to add the energy of rowan and hazel. So I have rowan trees, of course. I mean, what witch's house wouldn't have a rowan tree, right? So I have rowan trees, so I and it happened to be the right time of year where I could go and collect the berries. So I collected the berries and from my own rowan tree, which wasn't nearly enough, so we had to go searching. <laughs> but that's okay. We're in the country. We went searching, we found rowan trees, picked the berries, dried them, ground them down, and used them in the soap. So that I have that the energy of the rowan is in the soap. We're supposed to have her back, remember? Because we're, I think maybe this season, maybe we'll get into the Balm of Gilead, which she wanted to talk to us about yeah. too, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. So if you guys want to want Auntie Laura back, let us know if you enjoyed that episode. She's coming back regardless of what she yeah. does want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've already made it up in our mind. <laughs> yeah. And then the next guest we had came in uh, episode 24, and that was Isis Chandler from Pagan Scrapbook Supply. And I had been following her for years and we definitely wanted to have an Owens family grimoire episode. And there was no other person I could think of more well-suited to talk to than her. And she's over at Isis underscore Chandler 3X3, like three times three on Instagram. You can see her replicas. Her work is so incredible. That was such a fun episode. And we came yeah. we came in so hot. Oh. We were blasting the Faith Hill we oh yeah that's right we had a little sing along with her that was really cute that's probably cute. one of my favorite moments it's on our instagram so if you guys want to go look at us um you know grooving to some faith hill with isis chandler that was so much fun mm-hmm. and she was just so much fun to talk to and not to make the analogy or whatever but she's like an open book right she mm-hmm. has so much to share about herself and her own personal life and some of her struggles which you know kind of uh, inspire her to go down this 
path that she's gone down. She also just creates such a beautiful mm -hmm. book pages. Mm -hmm. And she she actually raffled off one of her books right after that episode. I wonder whoever won that. I don't I wonder know who, who won, won that. that. We should ask her. Yeah. Yeah. So congrats to whoever won that book because as she told us, she doesn't really do too many of those books anymore because it takes up a lot of her time and resources and money and energy. So um, if you guys did manage, whoever did manage to, you know, win that one book that she raffled off right after our episode congratulations because that is a beautiful piece of work that you yes. have in your hands yeah yeah so thank you again isis we hope to be able to talk to you again yeah i got a bunch of um stamps digitally and then added it down to make it look like that so yeah the movie itself just you know inspired a lot of things like oh that looks really cool i would i never would have thought to do that so the spell whoever designed the original spell book and I think there were several different artists who worked on that I mean kudos because it was you know it was amazing they also they would like tear paper like rip paper so it had a jagged edge and then layer and then use that kind of like a border for the picture like um and then they would put a smaller picture and then like the rip tear would be around the picture is kind of like framing it like a frame and a mat in a frame photo so yeah they would do a lot of border stuff like that um but it's just very, I don't know. I just, um, I love the style of the Practical Magic book because it looks so, it looks like so many different artists worked on it throughout the years. You know what I mean? It doesn't look like, I mean, Charmed fans will hate me for saying this, but if you compare the Practical Magic book to the Charm book, and I'm probably going to get like hate now, but if you want to leave this in, but the Charm book looks so comic booky to me. Like mm. the style that they did, it just looks like the way it's drawn. Every page looks like it was made by the same artist mm. or maybe two or three artists in the family. Um, it, it's very colorful. They use very bright, colorful letters. I mean, I mean, if you love the Charm book, it doesn't have that like rustic, gritty, organic feel of the Practical Magic right. book yeah. has. And like the Practical Magic book just like begs to be touched. All right, so number three is Selena Medina from At Girly Tattoos, and she was featured on our episode number 32, Sacred and Ritual Tattooing. And Christina suggested that we talk to Selena because she's one of your friends, right, in real life? Like, you know, actually know her in real life? Yeah, I met her through Bumble. No, not Bumble. It was like, um, you know how if you're part of the same group like a, a witchy group or whatever you can click on the members and then you can see who's in your area okay so i think i found her through like south carolina pagans or something like that okay. and i was like hey i know this is kind of weird but i don't have any other witchy friends do you want to hang out so we got coffee and come to find out she's an amazing amazing tattoo artist um but also as you Go listen to that episode. She is such a strong advocate for healthy practices, not just with the tools for tattooing, yeah. um, but making it a safe place for female tattoo artists, as well as like a safe spiritual space for clients, which yeah. is just fantastic. Yeah. And she also got into a little bit about how she's like also advocating for customer rights and uh, protections and protecting, you know, the people who sit on a tattoo artist's table. Already vulnerable. Vul already vulnerable to begin with. And then some people, some not so ethical, right, in that business, often some of those people end up taking advantage of their clients, unfortunately. So she really advocates for the rights of those clients and protecting their vulnerability. Totally. Right? So she's doing great things over there. So yeah. This clip of uh, our interview with Selena. This is intimate for them, what we talked about before. And for you, you are in yeah. their energy. Yeah, like you have to be, one, you have to be right with yourself. Two, you have to really check that energy in the sense of like, am I tuning into this person? Am I empathetic in the sense where I'm like picking up what they're giving me? Or am I just really that attuned to what their experience is right now? And how do I cater better to that person? That's always like the process that goes through my head. So I engage in a lot of like emotional, spiritual, deep cleansing. I, I have a cardinal rule. I don't tattoo on Sundays. Really just because like I need to like 
I need to purge. I need to go walk around mm-hmm. on my property barefoot. I need to burn some things. I need to light some candles. <laughs> like I, I need to do all of the things to like clean the cobwebs out because the second that my week starts over and I start these these new clients, it's like their new energies will pile up on top of it. I want them to have a unique experience every single time. So in that, like I have to hold that space for them. All right, guys. So this is the last guest that we had on this season of Magnolia Street Podcast. And this one's very special. Because he didn't have a choice. He didn't have a choice. <laughs> we kidnapped him. Uh, but like like, like a little nap, like a baby nap. A little nap. Yeah. Because there was a car and, you know, and it was the fact that it was she, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and we do, what, what did she say? Something to get him back that car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We know it's a crime. We'd be so happy. Yeah. <laughs> to get him back that car. Yeah. So none other than my wonderful husband and what a good sport he was about all of this, Avinash Patel. And he has nothing to do with the world of practical magic, but he was along for us on the ride of our practical magic musical adventure in Mm -hmm. Waltham, Boston, Massachusetts. Our number one Lee. Our number one Lee. And he drove us there. He made sure we had our coffee. We were caffeinated. Um, Fed. We were fed. Yeah. Right. He uh, treated us to some midnight, well, not midnight, but margaritas after oh. we wrapped up our recording session. Oh, and good. he was just all around so much fun. And this episode was like, he, he was kind of in the background for most of it, but he had a little ear up, you know, like a glass up to the wall. Like he was listening in on some of the stuff. <laughs> but then I guess we were getting so tired by night too that we were like, all right, Avi. Uh, Hop on in here. <laughs> tagging you in. We're, we're kind of tired. Oh, I, I think I tagged him in because you wanted to talk about the pineapple guys. And I was right. like, I'm not sitting front row for this. Avi, get over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you threw him in. He's like, all right. Even though I've seen many exorcisms in my day, which he made it very clear. <laughs> you know what? He can tell a scary story. Yes. He's got a good spooky story voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And as we heard on that episode, well, I already know. I've experienced most of the spooky stuff with him, but he was able to tell you all about the spooky stuff, you know, since his father's passing and his father's got a very strong presence and some of the haunted stories that we had that we were able to share on that episode. Mm -hmm. Like the week after he passed, the house lost, or my parents house, they they lost hot water. So I was like, all right, what the hell's going on? What's going on with this? Oh, wait, you missed the part where the day before your father passed away, you went over to see him. Oh, yeah. Thursday. Oh. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were in the Rogue, and you had just, like, gotten a quote for, like, some service you needed done on it, and you were telling your dad about it, and he was like, just sell it. Just sell it. He was was like, if you get it fixed, just get rid of the car. Yeah, just sell it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he said, get rid of it, and then... And then he passed away the next day. Yeah, so the last the last thing I told, told him was I was going to buy a new car. He told me to sell the Rogue. I think what came out of that was that the next, like, week or whatever, the hot water heater stopped working. The water re- heater was out, so I had to look for the PSNG stuff because they had PSG the worry-free stuff. stuff. That's right. Um, but, like, the whole thing is we wanted to sell the Rogue, yeah. right? Yes. But, like, I had no idea where the title was. My mom didn't know. My sister didn't know. And had no clue. Once we realized we didn't know where the stuff was, that's when the water heater went out. Mm-hmm. Water heater went out. And then I went over to check it out. And before I went over, I told my mom, you got to look for the psc and stuff, right? Because we thought we had the worry free. And so I, I go over and check out the water heater real quick. It's just the pilot. pilot. Like, all I had to do was hit the button mm-hmm. and reignite it. And so my mom, in looking for the psc and bill, Right, the title was right, on right with the, the, oh my god, the bill. on top of the PSC and Jibble. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, Isn't that crazy. Yeah. Right there. So he's um, like, here you go, god. sell the freaking rock. Yeah. yeah. So he was a very fun comic relief, I guess, of that episode. We got to quiz him on practical magic and. I felt very safe talking about pineapple geists with Avi yeah. there. I was like, nothing's gonna happen. We're fine. He could kick a ghost ass. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Avi's dad's on the other side watching out for us. Yeah, he's got our back. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So thank you again, guests. We hope to have you back and many more to come because there's so many freaking talented creators out there that we really want to talk to. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, we look forward, we are looking forward to talking to more of you guys and all, more practical magic inspired artisans in season two. And do we want to tease who we're going to be talking to here? The, like our first guest? Sure. Mm-hmm. All right. So for, yeah, we'll tease a little bit about season two here our very first guest that we have lined up and i think that they've agreed to do this with us already so 
look out for early season two, we will be talking to none other than Joseph from Grounded by the Moon. And you guys might know his name because we've used his Oracle deck on pretty much every single episode of this, this like season. A, this is like a celebrity moment. Right. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually connected with Joseph a while back. We we did an Instagram live with him and we were able to actually connect with him on a more personal level. And mm -hmm. since then, we've just opened this line of communication. He's very supportive of our work. We're very supportive of his work. And it just, it's like a two-way street. And it's just been great to get to know him on a more personal level because mm -hmm. I've been admiring his work for so long. Such and a sweet man. His sweetheart. beautiful sweetheart and beautiful Oracle decks. He's got beautiful products out mm -hmm. there and um i'm just really excited to finally be able to interview him about i just don't know how to focus on like one or two things because yeah. we could go down so many avenues talking with joseph yeah so yeah, we'll have so to we'll plan it out we'll plan it out we don't have the logistics set in stone quite yet but we do want to let you guys know and give you guys a heads up to if you were looking forward to his interview that's yeah. he is on the books for season two so yeah keep a look out for that so you guys have listened through 52 episodes and you i hope will listen to the one that's coming after this because the one episode after this will be our last song episode of the year and that's our All Hallows Eve episode. But we've had a total of five song episodes this year. And we're going to, I'll try to intersplice. I can even kind of make like a medley. I can kind of yeah. put all of them to, to kind of string them together if you'd like. We had Magnolia Street. That was our first song episode. Came out in December. And then we had Phone Tree Day. That came out. And we're going to have a lot more. I think we'll put them closer together. I think I have them coming out maybe like every six or seven episodes for season mm -hmm. two. Yeah, so we we're gonna up, pop in a lot more. We're gonna up the ante with the song episode season two for sure. I'm pretty sure, yeah. right? Yeah, our third song episode was Brownies for Breakfast. That was episode 37. That came out in July, and then we had just most recent Devil of the Desert came out uh, September 22nd. That was yeah, episode that was, 47. That was in our uh, two month long string of Jimmy content, right? I love, I love it. That was a yeah. really cool one because we got to learn all about Tommy Johnson. Robert Johnson. We got a little spooky with the devil. We hope we get to go back into the studio and record some of these. Yeah. And our last one of the season of season one will be our All Hallows Eve song episode. And that's going to be out next Friday. So keep a lookout for that. And that episode is just a beautiful song about Samhain and, you know, All Hallows Eve. And it's the, the perfect spirit. way to ring in Samhain. It's beautiful. Right? And the, just the spirit of that very last scene of our favorite scene of our favorite movie when they're just, you know, Sally kind of gives Gary like, yeah, I wasn't joking. We really do jump off the roof on All Hallows Eve. Here it is. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. so that's uh, that's in the spirit of that scene and just all the feels about the season's changing over to the fall and just getting cozier as the winter, you know, you know, comes our way and just encapsulating those feelings that the magic of autumn is just, it's here. It's here. It has all the flavors of autumn. It's yes. great. Don't miss next week's episode. We hope you guys enjoy. Here's a little bit of a medley of all the songs that we've showcased on our podcast this season. Oh, mm -hmm.
keeping in the song vein, we had specific episodes that didn't, not songs we wrote, but Justina had this idea. Do you want to tell them the inception of this? Yeah. So I don't remember when we incepted this, but it was definitely before our 10th episode, right? Because the whole premise was every 10 episodes, we would kind of do a little side quest episode, a little um, tasty morsel of music, if you will, because we, me and Christina have talked about so much music on this podcast, right? And Spotify mm -hmm. actually gave us or gives us the option to showcase this music in episodes if we want to. Any of the artists whose music we use, I get, I'm sure they get a cut of whatever we play through Spotify's agreement with any of the artists who host their music on Spotify. So um, that's why we don't offer this on Apple Podcasts. We apologize that we can't at this time or maybe ever, but that's why, because we're directly affiliated with Spotify in that sense. So every 10 episodes, we showcase one episode titled WMSR. And I think we even went into what the W stood for in one of our previous yeah. episodes. Yeah. How a lot of radio stations have that W before. But we looked up what the W stood for. And I think depending on what coast you're on, it's either W or something else. K? K yeah, K or W, right. And I think anything past Mississippi or something like that was w so we decided to go with the w and msr stands for magnolia street radio so every 10 episodes we showcase um one bonus msr segment of our musical episode and it's kind of radio style it's like a countdown like our top 10 countdowns of music that we've talked about from the past 10 episodes right pop-up video style pop-up video style right we give some facts about the song some behind the scenes about the song what the song might mean um some of the stats about the song like where it was on the charts the awards mm -hmm. it might have gotten some behind the scenes info about the artist behind the song and any of the you know other little stuff pertaining to the song that you might not otherwise know about i think the first two episodes was kind of like a free-for-all and then the next few episodes after that was more of like a theme, right? Yeah, so like, very centered. Yeah, so I think number three was more Stevie centered. Stevie yes. Nicks, we did an actual episode on Stevie Nicks. So it kind of fell in line with like the theme. Mm -hmm. So kind of rolling with the Stevie theme. Yeah. We did an MSR episode kind of just based on Stevie's music. And then um, the next one that was the Sudbury soundtrack. That's right. We All did the, the angst Sudbury music. Soundtrack. Yeah, all early aughts, uh, alt rock music was on our, our Sudbury's MSR episode. And then we wrapped up the season. We're wrapping up the season with our devil or Jimmy's Beasle Boss Bash, right? Beasle Boss, yes. Yep. Beasle Boss Bash, yeah. So they're all devil inspired songs and all kind of like having to do with that devil of the desert kind of crossroads selling your soul trope. Mm -hmm. So. Our very last MSR episode, kind of ringing in our Jimmy marathon, our two month long marathon of Jimmy Jimmy content. We're kind of um, finishing it off with this nice little touch of the and a MSR. bang and a bash. Exactly, just giving him all the music to, uh, I guess, whistle his little tune to. Yeah, but over fifty two episodes, we hosted five wmsr specials where we explored 62 different songs the artist the inspiration and the legacy you posted an instagram story yesterday the day before that encapsulated it perfectly yeah. it was like scream metal mixed with a spice girl song yeah and like, joining in on a wmsr is a mixed bag it's complicated for sure yes so we had what did we have on we had like dwight yoakam on our first one we had tenacious d of course we also had like TLC, Dolly Parton, Dolly uh, Parton, Cleopatra mm -hmm. <laughs> coming at you. So many, so many different songs. Yeah. Um, I know those don't have a lot of listens, but I feel like it's kind of like a guilty pleasure. Like, cause me and you can kind of just like not go off script. I mean, we do kind of follow a little bit of a script just to read you the, the behind the scenes and stats of each of the songs, but it's nice that we get to give those songs their own spotlight for a moment since we talk about them in such a fleeting matter. A it gets it out of our system exactly exactly yeah. so yeah. those were a lot of fun to create for us so we hope you guys enjoy listening to them as much as we enjoy creating those for you yeah. and season two we're gonna do even more of those so yeah we wanted to also send just again a huge huge thank you to those of you who have sent us things like y'all are so talented, so sweet. And yes, you're going to spend money on postage for us. We really appreciate it. And we wanted to just shout out a couple 
people that we wanted to thank you for sharing your amazing talent and your generosity with uh, other practical magic loving people. Yeah, we got many gifts from from our listeners and supporters over the past year. So we just want to take this moment right now to just do a little thank you shout out to everybody who's extended their generosity to us over the past year. Some of them are from artisans, some of them are more of like a digital thing. But you know, all around, we just we're so grateful of any any resources sent our way by anybody who wants to share what. So thank you to Haley of at Haley Marlies. She's an artist. She sent us some black soap, sent us a little lavender for luck. Um, the prints that she did were so cute, so beautiful. They're hanging up on my wall. I know Justina keeps them nice and safe in her binder, our practical magic binder. So thank you, Haley, again so much for supporting us. Yes, thank you. And then also we want to extend a thank you to Joseph Benitez Egerton of At Grounded by the Moon. And Joseph creates all those beautiful tarot and oracle decks, uh, practical magic centered. And we use the oracle deck frequently. You've probably heard us use it on every single episode thus far. So, And Joseph is the one that we are going to interview season two about his beautiful work. So, And he has sent us, um, he sent us uh, the tarot deck and he also sent us some kickstarter goodies from one of the campaigns that he was running so thank you so much joseph for sending us that little goodie box of all of that awesome stuff we even used joseph's the goodie box that he sent us we used some of those items to do a little beltane ritual that's over on the patreon so you guys can go check that out i know it's not beltane right now but i mean anything on our patreon is recyclable if you guys want to yeah. use it next year you can so yeah an idea those candles are so freaking cool and again listen to our coupon code you can get 10 percent off over on his site these candles since i'm thinking you and i use them to absorb the mat the brightness the sun of beltane if you guys did that with us, crack those suckers out at Yule, the darkest night of the year. Bring some of that summer sun back into your home. Yeah, I love that idea. So you can use it all year round. And I love the little card holder that he sent us with the. Oh, yeah, I do too. Cards. Yeah. I keep his manifest card right here on my desk. I see it every single day. I sit down here. Yeah. And he sent us a little tiger's eye that it's like the little thumbprint in it. That's like so nice to just like just rub when you're feeling a little anxious and, you know, just bringing all those those good vibes your way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Laura Denhertag at the Enchanted Journal. And Laura sent us some practical magic inspired bath and body products. She's the artisan of black soap and other treasures, which she sent us some of her black soap she sent me some of her balm of gilead and she sent christina a necklace or something else she sent she sent us yeah necklace. i got a little eye of newt necklace right yeah so um thank you so much to laura and all of the beautiful stuff you're creating and the stuff that she sent our way and laura yeah was one of the one of the people who we interviewed over the past year so Thank you so much for thinking of us and sending us some of that stuff. We want to thank Mandy Moon Higgs over at the Pickety Pumpkin. She sent us some really sweet prints in a car decal that I have had my eye on for a long time. Yeah. And it's actually sitting on my desk because I have a trash car and I hope to get a new one in the next year. So it's going on the new car. And yeah. we want to thank you so very much for supporting us in all your little ways and sending us your sweet voice memos and things like that. We appreciate you so much. Yeah, I love her voice memos because it just like, it makes me feel like she's just, she's like one of us. Like she just, she can relate so much. And I love how she's always like, you guys are my people. Yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. It's so nice. Cute. It's just like she's checking in. Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. So we appreciate your voice memos. And also my, I have not uh, whipped out my car, car decal yet either because as Christina knows, not that my car is on its last leg or anything like that, but you saw like my air condition doesn't work. Like I have my engine Save light it. on, like yeah. I'm saving it for like a new yeah. car. You could put on your guitar case. Ooh, I like that idea. I guess it doesn't have to go on a car. It can go in anything, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and also her art prints, I also do have in my little practical magic working binder of all of our lyrics and all of the stuff that we have as like the notes for this podcast and anything that we have in that little binder we want to thank marissa ritter from at moonlight garden 13 you are amazing and we really really enjoy getting to know you and thank you for all your special gifts that you've sent us and just being a part of our magnolia street neighborhood thank you yeah, yeah her candle beautiful the roller bottle amazing i freaking love how that smells thank you so much marissa for sending us all those beautiful gifts we appreciate you our ride or die bitch kim <laughs> thank you so much kim 
yeah. for hopping on board with us and supporting us and uh, making your memes. Kim is at iHeartPracticalMagic on Instagram. Such cool memes. Um, really great uh, resource for finding those like other creators. Like I found quite a few other practical magic creators through Kim's Instagram, but she also was super sweet and has sent us two different versions of the practical magic script that we're going to go through with her yes. at some point in the future. We just have to tinker Taylor soldier spy, like how to get through these without getting sued. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also, I do want to extend another thank you to Kim because she also sent us some little goodies. She sent us some, some little plastic pins in with the scripts <laughs> that I never, I'm so sorry, Kim, I never reached out to say thank you for those, but I just want to say thank you. And um, she also sent us like a little purple sachet with some stuff in it. Um, thank you so much, Kim, for all the little extra goodies you sent yeah. along with those scripts. We really appreciate it. And we can't wait to, to read some of those scripts with you because I'm pretty sure that if it is an episode, whether it's an episode on the Spotify or an episode on the Patreon, I'm sure it's going to be batshit crazy off the freaking wall, bananas, and it's going to be hilarious, and we can't wait to do that with you. Yeah. So thank you so much. Yeah. Kim, your pens are on my, like, sun visor in my car, and it really confuses my mechanic. You know, he's, like, looking up, and Joseph's are, too. Joseph sent us pins, mm -hmm. and there was one other, I thought there was one other person. I'm so sorry. I think yeah. you sent us an enamel pin also. But they're all together up on my visor, and it's really confusing to a lot of people. <laughs> well, all the practical magic swag. Yeah, the swag. Yeah, practical magic swag. Yeah. Swag. Last but not least, David Spellman Baker. Thank you again for sharing the Sudbury pilot with us and all of your amazing knowledge and information, your talent, and your time. And also, Isis Chandler sent us some of those pages to use on other episodes too. So yes. thank you again to Isis for letting us use some of your beautiful work to coincide with some of the episodes that we were talking about. If we missed anybody, we're very, very sorry. But um, if, if you know, we, we forgot, just shout us out and say, hey, hey, you forgot about me. Yeah, we'll put you in the shout out on the next episode. 100%. Sure. Thank yeah. you guys so much again. We don't want anybody to think that we forgot about them. We just really appreciate every each and every one of you and all your generosity that you showed us over the past year and anything that you've had to share with us or wanted to send our way. So we just want to let you know that we appreciate you. And if you know Justina and I by now, you know she and I have lists, lists, lists upon lists of everything. And we do try to write down names and, and handles and things you've sent us. Um, so if we, again, if we miss somebody, it's not for lack of trying, yeah. we really tried to keep everything organized, all the names in order. And so, yeah. Also, thank you to all of the patrons, all the listeners who have sent us in questions, comments, your own theories, things to talk about or discuss or deep further down the rabbit hole on mm -hmm. over the course of the past year. We appreciate anybody who's any had any feedback to send our way and also to anybody who interacts with our Spotify I guess the question or the polls that we have in the little Spotify dashboard under each episode. I do read those so don't think we don't read those. We definitely read those. We don't read them on the episodes, but definitely it is cool to see your guys' input. Um, so I guess that kind of leads us into this next segment. Where we're going to answer some questions from some of our patrons, some of the people on our Instagram, I guess some people on our Facebook, anybody who wants to know something or has a burning question for us uh, pertaining to the podcast. So practically Salem over on Instagram wanted to know if we have a favorite episode or is it like picking your favorite kid? And I, <laughs> I answered them and I was thinking about this question because like, I think we should answer a favorite episode that we've researched and then like our favorite episode to listen back on. My favorite one to research was for sure the Victorian architecture one. So I would say my favorite episode to research was probably the Stevie episode because mm. her music has been such a staple in my life and I just wanted to do her justice. And she's a queen and she's a goddess and she deserves the best episode she possibly could, yeah. you know. Um, so. I really tried my hardest and due diligence to cover all the bases and, you know, mention all the important, I guess, staples and landmarks of her life over the span of her career that's still going. I freaking admire her so much and it would just be a dream to even talk to her one day. <laughs> even just be in so, the same city as her one day would be great. Be in the same airspace, breathe the same air, exactly. So I think, yeah, my favorite episode to have researched would probably be the Stevie episode. Mm -hmm. And then my favorite one to listen back to, I told you, I listened to our second bullshit show, the Jimmy one, where 
I'm doing my Goron impersonation, yeah. and you you bringing the 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 Dracula music back in and out, it just it kills me. I listened to that episode probably five times over. That's so funny. So it's got to be probably my favorite one, and the exorcisms and hauntings one, just because we were in the same room together, yeah. and I just I cherish that memory of us being you know the first time in a room together just feeding off each other's energy and not to mention all the awesome spooky stories we were talking about yeah it just gets me all in the feels for halloween and i can't wait to and at this point while we're recording this we have not been to salem yet at the time of this that this comes out we will have already the salem trip will have passed but i cannot wait to go back to salem with you and just experience it again from a halloween perspective not from a working perspective you know oh so, my gosh i know the yeah. thought just thinking about salem now i'm like not stressed not yeah. stressed at all because there's no it's just like a free-for-all there's no rules exactly yeah. yeah so those are my favorites so what did, yeah. what are your favorites yeah the researching victorian architecture is just because some it's something i love doing and i was like i could fill up a day and a half with this topic uh -huh. but i also really like the witch's garden series we started was fun. I really like that one. Um, even to listen back to for advice is good, yeah. but definitely the hauntings exorcisms is like it was the first. It was our first time together, so I think that one is so funny, yeah. and the the stuff, the little things you put in there, especially to watch. This one's over on our Patreon again, eight dollar tier. So fucking funny <laughs> with Justina and I, like just our looks and our mannerisms and the drinking and the avi in and out. Drinking. It's so funny. Yeah. I do want to point out that anybody listening to that episode might be a little confused with some of the sound effects because you're not seeing it. If you watch it visually, you'll understand like why I put some of those sound effects in there just to kind of like, I guess, heighten the drama or whatever. Yeah, yeah the drama. Yeah, yeah. Also, there are a, a couple little like, not blips, but like things that might sound like it could be a spirit present mm -hmm. track. Um, and also, I do know it's a five hour episode. It's very long. So it's not for the faint of heart. It's for the long-winded people like us who just want to absorb just good conversation with mm -hmm. a friend over some drinks and just get in the feels for spooky season so we kind of tried to i guess cover all our bases and give you that juicy ass episode because yeah. it's probably the only episode that you guys are going to have for me and christina together in the same room probably i don't know maybe for, for a next while year. for a while yeah Not for a while but we wanted to give you guys treat it kind of like a bonus episode even though it wasn't really a bonus episode you know it's a big ass episode yeah. and your girl did some timestamps. there's a lot of timestamps in there <laughs> so check those out for easy yeah. navigation yeah so if you guys want to jump around and not have to feel like you have to sit through five hours of our bullshit then you can but i yeah. mean if you want to listen to the five hours we commend you bless <laughs> bless, yeah, commend bless you. your heart bless your bless heart, your heart. <laughs> yeah those are the two most fun definitely yeah. So thank you, Practically Salem, for your question. Our next question is from Lori, one of our patrons. And she asked, do you think you would still be practi a practicing witch if there were no such movies as Practical Magic, The Craft, etc.? I don't know, because I feel like The Craft, well, The Craft was the first movie I ever got into as a teenager that really kind of catapulted me into my own path. I don't necessarily know, because I feel like a lot of the other, like, witchy kind of movies and fiction that's out there is a little too not harry potter but like you know abracadabra, abracadabra. Mm -hmm. like over the top with the magic sparkle or whatever mm -hmm. but i feel like the craft and practical magic kind of both painted which is in a more normal light like your everyday witch and they were just so relatable and i feel like that's why as a teenager anyway teenagers are young and impressionable to begin with I think that's why I gravitated to those. But movies. what if there weren't movies like that? That's what I'm saying. If there weren't, I'm not sure if I would have found my path because I wouldn't. They, I wouldn't have found that relatable in mm -hmm. into the whole world of it. You know, I think if I just like watched Harry Potter when it came out, I would have been like, oh, cool, like you know, witches, abracadabra, whatever. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't think I would have saw that like. I can be a witch in my own right, just finding the magic in the everyday little things type mm -hmm. of deal. You know what I mean? It would have definitely have had a different like vocabulary yes. attached to whatever you were doing. I know for sure. I feel like either way, even if I didn't find my path as a witch, I think for sure either way, I would have definitely left the Catholic faith 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope I would 
have done that because I was very deep in it. I was, it would like ebb and flow, you know, I'd be really into it and then I'd be really out of it because like I could just sense things. And I was like, this, what I'm being told is wrong. You know, I don't like being told what to do. I do the opposite. Exactly. Um, With this lifestyle, if I ended up moving here, anything that's surrounded by woods, I think I would have found a way to still connect in my own way, but again, having a different vocabulary attached to it, whether if, even if I was still Catholic, like I have a mother Mary statue out in my garden right now, you know, it's, it's all about what long distance phone company you choose. You're going to connect with the divine on some level. doesn't matter what you call it. I, I really love that sentiment. And I, I think I agree with that. Like, even if I didn't have the word witchcraft or pagan attached to what I was doing, I think I would have definitely felt some way to just connect with nature on some level or powers that be in my own way. Mm -hmm. Like you said, I don't think I, even though I wouldn't have attached that vocabulary to it, I think I would have found, I would have found my spiritual path in some way, regardless. Mm -hmm. And as kids, like you and I sound very similar in that we were interested in like, kind of like the darker things or like occult things, whether that was credit to the craft or practical magic, I don't know. But I always was interested in, Egyptology and the afterlife and mummification and and gods like even before practical magic the craft I knew there were different views of pantheons and different gods I thought they were fascinating so I think I would have trottled down that same path at some point yeah even before I guess even before like the craft and stuff like I grew up like watching mythological movies like my dad like I was raised on the Argonauts. And the Argonauts and uh what's the other one I feel like there was another one that I that I grew up watching too. Was it the Odyssey or something? Mm-hmm. I don't I don't remember. Um, but you know, I grew up watching a lot of mythological stuff because my dad was so into Greek mythology, like That's so sweet. into it. Yeah. He had books about it, and he would just like tell me these, these stories, and I would just like be fascinated, like not even like really understanding that people in the pagan path worship many different gods and like all of those, I guess, polytheistic, mm-hmm. you know, belief systems or whatever. Like, I didn't really put the two and two together until, like, way later yeah. down the line. You know, yeah. even after watching The Craft, you know, more as a so, more so as an adult, I feel like that's when I kind of made the connection. So, I don't know. That's a, that's a really <laughs> thought-provoking question, Lori. So, we appreciate – we could go down this rabbit hole, I feel like, for hours. Yeah. But I'll just say that I think, yeah, maybe me and Christina would have found our path either way. But maybe we just not would, – would, maybe we wouldn't call ourselves witches, though, mm-hmm. you know? Totally. So, But thank you, Lori, for writing us in. We appreciate it. Our next question is from Sam. All right. Sam asks, what are some ways you stay connected to your craft when life gets busy? Oh, goodness. Oh, my God. That's a loaded question. We've been so busy this couple months. It's it's perfect time to ask this question. I feel like self-care is often overlooked as part of your practice. Mm. But I feel like self-care is a very important part of your practice because mm. if you feel drained, you can't pour from an empty cup. You can't create magic when you're running on fumes, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I've been trying to just be really mindful. And Christina, you probably – Christina has seen firsthand and Christina has been exhausted too. We're both fucking exhausted. So just being mindful of like, you know, we just got back from a Boston trip. We're trying to wrap up season one, gear up mm-hmm. for season too. We have another Salem trip coming up. So trying to just take things a little slower, you know, taking that hot bath if you need to, going, getting back into the garden if you need to, just reconnecting with nature and just doing those little things, those little acts of self-care that are going to just fuel you for the next thing that you have to get done on your to-do list you know so i know that doesn't sound very witchy but not everything is witchy and witchcraft like sometimes it's just taking a step back and just getting quiet and in peace with your own mind and where you're at right now and just being trying to be very present i feel like and i think that you what you were saying about both of us feeling this certain way and as far as like working together within this year we especially in this last couple months we've noticed like hey, maybe let's put this off. We're tired. We don't have the right energy for this today. Let's put this off. We're not going to force it. And we definitely hope to carry that through. I know that's not witchcraft, but that's part of empathy and feeling each other's energy, even through a a screen, you know, or through a a text message. Like, all right, we might want to step back a little bit. I think, I don't think I told you, but I've been putting my phone on do not disturb at like 6 p.m. Like, I don't want to look at anything. I'm clocking out until seven the next morning because I can't, I can't, oh, because doing the plaid dog stuff, it's really fun. It's going to be a great project, 
but it's very anxiety inducing scrolling and updating and checking in and you know it's fun 100%. but the phone gives us anxiety i think i we're we're we're, we're both on autopilot to a extent and we're both like october in general for me is just always batshit crazy right. even before the podcast so right. adding adding a podcast on top of a campaign launch on top of all of that it's just like my brain feels like honestly feels like a little bit of mush right now so i'm trying mm -hmm. to take those extra steps to just being mindful of just being present and taking the rest day if we need to that's why we've recorded a month in advance every episode so we if we're not feeling it one day we can put it off for you know a little bit if we need to mm -hmm. and like just being aware of each other's wants and needs i think i've been trying to get my kitchen witchery just like give myself time to do that. I'll put my Croatian music on. And the other day, like we picked apples when we were in the mountains and oh. I, I made filling for apple pie. But as I was like chopping away, I could hear my grandma in my ear, like, Seca, make apple pita, make apple pita. I was like, I don't know how to make that. Like I'm making apple pie. Like stop telling me what to do. You like whispering the ingredients in your ear. He always, always does. So cooking oh. and just be having the music playing and then making them feel comfortable, inviting them in. She always comes in. She's like, there's too much salt. <laughs> like, <laughs> or that's not enough salt. But I'll, I have like a little lamp on my counter. I'll turn on my Himalayan salt lamp. I'll put the lights like nice and cozy and that's when i feel witchy is when i'm putting a shit ton of ingredients in a pot it's stew season i'm got, about to get lit the fuck up with stew i love it what. so doing I that that kind of keeps me connected is being in in my kitchen and the garden is about to switch over to you know right. prepping for winter so yeah. we got to put more stuff in the ground and, right. and care for the earth again the that's other right. night i was feeling really ballsy so all the apples that I, I cored and I peeled and I walked my ass out to the, the portal tree in the woods and I, I dumped all the apples there and I was feeling really brave. Some of those like, don't throw them away. Don't compost them. Put them out in the portal tree. Something will enjoy them. The other, actually a couple nights before like that. Offering? I would, yeah. I usually leave offering out there and there's a little thing hanging. I hung something up where I put flowers. Like when I cut flowers, I'll put them out there, which is like another way. If you got two minutes, you're looking at your garden, go cut some flowers and leave them at your altar or leave them at your safe space or put them on your table right. counter. I love doing that. But a few nights before, like something was a little weird. Papillon wasn't coming back. So I had walked toward that corner of the yard and in the dark, we have like a big telephone pole that has the only light on the street. So it illuminates our driveway, but it doesn't reach all the way out there. And I had walked like into the darkness. Mm -hmm. I'm calling for her down here. I'm looking and I see something, something like, uh, like reflective in the trees, uh -huh. like two little red eyes. And I was like, nope. And I went what? back inside. I was like, don't turn around. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. They're just getting what they need. <gasps> and I went because the fae, the forest spirits are so like, very very present oh and like we have a good relationship but they're like you should not be out here right now <laughs> like okay i'm gone bye Papillon so did come back creepy. yeah but <laughs> I leave, uh, yeah leave offering just enjoy enjoy flowers enjoy yeah. a brownie for breakfast exactly do you ever leave the uh the wood spirits some uh chocolate or anything sweet i don't i just had the last cookie today <laughs> I, <should make> <laughs> I have the last cookie no um, usually it's flowers or, or yeah. apples okay yeah. um i have in the past left like little fairy off like little honey water and like little seashells outside yes. of my mm -hmm. on that yeah um one one thing that i do want to mention that i completely forgot to even mention for sam's question some ways to stay connected to my craft when life gets busy i do set aside one night out of the entire month to just honor the moon and the full when when the moon is full um and i know there's stuff you could do at the new moon at the first quarter moon at the wind like you know but did you already have your full moon tea party i did and it's not always on the full moon sometimes it's like the weekend that like the sun it's always on a sunday night and um it's usually the week before the full moon mm -hmm. Unless, like scheduling doesn't allow for it then it'll be the week the weekend after the full moon mm -hmm. so that you work on like banishing or like waning kind of yeah, energy yeah, yeah. stuff for the past two three years probably since i started my patreon i've been having one full full moon tea party every single month and it's just me and a very intimate group of girls that just get together and and guys some guys have come through on um i've had a couple guy friends come through on, on these uh, full moon little tea parties and it's and we pull tarot cards we read from um like just like books uh recipes we trade one of my 
girls in the group, she suggested that we do this. This this is a little card deck from it. Um, it's called the Night School. Have you heard of this? Mm -mm. It's called the Night School, and it's basically like a small textbook, but also comes with a journal and a little card deck like this with some prompts. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just like a whole, uh, I guess, course on how to worship the night. And Ooh. it's just really cool. And it just gives such like full moon, full moon. That's cool. goth as fuck. Uh, it requires you to go outside and spend some time in the night. So we're looking forward right. to doing that. Okay. And I actually have to do my very first uh, batch of assignments. So the last full moon tea party that we had, which was like the like a weekend ago um we kind of did like the whole orientation and the introduction and got our assignments in order so now this whole month leading up to the next full tea party we have to do our assignments and then we're, we'll get to present each other our work to each other in the next tea party you love having homework i do i like <laughs> i like having goals and like things to check off my list and mm -hmm. like things to do to further my knowledge and further my connection with my craft further my knowledge, further my knowledge. No. No. <laughs> Hard to not go into Jimmy now. <laughs> you um, have no choice. I have no choice. I'm I'm good on now. I just I am good on now. So that's that is one of the things that I must mention that I do make it a point to do is just have that one night a month to just connect with the moon, connect with my sisterhood, and just be at one with uh, the night. It's like an accountability group because I'm the host of these things, yeah. But like I know, like these other girls plan on coming to this thing because that is their one night a month to also disconnect from our busy lives and everything mm -hmm. our, our uh, office door or like you know so it's just they hold me accountable i hold them accountable so it's nice to have each other yeah to just be like all right full moon tea party let's go it's time it's time to disconnect it's time to be at one with uh the divine and yeah do what we totally need to do. Yeah, raise that energy, man. Sam also says, um, do you think you will continue to do the same type of format and material for the podcast for the next year? Or do you think you will be doing anything differently? I'm content with it. Just curious. I feel like we we definitely found our stride and kind of like the format that we're not that we're comfortable with it or that we got stuck in that format. But like I found just like something that seems to work, you know, book, movie going into those mentions and then the second half going into the magic the history the lore um i don't know what do you what are your thoughts about that do you think i'd like the the listeners to let us know because i think we have a pretty set as far as like the first half definitely has to do with practical magic and then the second half we typically will go into the scientific stuff first and then the magical stuff but if you guys want us to do the magic stuff first and then the science at the end that's totally fine just yeah. let us know I'm yeah. trying to think if we're going to still give people like the previews the same day or um, if WMSR is still going to be as exciting this year. I hope it is. I yeah. hope we're not too busy to be able to fit those in. It's hard to say because we really don't know what we're doing. Because I mean, like, yeah, it's trial and error. It's been trial and error for us since the very beginning. <laughs> and I feel like, you know, we're kind of just finding our way through the dark, right? We're just like shining a light on on whatever it is we're doing at that moment and trying to be present about it, not trying to think too much about the future. I mean, I know like we want to do more interviews in the coming season mm -hmm. and also more song episodes in the coming season. So that's the only difference that I see would actually change is like doing more of those uh, specialty episodes that we didn't do as much of. In right, season. right, right, right. Yep, so I agree. Yeah, that would be the only thing I would say. Yeah. Maybe more fan fiction too. If you guys like fan fiction, let us know. <laughs> I, 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 know, I, know I know me and Christina love doing it, but I mean, I know I mean, it might annoy some people. I know one person voted no on our poll and <laughs> it's That's true. Actually, there is a, uh, there are actual Practic Magic fan fictions we have not touched. We've just been writing our own, but they're out Ooh. there. Yeah, I mean, we can explore some actual fan fiction if that's what you guys want to hear. So, I mean, it's a, it's a free for all. And that's the beauty of this our podcast is that like we are trying to make it a point there are no rules we kind of just are doing what we feel is right at the time so but if you guys want to hear anything specific let us know we'll, yeah. we're open to anything yeah i hope we're not scary because we always try to reiterate like let us know what you need come yeah. to us whenever you can hit us up but we're, we're not getting any feedback so we're just gonna keep doing what we're doing yeah and also if there's anything that we can do differently for you guys like i know me and christine have been trying to make not only the watch parties, but the Facebook lives and, you know, all of our live events, not getting as many, um, not as much interest as we had anticipated as, as we had hoped for. So I don't know, maybe we'll scale back on those a little bit and put our time to things that are better 
suited for our if time. If there is something know. that we could offer on the Patreon, you're like, oh, we'd love to see this. You guys haven't done this. Then we'll do that instead. And also I know that the holidays are coming up October, November, December, into the New Year's. I know people are going to be busy as shit, more so than the summer. And to be able to catch us just bullshitting on a live, I know is difficult. So if there's another way that we can be uh, present with you and get to know you on some level, please, we'll do that. Just yeah. let us know how to do that. We're easy. We're we're flexible. We we're adaptable. So we yeah. we just want feedback. Honestly, we want to do know if we're doing a decent job. Like, are we doing okay? Like, <laughs> who is there knows? Right, that you guys want from us. Like, we'll you know we'll do whatever you guys have suggestions for. So mm -hmm. we, yeah. But Sam, yeah, thank do. you for writing those in. It's it's awesome to have gotten to know you as well and put the bug in everybody's ear about we are more than open to. Uh, change in opinion and uh, Patreon perspective. No, we got a suggestion box in the Discord. Go put your suggestions in there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys are on the Discord, definitely go check out that thread, get your suggestions in. All right. So this next question, well, not necessarily a question, but this comes from Crystal. Crystal says, I don't have any questions, but I absolutely love your show. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Um, she says, I enjoy your sense of humor and topics. I've only recently discovered it, so I'm not too far into the show yet. So far, I loved episodes 2 and 2.5 comparing the book and the movie. I also loved the one that talked about the house. I had read the first two books before discovering you, but on the Sally Owens character analysis episode, you revealed a big spoiler with the last book, so I decided to pause it until I finished the last two. <laughs> Should be soon, but I can't wait to get back into it. I always have you guys to thank for introducing me to the Practical Magic Oracle, and I had to get a set, the new moon set with the holograph edging. Awesome! That's nice. an awesome, awesome set. Um, she says, I think it was also your podcast that helped me find the Etsy sellers from the Courage Tea and Black Soap. Nice. A long-winded way of saying, this all gal thinks you guys rock and keep it up. Your show and the Comfy Cozy Witch podcast are my two staples in the car. And I get your Magnolia Street song stuck in my head all the time. Love it. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Good, it's working. It's working. <laughs> Maybe that's why people stopped listening to us is because we spoilers. were dropping spoilers. Yeah, they were like, God damn it. Well, I mean, we do put spoiler warning in big caps in the episode description. That's true. Right? So we that's do true. warn. We do warn about the spoilers. So, But as soon as you're done the books, come hop right back on the podcast with us, you please. Are more than welcome to come right back so we can dish all the tea that you're looking for <laughs> about everything that you've read up to uh, up until this point, which uh -huh. hopefully all of it so that we don't spoil any more stuff for you. <laughs> So thank you, Crystal, for your message, and uh, we look forward to you jumping back in uh, whenever you're ready, whenever you've read the rest of, of the book. This is going to be a big surprise when she gets to this episode, oh, yeah. years from now. Yeah. These next few questions weren't for, from anyone in particular, but it was just things I thought you and I could ruminate on, talk on for a moment. Yeah. So um, we have question number four. There's 10, 10 questions. Question number four. What has been the most challenging aspect of running a podcast about practical magic? I would say our different work styles. Yes. Well, our, I don't know. But do you think that balances us out, though? And our different productivity times of day? Oh, yeah. But I guess that just makes us a 24-hour business. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that was a challenging thing to get used to starting out. Yeah. And also just the lack of, of know-how. I mean, neither one of us has ran a podcast before. So literally every single element of this podcast has been trial and error, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of adjusting to the flow, like the workflow, getting into the groove of things, finding our stride and finding our style. Because me and Christina both have listened to a lot of podcasts before starting our own. So we're just like, not that we're trying to copy off of anybody in particular, but like we, we pick from, from things that we like and and then we just try to put our own spin, our own style on what it is that we liked about the podcast that we listened to. That's the only way we really knew how to run a podcast. Right. Yeah. Our learning curve was imitation. Yeah. <laughs> we had to we had to figure it out somehow. And that was the only way was to practice through what somebody else did or didn't do. There's been other shows that I'm like, oh, this is why I don't enjoy it. Let's not do that. Yeah. Right. And I think a main thing was probably sound, right? Making sure that our sound was decent, like sooner than later. Because mm -hmm. if you guys did stick around past episode three, like we we used our cell phones to record probably the first like three or four episodes. Almost. Yeah, right? yeah. I the house maybe not, and Sally maybe not. Even our little snowball 
mics I know aren't great, but they're better than using a telephone. And then the minute we found out we could do both of our audio separately, that wasn't until much later. Right. Game, Game changer. changer. Game changer. Yeah. And the question is kind of specific podcast about practical magic. So I guess the research and just the turnaround time between episodes, because there's some episodes where I wish we had a, a lot more time to research some of these topics, Agreed. but like it's so it's so go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. And me and Christina both still work day jobs, even though they're part time, which gives us the time to do this podcast at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that we have as much time as we do to put toward this podcast, I'm so grateful for it that we both have the time to do this. But I mean, I also wish there was more time. Like if we could do this podcast full time, it would be such a dream because then we can put more into the research aspect and not feel so rushed in between episodes. Yeah. 100 that's, that's the only thing and then yeah. the edit time too is like just making sure we're on top of the editing and making sure that like even though we record a month in advance for each episode like we still have to record the episode the next week so if we don't stay on top of those edits that can really all just like back up and like and however long the episode is like double that time for editing basically because you we're, we have to re-listen through everything yeah. and the, it just takes quite a long time to edit yeah, things that's down why it took me literally like two or three weeks to edit the hauntings and exorcism episode that's a five fucking hour episode so imagine like if it's a five hour edit imagine how many hours of content we actually had of just bullshit yeah. you know Dude, i'm not saying because you and i don't always sit down in our studios to crank out podcast stuff i would yeah. be so interested to use like clockify or something to see how many hours we actually put into the podcast weekly starting season two yeah. i might start doing that but i know yeah. sometimes we use our phones to to change things sometimes you have your computer on the road with you while you're working Come on, we're really trying i work a lot from the road like yeah. you know my job kind of enables me to be in the car sometimes for extensive periods of time i'm just like waiting for molly to get out of a class and like mm -hmm. i'll i'll use that hour to edit or update social media or anything anything really yeah. like whatever yeah. there's almost no way to clock how no. much we put into this really not this is the most effort i've really put into any job i've ever had oh uh, same <laughs> yeah so this gotta go somewhere or because <laughs> we love it and we love, we love it. it so much it would just be so amazing if this was our job that it would be amazing to say this is our job mm -hmm. you know because it's like yeah. before trying to find a career i'm sure people have said to you like are you gonna nanny the rest of your life like i've had that said to me yeah and it's like i don't know what i want to do i don't feel like i'm good at anything that really gets you like a decent paycheck yeah we're good artists but like pff, like nobody needs fine art anymore and i've had people say well what do you love doing like what do you love like learning about i'm like fucking practical magic like it's crazy that something i'm like I said in the past, like the one thing that I really love is witchcraft and like practical magic, where you've been able to make a not career, but a passion, passion project. Yeah. And I mean, it could very well go in that direction. Who's to Guys, say? Guys, help us make this a career, please. We need more patrons. <laughs> yeah. So but we do have more projects in the pipeline for you guys and Ooh, just having yeah. your support behind those would be massive. So keep yeah. on, your ear to the ground for those. What else do we have on this questions? Number Leah? five. Number What's number five. five? Have your perspectives on practical magic evolved or changed over the course of the year? I think so. I think maybe in regard to certain characters that I had opinions about before have definitely changed. Mm -hmm. as far as jimmy who's so complex you know he's the bad guy but just this month all the stuff we we discovered about him and also jet i 180 on her completely yeah i don't know i just think that going down all of the rabbit holes that we've gone down over the past year i don't think back when i like just was watching the movie 50 times a year as avi has stated in our <laughs> in that episode yeah. it was a lot it was a lot i watched the movie a lot but again it was something that i would have on in the background because it was a comforting movie and I just loved the aesthetic of it and just being in that world when I felt stressed or like irritable or just like wanting to get away from reality for a minute I would just put that movie on and it would just comfort me and like mm -hmm. but it was always just like a surface level watch I never looked too far into any of the symbolism or any of the imagery or any of the even the time like the course of time over the over the movie like and the goofs and trivia episode like all of those twists and turns and like things little things that you know we would we were able to piece together or discover as mm -hmm. like especially the book and the movie 
kind mm-hmm. of like going in tandem. Not only the first book, but the other three books too. Like Alice wrote those way after the first movie, the first book and the movie were ever released. So for her to go back and write those books from the perspective of not just the first book, but the first, the movie as well, and kind of figuring out maybe she included some Easter eggs, maybe some of those stuff does have to do with the movie and the other right. three books. Right. Like we don't, we don't know. It's just fascinating how so in depth this uh world actually is i think that's another uh uh, perspective that has changed is like some of this stuff is so on point like the production team knew what they were doing whether or not they knew what they were doing they knew what they were doing because it's all connected and like one example the fucking zip code the maria's island like an actual working zip code but not actually the name of the island which is you know so like little little stuff like that and just going down those rabbit holes of like you know picking out those little things in the movie like oh my god the toads on the page that's why jimmy turned like that's why the frogs are around and oh my god heck it or hectate or whatever they were doing the, whoever they, they were talking about is actually the god of the frogs or whoever like and like oh my god make- nigella fucked up that that spell right yeah. or, oh my god the the zip code the area code on gary's letter to sally totally different just like all the little little revelations of those little details you're not necessarily paying attention to when you just watch that movie at surface level but when you watch with a researcher's eyes and like you're trying to get information out of this movie to like do research on the topic that we're talking about Mm -hmm. like you find so much stuff that you're really not expecting so i guess in that essence i think my perspective of the of practical magic in the whole world has definitely evolved because it's just doing doing the research and doing this podcast has made me look at the littler things Mm -hmm. and kind of trying to look at look for deeper meaning in things and not take everything at face value right and i think before when it was just a comfort movie just to have it on your brain goes into following the plot a certain way and you you get stuck in that but after you and i have researched so in depth like the characters themselves and learn about their personalities you can start seeing those little minute little things of how their character arc develops and why they do the things that they do so those are really cool perspectives to to have come up yeah and the one example i can think of that is when jillian when the girls throw the syrup off the rocks and jillian comes back and she's coughing and like burping up like like the toad like was burping up the ring and i was like oh my god she's taking on characteristics of jimmy right now so it's like little 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 stuff like that that just makes you go oh my god yeah (laughs) her mannerisms do have deeper meaning she's not just like coughing to cough like she's coughing for a fucking reason yeah What's this the- one is kind of similar to what we just answered, but number six is how do you balance your personal lives and the podcast? A lot. I'm not sure if I have quite found the balance just yet, but I'm starting to with putting the phone on do not disturb in the evening. I need to do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but you and I are almost in constant contact with each other. And it's not that I don't ever want your Marcos. If something needs to be done and I can handle it, then I want to handle it as soon as possible. This is, j- we are so interwoven in each other's day to day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like the balance, um, like you were saying before, you're a morning person, I'm a night owl. So it kind of like, in that essence, it does balance each other out because when I can't get to the tasks at night, when you wake up in the morning, you usually nip those in the bud as soon as you wake up. And then it's vice versa. When you go to bed, I'm usually nipping tasks in the bud when I'm awake at night to all hours of the night. So it kind of balances each other out in that aspect. So I think... In that sense, we kind of have an advantage because there's usually always someone working or we're like we're both working around the clock, but usually one if one of us isn't working, the other one is and vice versa. Or we're overlapping. Or we're over exactly. Yeah. So I mean double team supreme here. Double team supreme. <laughs> Burrito supreme. Oils and perfumes. <laughs> And incense. Incense. But it's just going to get crazier the more projects we put on. So we do appreciate your patience. And if the format does change in the future, I hope it doesn't as far as the frequency of how often we can come out with episodes. But if it does, just bear with us. It might not be forever. But it would just uh, adapt and be flexible with us. Yeah. uh, Yeah. And just pointing out again, we are still just a two woman show. And as much as me and Christina can tackle together, like we don't have a whole team of people working for us. It's just the two of us. So like Mm -hmm. we do what we can when we can. And sometimes we might miss a social media post or, you know, miss something Mm -hmm. here or there, or maybe the post our uh, episode that's scheduled to go out on Friday at midnight as it usually does 
doesn't get posted right away and somebody's yeah. like hey the episode's not up what's going on and we're like yeah. oh shit we'll fix it okay. which somebody did thank you yeah. for doing that yeah thank you so yeah. much um and uh if anybody does want to be our editor like let us know but um pro bono like if you could just do it for free we cannot afford to pay anybody right now <laughs> we'll give you top billing in our biggest thank yous executive producer yeah 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 but go. yeah editing takes the most time what are your goals and aspirations for the podcast in the coming year any exciting plans or special episodes you'd like to taste or tease for your listeners well like we said we want to interview more people more song episodes hopefully by then we'll have an ep for people mm -hmm. we have a couple of projects in in the vault that we can't really spill too much about right now mm -hmm. so but it does have to do with the music so, yeah i i wish oh i wish i wish, I wish we could do um like more merch giveaways more more events with meeting like me in real real meet. time real life in the same room with each other and yeah. with listeners yeah it would be also a dream to be able to do events like not just like panels, but like, you know, being able to travel more in the sense of like seeing more stuff that has to do with this story in some mm -hmm. way. On oh, location. On location stuff. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. maybe doing a live here or there. Again, like I said, it would be a dream to do like a live tour, like a live show, plus some of our music, being able to showcase some of those songs live for, mm -hmm. for people would just be a dream. That'd be another element you know, we're not planning to do that anytime soon. I don't think we have the uh, resources to do that right now, but or the time. But that would be a dream and a goal of ours to be able to get to that point. If, you know, anybody wants to come see us out on the road, that'd be great to meet some of you guys. I think I want to, I'm actually starting, I want to do more garden episodes. Mm -hmm. I think those are really fun. And um, I want to start trying like some of the recipes that are in Ooh. the uh, Enchanted I Living you know magazine and stuff like that that'd be cool to start incorporating some uh maybe we could do like a recipe uh bonus episode or something like that where we try some some yeah <laughs> uh number eight are there any specific practical magic books movies or related topics that you haven't covered yet but are eager to explore in a future episode i think that goes with the last one we just did 100 percent. but there is there is one specific topic that I've been, I started researching, but I kind of put it on the back burner because we got busy with other stuff. But do you remember, I forget what episode it was in. Oh, I think it was the portraits episode where we were talking about Rose and her connection to the type, or connection to the Owens family from the Titanic. I don't know if I want to say right out what it is, but I do have an, a very fun episode brewing that has more connection, more Titanic practical magic connections. Um, yeah, the one I'm excited about is the nautical history one, which I'm putting my ass into. And that's why it hasn't come out yet is because like, I really want to do a good job. Right. Yeah. I'm sure both me and Christina have our own like, episodes, kind of like not in our main Magnolia Street folder in our Evernote, but like kind of like, oh, yeah, I just like hiding the good stuff for, until we have it re ready to present present. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. So we have our own uh, individual researched episodes that we're kind of keeping under wraps until we're ready to to let those out there but oh, i'm excited for those yeah number nine what advice would you give to aspiring podcasters who are considering starting their own niche podcast um be very patient it's not an overnight thing i mean christina we're me and christina are still finding our audience right as of right now we we still don't have a thousand instagram followers and we've yeah. been doing this a year yeah. but i mean you know go at your own pace and your audience will find you I think it doing it with a partner is beneficial because there are really good podcasts that are a single person, but there's something about a dynamic between two people, two opposing points of view, or, you know, something they find a similar ground or somebody's point of view switches because, you know, of a conversation. I think that's really a fun dynamic to have. So consider like doing it with a buddy. Um, you can even do it through Zoom these days. You don't have to be in the same state, just something that you are super passionate about. And it doesn't even have to be a niche thing that nobody's ever done before. If you want to gush about that thing, just do it. If you want to share your love on a platform like a podcast, just do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Gemini. <laughs> and, not even, and not even the dynamic aspect, but from coming for more from a logistical aspect, like we were saying before, like 
if one of us is too tired to do a task, the other one will pick up the slack. And it just helps to have two people on board that can like, you know, continuously be mm -hmm. oiling this machine and keep things running smoothly, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then also, I also wanted to just make it very clear that if you are going into podcasting to be expecting to make a lot of money, just make sure you're not podcasting for the wrong reasons. Make sure that it's something like you're gen genuinely are passionate about talking about and you can talk about it until you're blue in the face. Because yeah. You don't want to start a podcast with something that you're kind of passionate about because you're going to get sick of it really fast. You have to be like, you have to be wanting to talk about this 24 seven. And then me and Christina went into this understanding that like, this is just one movie in four books. Like there's probably only so much we could talk about. We're going to, we're going to come to a point where it's going to be like, okay, have we talked about everything yet? Mm -hmm. Unless Alice releases a new book or they release a new movie or something mm -hmm. like there is a point there's going to come a point or there might be a chance. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe we'll always have something to talk about, but there very well might come a point where we're like, okay, I think we've covered everything. Like, I think it's time mm -hmm. to just, you know, throw the towel in. <laughs> yeah. You know? And that makes me really sad to think about because I love me talking too. about all this stuff. Me too. But, but we have other stuff, hopefully, that's going to be able to, if that time ever does come, it's yeah. going to be able to transition us into this next project phase. 100%. Mm -hmm. And that's the other beautiful thing about it is that starting a podcast is just opening a door and enabling you to have a platform to be able to grow and you know attract listeners who resonate with you and get just building your audience but then once you have that audience you could take that audience with you hopefully anywhere you go whatever you decide to do after that podcast i mean look at aaron Mankey from lore that guy's got like five different podcasts <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's amazing i just yeah and i look at last podcast on the left and the amount of like quality research that their research team gives them and i'm like holy shit someday someday yeah. And who knows, maybe one of these days, if, you know, we end up, this does become our main gig, our job, our career, maybe one day we will have a team of people behind us that can help us kind of, you know, formulate new episodes or do the research. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to do the research, but we just present the research and like, you know. We are accepting resumes. Exactly. So it's just, it is exhausting being a two woman show. But we love it and we wouldn't trade this mm -hmm. for the world. And I think we found something really special here on Magnolia Street. So thank you to everybody who's listened over the past year. Hopefully yeah. you listen more in our sec our season two, second year. Lori had kind of the same question because she was hoping to start something with her girlies. Right. Um, and there's just a lot of like kind of like detailed things that go into if you you know, how frequently are you going to come out with something and what are you going to use to edit? How active are you going to be on social media, et cetera? Um, but I just want to say like one thing about the people that you are connecting with, they love this, you know, as much, if not maybe more than you do, but these people are going to have their own lives and maybe come in and out of your, your orbit. Yes. Um, and don't take that personally. Yes. Um, you know, they, it's not for something that you did. You didn't do anything wrong, um, but just be aware that people come in to your orbit for a certain point in time and they get what they need and then they have to sometimes move on. And that's okay. It's a revolving door, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people come in, some people leave, and that's fine. If we've ever released anything that has resonated with anyone at any moment in their lives, whether they still need us in their lives or not, we're just grateful that we've made an impact on whoever. Yeah, sometimes they call me, sometimes they leave. <laughs> sometimes they go out and you know. Let, let the door slam on the way out don't let it hit you on the ass but you know our last question number 10 what message or thoughts would you like to share with your listeners as you celebrate your one year anniversary i feel like we probably said it already but we're just so grateful for anybody whose lives we've touched or anybody who listens to us on a regular basis or mm -hmm. it's just been great to make so many new friends over the past year of people who love this movie like christina said just as much or maybe even more than we do we're just so thrilled and excited to be here even a year later after doing this like yeah. we're still excited to be here and i think that goes this might have been said in our very first episode but to find people and be able to connect and talk with people that don't make you feel crazy or stupid for loving something as much as we, we love the story and the aesthetic and the, you know, the characters and the the whole Practical Magic world. It it's all. nice to not feel weird. Yeah, because I mean, like, 
I'm pretty sure me and Christina both started this podcast because I know your husband was probably sick of hearing about it. My husband was sick of hearing about it. So we just both wanted somebody to gush to about our favorite movie and our favorite world every single week. Mm -hmm. Right? We just wanted a safe space to come to where we can talk about our favorite thing and not be judged for feeling like that's stupid or that's just the movie. Like, why are you so obsessed with this? So mm -hmm. dumb. But like just having that space to come to to Ugh. let out. So just I hate that. <laughs> I hate that line. Why are you so obsessed with this? Don't ever ask me that goddamn question. <laughs> you know, but I have been, and it's so like, yeah. doesn't matter why. It hits a nerve. It, I am, and it does hit a nerve. It hits yeah. a nerve real hard. Again, it was just because like you came to me with this proposition because nobody had done it. It was just weird that nobody had tried to, besides like the one-off episodes talking about the the whole the movie as a whole. Yeah, there was nothing else. Right. And there was so much more, apparently. We wanted we wanted to talk about this a lot. Mm -hmm. so. And we wanted answers. And like, you know, I guess it was up to us to find those answers because yeah. we were feeling called to be the ones to start this podcast. So I guess, I don't know, everything happens for a reason. I really love the researching. I think that's so fun. Mm -hmm. And you learn the stupidest stuff you do not need to know and you do not should not bring up at parties. We've come to yeah, like why why do we need to know about the whole Henry the Eighth situation or that like his leg was stank ass? His stank ass. <laughs> right? Yeah. Remember the stank ass leg? Why do we need to know why there's never a full moon on Easter? That's a good one to pull out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's we've learned so much pointless information through our research. Yeah. For sure. For sure. We should probably just have other pointless stuff we've learned. Um, I always pull out the, uh, did you know that magnolias are edible? Oh, yeah. Or that they're only fertile or only pollinated by beetles. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, wisteria is poisonous except for the flower part. I don't know. I said it like Or that there are two kinds of wisteria. Did you know that rabbits are a psychopomp? A psychopomp? Or that wormwood is hallucinogenic, but mugwort isn't unless you do a moxibustion? <laughs> You know that the largest toad is the Sonoran giant, whatever he is, and it's like eight inches wide. And everything else is just a fucking commoner. <laughs> Dude, we could just do did you knows. Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> or like we'd be that person, well, actually. Well, <laughs> actually. Oh, Phyllis, Phyllis, we never pay tribute to Phyllis. <laughs> wow. Freaking Phyllis. Phyllis, where's, where's Phyllis <laughs> this whole time? Wow. Oh, man. He was here and gone like a flash. Here she was a fart in the wind. Flash in the pan. All right, guys. So that wraps up our questions for, I guess, this season and, you know, what we're planning for next season, all the things we've learned and um, just all the people we've met along the way. And everybody's been so supportive on Instagram and the Patreon. And it's just been so cool to get to know people who love this story just as and this whole world just as much as we do that's all i'll leave you guys with that and um just thank you everybody who's listened this far um if this is the first episode you're starting with on this season go back to the beginning and just come to come on the journey with us and meet us here when you come back come child come back to jesus back to jesus <laughs> so I guess with that, I guess we're going to close out season one here. And then when we come back from the break, we're going to uh, do a practical magic watch through. And this will be the first time Christina and I have ever sat down and watched the movie in its entirety together. And we still found things. We still were finding things. Yeah. We found a big thing right at the end of the movie. Mm hmm. So with that said, again, thank you to everybody who's listened to who's went on this journey with us throughout season one we really thank appreciate you so it. much thank you so much we can't wait for season two and with that said i'm justina wait we're not gonna see you next time we're gonna see you after the break for the commentary and then we'll see you next time <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> we'll be right back hey little witches the scene is here. If you've been listening to our podcast for a while, you would know how much we love using the Practical Magic Inner Witch Oracle Deck by Grounded by the Moon. And now we want to share the magic of Grounded by the Moon with you, our listeners. Joseph Benitez Egerton, the creator behind Grounded by the Moon, would like to offer this very special 10% off discount to all who wish to experience the magic of his Practical Magic themed tarot and oracle decks. But that's not all. He also creates other divination tools like tarot workbooks, 
notebooks, deck bags and altar cloths, pendulum kits, oil blends, cleansing sprays, smoke wands, teas, and ritual kits. And let's not forget about his custom handcrafted all natural soy candles, where every candle is hand poured and personally infused and charged. Under the light of the moon, they even come with a crystal. And did we mention all of the ingredients in the candles are ethically sourced? All of Joseph's offerings are just so magical. So go visit groundedbythemoon.com and use the coupon code Magnolia Magic for 10% off your entire order at checkout. That's M A G N O L I A M A G I C. So get your discount today. Welcome back, guys. We're going to do our last card poll of season one. Thank you, Joseph, again for your beautiful, beautiful Oracle deck. We really enjoyed it, and we can't wait to see what season two brings. So Justina has her cards ready. Um, also, real quick, again, once again, um, if you guys want 10% off your entire order, you can head to groundedbythemoon.com and get yourself an Oracle deck, a tarot deck. He's got other beautiful um, ritual tools and anything like candles candles and oils and perfumes, perfumes and, and incense. incense that should be his tag song yeah it should be his tag song all right why is my right. okay. stable? this time i think you should pick it because i always tell you when to stop so you should pick it so you want me to pull this one yeah you pull this time all right here we go here we go here we go Let's see what we got here. <gasps> Ooh, butterfly. Butterfly. Is that transformation? Yeah, butterfly. Something? Metamorphosis? The, it says happiness. Okay. I'll take that. Happiness. 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 All right. So let's see what the book says about happiness. I don't remember getting the butterfly card ever. No, I don't think we've ever pulled this one. The keywords are happiness, but also joy of life. It says, remember to enjoy the little things in life. Share smiles and laughter with those around you. Seek out that which brings you pleasure. Hold on to those things. Life is an amazing gift. Bring the butterfly's joy of life into yours today. The butterfly grows and develops in a cocoon and it takes time for it to come out into the world. But when it does, it's a glorious, magnificent, and wonderful moment. Take time to notice the sources of joy and apply them to your magical practices to raise your overall happiness to bring forth happiness in your life and connect with its energy, utilize the power of a yellow candle representing joy and energy. Meditate with that candle to bring happiness into your daily life. And the mantra on this card is, I rejoice in this moment. And that kind of goes back to what we were saying before about being present. Perfect. Being yes. present and instilling joy. This podcast, I'm just so grateful. Like, instilling joy in the lives of other people and the people who enjoy listening to our episodes and all the stuff that we have to share with the world. And not only that, me and you, I'm pretty sure like this is our happy place. <laughs> yeah, right? this is so fun. This, this is really our happy fun. place. And like a butterfly, that transformation, like we have so many hopes and dreams and goals for this project, not only as a podcast, but we hope it spirals into other avenues and other projects as well yeah so mm -hmm. and 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 the music being one of them like mm -hmm. we started to manifest that so yeah that's been really cool to see come to fruition that happened real freaking fast real freaking fast and like we started off with just acoustic songs yeah. acoustic songs and to be able to see like even one of those come to life has been a dream come mm -hmm. true so this beautiful butterfly card i think that's such a beautiful sentiment to end the season on i do too I'm just like, I have so much hope and I just can't wait for season two. There's so good. All the good stuff that came to us came our way season one. I feel like it's just going to heighten in season two. I have a feeling. I don't know. It's about to take off. It's yeah. about to, it's about like a butterfly. Like a butterfly. Exactly. So uh, I think we should share an image of that card when, when this episode comes out. Maybe that's something else we can include as far as um, our, I would love to keep doing card polls. Yeah. But we don't have something that comes out every day on Instagram. So this could be like, hey, we just, this just came out. This is our card poll. This is Joseph's deck. Go get your discount. What I you love think? that. Cool. I love that idea. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Write it down. Yeah. Write it down. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for the poll. All right, yeah. guys. And again, go get 10% off your entire order at grandabythemoon.com. Go get your comfy pants on. Grab a drink. Grab a snacky. Grab a blankie. Grab a pet. 
grab your boo, grab some tequila. <laughs> Hopefully better than the one that we were drinking in uh, Boston. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is Justine and I sitting down to watch Practical Magic finally and our just bullshit conversations that went along with what we were seeing. So yeah. sit back, relax. Here comes the sparkly music. All right, everybody, what's going on? So me and Christina, we've been wanting to do this for a really long time. I don't know why it's taken us an entire year, an entire season of being a podcast. Not to mention, Christina was actually here at my house and we tried watching this movie together and I fell asleep. So fuck me. So we're going to try this again, but virtually. And we're just going to lend it our commentary because we were giving it some pretty hysterical, delirious commentary because we were both exhausted coming back from our trip we had zingers that night yes, for sure zingers were flying oh and christina was dying <laughs> and she thought some of the shit that i was saying was hysterical and some of the shit she was saying was hysterical but like we didn't have a microphone attached we we're just laying on the couch just yeah. spitting spitting bullshit and some of the stuff i don't even remember but i know we were looking at something because they rewound and we watched it again and we were trying to figure something out there was like a, a plot hole or something and now i yeah. can't remember for the life of me what it is i'm sure it'll come back around when we watch oh, this now man. okay yeah so we're gonna watch the movie probably for the episode we're gonna just intersplice our commentary as it is but for the patreon maybe share the whole thing yeah we'll do the whole visual maybe we'll give it like a countdown like hey watch along with us three two one kind of thing yeah and we could do like we did with Sudbury and just little clips of you know little timestamps of what we're watching here and there just so you get some context yes i'm good to go good to go we're good to go okay. we're doing it all right we're doing it here we go ready, ready? yep one Wait, I'm going to go one, two, three, press play on play. Okay. Yep. One, two, three, play. Yellow screen. This is the WB. Wanna Brothers Pictures. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. <laughs> Hello, my ragtime guy. I wore my pleather pants for this event. <gasps> you did. I have my, uh, <laughs> shame on me. I'm wearing my Hocus Pocus shirt. <laughs> nice. It's perfect for spooky season. <laughs> oh, I remember what we were talking about. Maria's house when she builds her house uh -huh. in the scene where she's crying on the beach the house is being built she's building it behind her but like in all of the long shots of the house the big Owens house Maria's cabin is like right next door it's not on the coast it's not on the seaside at all right yeah what what the fuck that's somebody moved somebody moved it she's so pretty yeah I'm playing Maria and like no lines I wish Maria had more of a plot point in this I do movie. too right i do too maybe she needs her own spin-off backstory movie that hair in front of her nose always bothered me because <laughs> it looks like she's hyperventilating trying to get it away from her face uh, oh my god snap so when i read the book um what was it uh magic lessons her whole backstory and like learning how the rope actually snapped yes. it wasn't actually was it magic i don't know if that no right? it wasn't DS Fucking did something to it because the salt, the salt from the sea, like just like was supposed to like rot it, so mm -hmm. she, it gave when uh, she jumped. Exactly. It wasn't actually magic in the book. It was practical, a practical reason. Yeah, I was kind of uh, disappointed. Was she like shucking clams here? What the fuck's she doing? Fucking the fuck out of those clams. <laughs> Pretty. She's shucking the fuck out. Hey, of see, them. there's her house. There's the first yeah. look at her house, and it's right on the freaking beach right that is or is it is it well yeah she's like right on the water there hmm. they're two different scenes i don't know i'm they just are two very curious scenes. interesting i love how this is our favorite uh movie but we just rip the shit out of it i know weekly. <laughs> from a critic standpoint not even not even, i'm just so curious about all like the little <laughs> alan menken alan menken here comes the What's, death uh, do you think that's a like california beach it's gotta be yeah, probably, because didn't they live in California before they, the little girls, Jillian and Sally, came over to live with the aunts? Mm hmm So still being away from Vivolio some. Mm -hmm. Ooh, her hairpiece. Look at all those combs cool. sticking out of her hair. All right, Stop. this this scene was like <laughs> Jillian going through the aunts, like, negligee cabinet. What is she, what, what is, is that pink number she's no, wearing? Like a little boa. I have no idea. What it's very that? strange. She loves the frills. They, they're both dressed very um, fun. <laughs> we talked about those kids having to go out of their way to go to that house. Because it's yeah. like not in town. Right, right, right. They walked all the way out there to give those kids shit. Our Maria's Island episode clearly 
shows us how the town's laid out. <laughs> and they had to make a pretty pretty uh, significant walk for that. Mm-hmm. Saka Channing drinking her port wine. <laughs> Surrounded by the decadence. The little kitty cat. I love how the cat in this movie, like it they show it in other scenes and it's older than like I know. Like it, yeah. pop, right? Like they've had it for years. So. Right. Do you think they got the cat for the little girls when Jilly and Sally were little to like kind of help them with their grieving? Yeah. That's the only cat we see, right? Right. I thought, they, yeah. I thought there would be more in the movie. But... There, in the book, there's a lot more, right? Mm-hmm. And Jet kind of like, don't they like, I don't know, Jet raises the cats and like rules of magic. She's like, mm-hmm. she loves the cats, right? Yeah. She's got like Sparrow, Magpie, Wren. Right. She's got a whole bunch of, a whole gaggle of cats. Gaggle of cats. A tribe of cats. A tribe of cats. Tribe of deer. A tribe of deer. <laughs> Look how pretty those curtains are on the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they kind of remind me of the ones that I have up on my mm-hmm. closet a little bit, like sheer with the like the pretty patterns on them. Oh, come on, Irene. <laughs> this is Irene. When just I Irene know with the no chill. Irene. Irene has no chill. No fucking chill. Oh my god, this woman again. It's funny how Franny's the one going to get the things, and Jet's like, "Boom! I'm in the book. I'm doing the shit. I'm laying it all yeah. out." Right. Look at all those eggs. God damn. I didn't know I bought a. 18 eggs the other day so yesterday i bought 18 more what damn you're gonna get you're gonna be making some omelets I know. some really big ones mm-hmm. mm. why does she tell her that after she did the spell <laughs> oh by the way the spell's done but be careful what you wish for like if i were irene i'd be like what the fuck does that mean what's that supposed to mean <laughs> what why would you say that after i wonder if we can ever see that dude in town walking around like in the I- background I don't know. But do you notice, like, in the book, obviously, we find out what happens to Irene. Like, she fucks herself. But mm-hmm. in the movie, we never find out what the result of that love spell was. No, just that okay. she shows back up in the end. And she's alive, you know? She's, yeah, the, the spell didn't kill her, so mm-hmm. I guess it was fine. Yeah. But, I mean, I wonder if the guy, like, ever left his wife for her and, like, she did, like, the whole, like, she lost her voice in the book, right? Yeah, she, can, she did. Again, Jillian in this scene with the freaking like, Come outfit. Out. Yeah, she's got a full-on kimono. We're like, where'd she get these clothes? Who's shopping for her? Do you think the aunt shop for her in a thrift shop? Like, she's just, like, buying? Like, but who makes kids, uh, what thrift shop has kids clothes that are that small? Like, that kids kimono- trendy? Kids kimonos? You don't think she got that in California where all the cool thrift shops are? Maybe. Maybe. She definitely has a unique sense of style. Young Jillian. Oh, yeah. She's so cute. Little Camilla Bell. She's very cute. Do you see her and Alice just did a, uh, um, an, an event together, like, recently? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're like buddies. Yeah. The rose petals. Here they go. Here they go. And oh yeah, you and I were talking about this scene where the rose petals goes up go up into the sky. I always thought that was outside Sally's bedroom, older Sally. But it's not because the railing is the wrought iron railing that's all around At the top. top. Yeah. Uh-huh. And this scene, do you think where where do you think this is off of? Is this off the uh the This is her Sally's bedroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think her and Jillian shared a room? Mm. I don't think so. Why is Jillian coming out this window? I know. And also, my other question is, did she wake Sally out of a deep sleep for this bullshit? Or is it just like late into the evening and Sally was awake? Also, I want to say that this first seeing this scene where little Sally turns into big Sally, Sally, like Sandra turns around. I was like, what the fuck happened? My (laughs) fuck. My my brain was broke. Yeah, I wonder why she's sneaking out that door. Ugh, it looked like ketchup on the palm. Do you think they use like raspberry sauce for that? That blood? Yum. That that robe looks so comfy. It does. Right? Jillian's outfit is just kind of like so 90s. Out there. Dude, the fucking like the uh choker. Yeah. The like like the wire choker. Mm-hmm. I used to have like tons of those. <laughs> Charlie. Looking good. Like if you like just like look at all the extras in this scene. How they take a glance at the aunts and then quickly walk away. You know, the old like lady. Every the single cart. one of them. This this woman. Really? You're going to cover your child's eyes? Really? Stupid ass. There he is. There's Mr. Apples. Miss, Mr. Apples. Mr. Apples. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Handsome. Ka-chow. Mr. Handsome Apples. Come along. Come along. He's so cute. He is handsome. Everybody's scooting out of their way. Yeah. Like, what the fuck's that all about? Dude, I don't, I cannot work in the garden with my hair down. Right. Spiders. Spiders everywhere. It is hot. It is hot. Look at those 90s bangs. This must have been like a cool fall day, like Mm. nice enough to wear a sweater 
or nice enough to wear what Sally's got on now, mm -hmm. like the shorts and the t-shirt. Because in the previous scene at the post office, she was wearing a full-on sweater. Right. Is it the like same it was, day? I would assume so. Hmm. I don't know. Well, uh, Michael, unless it's Wednesday, Friday, or Saturday. <laughs> but is Michael wearing the same thing oh. as he was when he saw Sally walking down the street in the previous scene? Hmm. That's a good question. Or is he one of those guys that just wears the same fucking thing every day? Every day. Like fucking, uh, what's his name? What's what's that guy's name? The Apple guy? Not the other Apple guy. The computer Apple guy. Steve Jobs. <laughs> yeah, Steve Jobs. He will wear like the same freaking thing every day because he was like, it makes more space in my brain for creative stuff. There you go. Oh, I like his hair long. He's got that like Lindsay Buckingham curly hair. It's, it's nice. So when we bought our house, this, like that little corner of their yard, yeah. I was like, we have that. This is our house. Like, I was Aww. feeling all the feels right then, seeing our yard like that. Look at little, uh, what's her Antonia. face? Antonia! Curly-ass hair. In the wagon, eating the, what was she eating? Like a strawberry or something? Again, with the beer in the pool. This guy with the blue shorts on. What there the was fuck? somebody in the pool and like a floaty trying to stir themselves around with a toy water pistol. You see the person? Yeah. Oh my god, and you pointed out the guy in the leather! The guy in the leather! <laughs> Holy. Can we screen grab? Can we screen grab him later and just yeah. like, he needs a meme. He yeah. needs his own meme. Oh my god, these dudes. There's our boy. There's a boy. I don't think this is Jimmy's house. Why not? I don't know. I don't think it's his. But name. it's like, it's got all the same kind of decor as it does in the room when they're like laying in the bed. Mm -hmm. They could have just been hooking up in somebody else's house. So you think Jimmy just like crashed this party? <laughs> Do you think he actually knows the people at this party? I feel like the guy who in all leather owns this house. <laughs> Why? <laughs> He's got money to spare with that outfit. Oh my god. He also looks like he shops in a thrift shop. He just like bought that outfit off the rack. Angel of, angel of. Here comes the coffin cutter. Zistobium. Dude, if I saw a beetle that big walking across my fucking floor. What would you do? I would not roll over and try to go back to sleep. I would try to find that thing and get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> you know your cats take care of it. It looks a lot bigger in the previous scene walking across mm -hmm. the floor while she's trying to sleep. But like in that scene, it was small enough to fit through the floorboards. Yeah. Yeah. What shoddy right? workmanship in that house. What? There can't be that much space between the floorboards. It doesn't look like there is in this scene when she's like trying to hear where it's coming from. None of them have a New England accent. No. None of them say, say chowder. 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 Here's the random uh, tour, tour, de de tour de Boston. <laughs> <laughs> tour de Boston. Tour de Boston. Do you ever notice in that scene when the floorboards are all over the place, there's like lilacs in the background? Are there of, really? Of all the floorboards? Mm -mm. Yeah, there's like bright purple and green flowers. And she senses it. Yeah. Feels it. It's sad. <laughs> sad. Oh, sad. And then you mentioned, or somebody mentioned, She's doing the same thing as Irene on that door. Scratching Sally. at the door. That was one of our patrons, Scratching I think. Or a comment on Instagram. Yes. Yeah, under our uh, Irene has no chill. Somebody Irene wrote, has, that's right. Sally scratching at the back door is like her. Yeah. How long do you, after Michael's death, do you think this scene is? Because the aunts are standing there. They're all dressed in black. Like they just came from a funeral or something. I feel like this is the same week. They knew Sally was going to come scratching at that door. They were standing there just waiting. They knew she was going to come. I don't know. And look how guilty they, they look. Their dresses are almost the same with the neck. It, re it reminds me of the dress that I wore for the, our uh, Black Veil tattoo shop mm -hmm. shoot. You're telling me they just like have that book just randomly sitting on a random ass counter in that <laughs> cupboard? I would have that behind a glass fucking thing. <laughs> Especially with like clients coming over. But I guess if they're coming to the back door, uh huh, they're not going to go snooping. All those beautiful pages. Yeah. Stalker's sporting that, like, mauve lipstick. This is heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to see um, Francis's emotion in mm -hmm. this because she rarely shows any in, like, any of the other scenes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are they in the same outfits they wore when they came to greet uh, little Jillian and little Sally? Yeah, remember we talked about them just recycling that footage? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how that's, like, but <laughs> if that were real, I like how that's the aunt's, like, welcoming outfits. <laughs> like, ah, shit, we gotta welcome more people. Let's go put those outfits on Get again. The welcoming outfits on. Get the welcome outfits on. And also, I never understood, like, why the bed is up against a window. That always bothered me. I don't me. like that. That always bothered me. Anytime we're talking on Marco Polo and you're like, all right. I always think of this scene where <laughs> Kylie's getting ready to leave. She's like, all right, I'll see you around. See you around. You sound exactly like her. 
I like those linens. So she's talking about her little sister right now. Mm -hmm. She puts on her mouse ears and drives around town all liquored up. I know she's just trying to make her mom laugh, but like back in the day, I would always be like, who's Antonia? Why is she all liquored up? She's like a kid. Mm -hmm. she liquored up. Why is she We don't even get Antonia's name until like now. And we're like, at first I thought it was one of the aunts. I'm like, who the fuck's Antonia? Yeah. She never told us. Yeah. And then later when you see Antonia, little Antonia with the mouse ears on, it was like, is she talking about a little sister driving around town all liquored up naked? Yeah. What? I love that headboard. Beautiful uh, carved wood. Yeah. And like not painted, just like mm -hmm. natural. Yeah. Yo, those palm scars do not scar like that. No. Trust me. Didn't they do it in the uh, the blood oath scene right in the middle? It's off to the yeah. side of me yeah. in this scene. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. See, so, you now, like, look at all, like, the decor on, like, the shelves in this room and stuff. It's all, like, the same kind of desert kind of shit that was in the other house that she went to the party at. Armadillo! In my mind, it's the same house. Okay. And he is doing very well as a drug dealer. Serial killer. That's what I'm saying. You and I also wanted to see when they were making the midnight margaritas, if they are using that Diablo bottle or if it's a different bottle. We'll have to look. Even. Okay. He's got a hickey on his chest. Mm-hmm. <gasps> I never noticed that before. <gasps> Jillian! Jillian! Right near that armpit, man. Scandalous. Right near the armpit. It's like a third nipple. <laughs> I love, like, the cacti on the bathroom counter. <laughs> like, that bathroom reminds me so much of, like, um, the scene in The Craft mm. where they go into the shop and there's, like, all the yes. crosses and tchotchkes and candles. Dude, like, who lights this many candles in their bathroom like that? That is a fire hazard. But it what is. did we notice about this scene? <gasps> the picture. The picture. I never noticed that until you pointed it out. Her and Jimmy have a picture and it's, who has picture frames on the back of their toilet? Okay, now she's astral projecting. Now she's out of her body. She's out of body now, driving down an old dirt road. Swirl, old, swirl. This looks like Sedona. Mm-hmm. Right? With the red rocks. So, so beautiful. Pretty. That sky. Those cows? <laughs> mm-hmm. Longhorns? Maybe she's going Oh, there's the another car coming toward her. Did you see headlights? I never yeah. noticed that before. Do you think that other car coming toward her was her on her way back in her astral projection? Whole fucking loop. All living right? in Right? Because it's like a, if it's like a spiritual travel i like that then that could have she's been back before she's even left she's back before she's even left that's why it only seemed like she was gone for like a little bit right yeah. because at the end of the scene her head indentation is in the pill like she was actually there mm -hmm. so when sally wakes up was my sister really here was it a dream how you know how jillian get there that always sounded like yummy to me mint oatmeal shaving cream i always wanted to try that i guess she made that makes that out of like egg whites or something oh maybe. eggs good for you like your hair and stuff isn't it when you make meringue like you fluff it up and it looks like shaving cream oh so that's how yeah. I, that's how i always guess she made it it probably has like all the proteins and shit in it too uh-huh placenta placenta you think she put placenta in her shaving cream because they do make i was we talked about it on that episode they make the placenta for your hair so we're shipping each other like bats dude i do not like how she like runs her hand along her hip it's like too sensual in front of a sister for me i'm like oh don't but do that's that jillian she's sensual all the fucking time she like she has to turn it off she's got no chill either i'm like, telling you i'm gonna get that snake tattoo whenever i come in into some money snake tattoo that shirt looks so comfy mm, both of their clothes look so comfy it looks like it looks like jillian put on sally's pajama look at the pants she has on yep. and then look at the shirt that sally has on it's like oh you need some pajama pants here you go but then, like, she's got to get changed in, like, an hour anyway because she's leaving the same night. I like how before she was, like, brush your teeth because your breath stinks. But now, like, Sally's just hotboxing her in the, under this blanket. <laughs> she, doesn't, she hasn't said that yet. But let's just sit under this blanket together. And, just, like, <laughs> and Sally's laughing, like, <sighs> hot breath is just going yeah. everywhere. They're just eating up those fumes. Her laugh cracks me up. She's like, ha, 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 ha there and jillian's dressed again ready to go back mm -hmm. yeah i wonder where else they could have put that bed because we know the layout of the room there's not much room like there's the fireplace wall there's the doors there's where the desk is yeah maybe that room was never meant to be a bedroom mm -hmm. like i know like some people when they try to make a, a bedroom out of like a random room mm -hmm. they'll put a bed anywhere just to mm -hmm. fit it in there i like her golden blanket i want one of those I always love this song. I love how this is the song that gets her back, like, trying gonna to get gonna break through. To, yeah, trying to get back to some normal life after mm -hmm. grieving. So many extras. Yeah. Walking this town. 
And this whole montage, she's got like three different outfits on. Okay, right? green outfit, black shoes. It's number one. Yeah. And then it changes, right? It goes on. I love those bottles. Oh, I love so her uh, design, like her whole aesthetic. There's her change. Her the daffodils. Change. Did you notice the daffodils in the window? Oh, for Aunt Jetty. For Aunt Jet. Daffodils. Yeah. I've never noticed that. These fucking kids. Uh, all of my stuff in my kitchen that is out is either glass or like that greeny, like sea glass glass. Love so it. it all looks like that. And there she's got on a different dress. But that's the same dress she has on in the next scene when she gets home and tells the aunts or the girls to shut the windows. The old lady with the purse. You see her backing up? <laughs> she's like, oh shit. <laughs> she's so shit. She looks so scared. Poor babies. Yeah. Look at her. She's still backing up. Yeah, it looks like dusk here. Like, And then Sally comes home from work. She's got the same dress and sweater on here. But her hair's straight, not wavy like it was in the other scene. What? <laughs> She had it in a little big, like a clip. But it she was wavy. Back. It looks like she had a blowout here. In the past scene, it looked like she let it, like, air dry. There's Antonia with her mouse ears. Yeah, so look at the aunts, what the aunts are wearing. And what Sally's wearing. Oh, candles everywhere. Don't tell them nonsense, dear. Look how they're just, like, icing cupcakes. <laughs> so many preserves. Do you think they're icing the cupcakes for the solstice celebration? Because in the Maybe. very next scene, they are like, oh, we got to go to the solstice. Do you think they brought yes. cupcakes to the solstice celebration? Every celebration I've been to is potluck. Bring something. That's so cute. They were icing cupcakes for their solstice party. So is she in the same dress and a sweater? Yeah, it looks like she is here. But then in the next scene, when she goes to leave to get Jillian, she's wearing something she's completely changed. different. Yeah. But maybe she changed to go get Jillian to go mm -hmm. take a flight, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but the aunts are wearing the same thing, so it had to be it had to have been the same night. Mm -hmm. Look at her! Did you see her beautiful manicure in that shot of the yes. wax? Her, yes. Her nails are so nice in that shot. One letter can fit in that mailbox. Yeah, maybe that's why they got to go to the post office for anything else. There's all the ancestors. Ugh, that banister work. We're on the committee representing Sybil Sybil of Cleves. Represent. Represent. Who's that weird random guy walking in the back? Do you see that guy? Yeah, he's yeah. He's doing shady business. Who's that guy? He looks shady. That person at the desk just gave her a key to not her room. Like, they don't do that at hotels. No. They? I don't think so. Maybe if she's like, she's my sister, it's emergency. Maybe. But still. Yeah. Nasty ass <laughs> hotel room. You know where else the room service sucks? At the Hyatt. <laughs> the Hyatt house in Waltham. The Hyatt in Waltham. <laughs> Beautiful don't rooms. Get, don't get us wrong. Get any fucking towels the whole week. No toilet paper. No toilet paper. No no uh paper towel. We had to go get it off the cart ourselves. It was a very beautiful hotel room, but damn. <laughs> How much does this hurt for Nicole Kidman to like fuck up her foot to lose her shoe like that? How'd she do that? Do you think she like hurt her ankle doing that? I would have. Jesus. Those weak ankles. Whipped cream. Bastard. Did you say weak ankles? Yeah. Who else did you say had weak ankles? We were just talking about. Oh, oh the daddy Persephone from Hades. He had to carry her. He was like, what the fuck? She had weak ankles. <laughs> <laughs> I think Christina loves talking about weak ankles. What is that? A soup lid on the dashboard? What is that? Y'all are nasty. Yeah. They're probably really gross together. They probably are. There's like Dunkin' Donuts wrappers that we've, you know, that we found on the floor, right? Mm-hmm. And all those other wrap receipts, wrappers. What was he holding against her neck? I think he was just holding her arm up so she oh, could okay. get out. I always thought he had a gun, and then I was like, wait, but he didn't have a gun in the other scenes. Like, I thought he was like, "Yeah, you drive. Dude, that, again, like, why did he stay in the back seat? Um, Because it's a two-door car, right? Right. Do you think, wait, this was his car, so he had, maybe he didn't have a license, but, like, this was his car, so he knew how to drive. So why did he tell Sally to drive? Maybe say they couldn't get him from behind. It's weird because, like, when you're the driver, you're in control, but you're also vulnerable to anybody else in the car. Totally. Check your back seats. Yeah. But, like, he didn't even, he doesn't even know Sally, and he's just trusting her to not drive them into a tree. I know. <laughs> what if she could not drive? Yeah, because we don't see Sally drive in any of the other scenes in this movie, right? She <laughs> walks everywhere. Mm-hmm. In the one scene, she took her car keys and she ran to Gary. <laughs> like, she just had this long con of making people believe she can drive. And then she boom, can. she can. <laughs> like, look how low he grabs her. Her knee is up in his armpit. He's North Dakota, you asshole. Calm down, mm -hmm. calm down. But he's so cute. I know. 
He goes, big puppy dog eyes, this stupid this face. Is so dread, no. He had to have okay. finished that entire bottle. Yeah. All right. Like, I know we talked about Goron, like, loving to sing and things like that. And if this is his, like, one shot to sing on camera and they're like, okay, but do it, do it kind of bad. Yeah. yeah. Do it kind of like you're really drunk. I, I bet he was fucking. He still living. had a good voice, though. He was carrying yeah. that tune. Yeah, yeah. But, like, do you think he did finish the bottle, though? Because there was still a significant amount of tequila in that bottle. I wonder if we see it at all when there's a struggle. That's a lot of alcohol. Do you think he just didn't pass out from all the alcohol he fucking drank? Right. Not the belladonna? That's all. That was still a lot of alcohol in that bottle when she put that belladonna in there. The three of us put down that bottle tequila of, well, (laughs) half of it. We drank half of of it. Exactly. Three of us. And we didn't even drink the whole thing because it tastes like cough syrup. Maybe it was half gone when he started. You want to hear something really funny? uh avi had kind of like that moment when when the sisters in the margarita scene are like where'd this bottle come from where did this bottle come from what he thought he thought we threw that bottle out and <laughs> i actually put it on our little liquor uh fridge oh my god and he saw it and he was like where did this bottle come from <laughs> i like his vest though do you think do too. shops in uh thrift shops too absolutely blood on the moon there was blood on the moon like two nights ago and i'm like nope there was like i'm going back inside my dog has been just barking at like skinwalkers or some shit every morning like there's nothing there there's nothing out there and even during the daytime he's like running in circles barking at stuff and smelling the air okay what is a skinwalker because i've been seeing that shit pop up on my tiktok and i'm like what is that shit what is that shapeshifter (gasps) it's like a it can be like a humanoid or an animal that's like not quite right i don't like it i don't like it i miss smoking no, you don't. I know. No, you don't. It's so nasty. Yeah, it is gross. But like all the coolest adventures <laughs> happen to be in a car, like smoking a cigarette. Making <laughs> How long did you smoke for? Uh, Like three or four years, but not not nothing like Jillian. Yeah, I was yeah. like three two or four cigarettes once. a day. <laughs> two at once. Two at once, short in the sentence. Yeah. I hate when people hold cigarettes in their teeth. I'm like like he was in the previous scene or yes. like. He's like holding it in his mouth, like wash a row, wash a row. Not a choice. I'm telling you, you and I could just ping pong this whole movie back and forth. All right, so we we went down the whole rabbit hole of like it would not have been physically possible to get Jimmy back to Maria's island in a car. You need a ferry. Why did they park so far away from the house? Instead of bringing in the car on a ferry, which has to go through like customs or like some kind of shit, like a check in system, they would have seen his body in the back seat. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what's this? Sally, so funny here, pushing him up with her leg. Watch his bowl, Sal. Did they not have any other take of her guess, saying that line? I guess not. What are all these? Yeah, what are they getting implements? Use? What are they using all those tools for? Terrible scissors. Yeah, the, like literally the most dull scissors. Can't even cut a wife beater T-shirt. I would love to see like the behind the scenes stuff of like Goron like trying to hold it together while those two are acting. I love her embroidered shirt in this. Me scene. too. Uh, Jillian. He even looks fine when he's dead. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the scar on his belly. Oh, yeah. I never noticed that before. It's funny how the kitchen is so, like, light and bright in every, every other scene except for this, where the, like, tiles, those creamy tiles are black in the scene, uh, but they're still shiny. Oh, yeah. How could you do so that? Dark. It's like that dress. Is it is it uh, white and cream or is it blue and black? Do you remember those pictures? I saw white and gold white and cream i was able to see both of them depending on how i like switch my brain to look at it really yeah i don't remember what episode you're like they're trash witches <laughs> they're just making it up trash witches with the whipped cream sally's like yeah this this will do this is fine i wonder what the step was after insert the needles in the eyes like what do you do after that yeah and they never got to that point because he woke up so yeah. yeah was he just waking up from the drunk coma or was at the belladonna or like, i don't know he must have been dead because his eyes were like gray they weren't what mm-hmm. they were before or were they rolled back into the back of his head when they when she opened his eyeball or are you wait, talking about when wait, he fully wakes when he, up when he opens his eyes they're like blue gray like ghost eyes i want you to be my wife our ghosts and ex our uh, hauntings and exorcisms episode how many f- skillet murders are out there <laughs> I loved your editing on that when we like it hit us like what we both had the epiphany listen that is not deep enough no ladies maybe that's why the boots come back up yeah later on you know what they say about big shoes <laughs> big ghost problems i guess big ghost- <laughs> if they couldn't break ground how do you think they did that scene of like digging in the dirt <gasps> i don't no? know weird 
Maybe yeah. lighting? And dragging those shovels on the ground. <laughs> I wonder what those white trees are in their yard. Like dogwood trees. I love that door piece. Like that gold door slide handle on that. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, yeah. I didn't notice that. Look at Sally in the background just being so uncomfortable. Like She, she is already, not happy. She already has such a guilty conscience as soon as they walk in the door. Like she mm -hmm. knows, she already knows that they probably feel like something happened or something. Mm -hmm. was up. I'm just watching Sally through this whole scene. Mm -hmm. That is the most relatable outfit. Just like a hoodie. Uh huh. A zip up hoodie and skirt. Yeah. And look at Aunt, uh, Kylie in the background. Mm -hmm. She's just zoning out out the window. She already sees Jimmy. She's like, what is... Yep. Well, she doesn't see him yet, but she knows something is up. There was stuff growing on the arbor, but not roses. Did you ever notice that's Gary across the street interviewing people? Wait, what? Wait, go back to the fish market. Like that little... That oh little my god! It is! So they reused that footage? Because he's not I... down yet. Wait, hold on. Wait, pause it. You see him across the street yeah there's like a line of people surrounding yeah. him in front of the fish market he's clearly like interviewing people before he makes his way over to sally's but shop. i think they reused that footage from earlier when he's talking to the old people in the wheelchairs because oh. it's outside the same yeah. um pub pickup or whatever we talked about in that episode right right, right. we're gonna have to so, look at that he's actually okay i have it paused at forty four forty. um but there's people like at the mar at the window of this fish market like people mm -hmm. are in line ordering and gary's there and gary's just hanging out in a fish Maybe. line Dude, just interviewing them you might be right i wonder if he's asking like hey do you know where the owens women live because that's uh -huh. who i'm looking for very well could be but right after this sally's working right the next door down isn't it like Why yeah it's yeah it would be like she works right there Dude, I always thought this was across the street from Sally. I just always, I don't know why I got that vibe. But yeah, if you look straight down the street past that car, that's the little railing mm -hmm. right before her shop, right? Her mm -hmm. shop is right there. And that little, like in between, in that little railing right there, that's where they have the whole conversation before yep. she invites him over for breakfast or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Also, right. if this is if this is springtime, okay, hear me out. Uh -huh. Why are there like almost no leaves on the trees and they're yellow? Wait, are those green apples on the or pears? Or pears, the, yeah. Or pears. Dude, All I'd right. be furious if my sister was smoking in oh. my botanical shop that's supposed yeah. to smell crisp and clean. Yes. Fuck you. But this was also the nineties. Smoking was still an acceptable practice back then. Mm -hmm. You know? People smoked everywhere. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, like, do you guys still have smoking allowed indoors down south? Yeah, some of the bars that are like private. You can okay. This tri-state area, and I think California, there's no smoking allowed indoors anymore. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't know if I've been to a restaurant that has that has smoking in like over a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, it's so crazy to me to think that back in the day they used to be like smoking or not smoking. Yeah, and, and like, on airplanes, the smoke would travel anyway. <laughs> like, you would still come home from Applebee's smelling like fucking smoke. <laughs> fucking Applebee's. Dory Cantor. Dory Cantor. Little Dory. Oh, that outfit is awful. The woman, what's her face? Oh. Sarah. Sarah's outfit. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I know we love this movie, but it's very white. Can we agree? There was one black There's woman in that whole black room. Woman in, the, in the class. Yes, it the is very. The whole movie. The kids are reading where the wild things are. Uh, did you see that stink face that woman in the green sweater was given? <laughs> she was like, her eyes rolled so far into the back of her head. <laughs> stink face. Sally's wearing the same outfit in the phone tree. But Jillian clearly had to have gone home and gotten changed, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. All right, here come the frogs. This is when it starts. All the trouble. All the trouble. We had a big old toad in the garage this morning. Did you? Yeah. You were like, Jimmy, is that you? Jimmy, is that you? Go away. Go away. Go. All right, let's look at the tequila bottle. Is it the same? I think it is. Diablo? Mm-hmm. The brown oh, label the, peeking the out. The label's on the other side. But you can see the brown corner. Yeah. It's got to be the same bottle. Don't hold my nose closed. Don't ever wake me up like that. Closed? Yeah. I do that to Avi when he snores just to get him to shut up. <laughs> just to get you to shut up. I get you to shut up. All women want is just to reenact the scene. Yeah. With their besties. Yeah. But you know what? This song is kind of long. Uh-huh. And I get tired long. halfway through. It is, it is very repetitive. Um, This would drive D crazy. Why would it? Because it's a repetitive it, song. Just, yeah, it's too repetitive. She'd be like, shut this off. 
I need to listen to something else. Um, so they baked all that beautiful bread. Mm-hmm. And got all those jams. Uh, Francis also has a kimono on. It does. In the scene. So maybe, maybe, do you think Franny bought a little Jillian that kimono? Yes, I do. I do. I want a house kimono. Yeah. Listen, I'm very jealous of like the tiny titty committee because I could not be jumping around like that with no bra on. Same. Itty bitty titty committee. Okay, the black veil that we went to. The mm. colors, like the blue down that hallway and like the yes. oranges, yellows and stuff. This whole movie is kind of like that, like the glowing mm. of the candles and like the blue of the night behind it. I just love how it's like balanced yeah. like that. Agants. I think this is why Jillian is a Sagittarius or might be because she's just got no filter. No. And I know they're drinking alcohol, but when you dr- when a Sagittarius drinks alcohol, it's even worse. You want to know the truth? Give me some tequila. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. You were fucking hilarious in the in the hotel. <laughs> like I can't talk to my mom right now. You talk to her. I'm like what? Wait, you when, your phone to what? Avi when she was trying to figure oh. out the fridge. Well, that that was like in the morning. That was before I even had any drinks. No, it wasn't. There was one wait. evening we weren't we leaving, and you were you were like, doesn't she know better than to call me when I'm drunk? Or something oh wait, like that? that's right. That's right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And we were behaving because we had to, we were technically working. So in the next couple of weeks, we go to Salem. I'm terrified. It's going to be insane. I'm pretty sure that was after we had the drinks at the Wayside Inn and we were like pre-gaming a little bit, right? But why were we walking back out? We were going we were to dinner. out of the hotel. We were oh, going to get the dinner. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, yep. Exactly. Yeah. And Avi was like, look at her when she's, uh, when she's singing while she's eating, you know, she's feeling her drinks. Because Taylor Swift came out of the bar. Yes, you were singing the Taylor Swift. Diablo de Flores. Why did Sally turn that bottle? That was Sally that turned the bottle around. (laughs) None of the other women wear a watch like that. Sally twists the bottle around. So why did she go and like grab it then? Why did she shatter it in the sink? Yeah. Not only are they like trying to cover up what they did, but also like the guilt of like, oh, did we just poison everyone? (gasps) Right. That's fucking scary. And they just let the aunts go to bed like he might not wake up. Oh, you're right. Holy shit. That, yeah, that bottle, if that was the same bottle, it could have very well been uh, poisoned. Everybody go to bed. Way to be a buzzkill. I never noticed the bottle said Diablo de Flores. I always thought it was, thought it was just Diablo. De Flores. Oh, I think those are oranges on the... Oh, are they? Still. It could, they could be little pumpkins, but it's not fall yet here, right? It's supposed mm. to be too early for roses so it's supposed to be before march or something this is not real life the timeline is so skewed doesn't make any sense i want to get that poster that it's like every scene's color have you seen that um it's like a landscape of practical magic they'll take each scene and the like main color from each scene they splice it all together so it shows you like a gradient of color Um, i want to get the practical magic one i'll send if i can find it i'll send it to you this is something molly would do the kids have a way of like knowing when you're not feeling well yes and just upping the ante with the annoyingness mm-hmm. like a kazoo really where the fuck do you get a kazoo at fucking eight o'clock in the morning or whatever time it was before you had to go to school do you think they have a tequila hangover or is it a belladonna hangover hangover there's jimmy tequila jimmy, jimmy hangover they're, those posters, by the way, are called Movie Palette, and they're $75. What? That's expensive. They went to the Holiday Inn. Yeah. <laughs> the Hyatt house. They went to the Hyatt. <laughs> I like how the ground under in front of the roses is, like, discolored. Right, right. right. Yeah, again, if they were not allowed to break ground, then how the fuck? How'd they film that scene? How'd they film that scene? How'd they do that? How'd they do that? <gasps> you know what I just realized? What? What? Wait, pause, 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 pause. I was th- I was just zoning off right now because I was still thinking about Diablo de Flores, Devil of the Flowers, the fucking yeah. roses. Yeah, dude. Didn't we talk about this before? The f- Devil of the Flowers. Yeah, in like the Diablo? roses episode. I don't know if we brought up Del. I don't. I don't remember. Brought it up before. But Devil of the roses. Well, we've talked about the Diablo, but I just was thinking D- Diablo de Flores. Why why would the bottle say devil of the flowers? Duh. Because he's the devil of the roses. He's like makes the roses grow. There you go. That's Denise Denovi. 
God <laughs> damn, Denise, you're good. What the fuck? I just put two and two together. My brain just exploded. All right. I like how when his boots go down, it kind of looks like stop motion. How they do that? Oh, that is so much property to maintain. How how yeah. they do that? They must have some kind of groundskeeper because they they do in the books, right? Yeah. Here comes Gary. A little early for roses, ain't it? It's about the time Justina passed out. <laughs> yeah, I went to another dimension about right about here. Why did it take him that long to find their house? Um, yeah, how long was that? You think a day? A full day? Probably a few days, right? Between when he was at the fish market and now. Maybe he was just he was interviewing all the townspeople first to get all the info before I wonder. He, he hit them up. That's how he knows that she's her sister because he was interviewing the townspeople. They probably told him. Well, he has her letter, and in the letter. Yeah, but he doesn't know what she looks like. That's true. So he's probably interviewing the fish market people. They to probably told him. The attic looks so clean right it's there beautiful. in that shot. But then behind Jillian, do you notice how it's like a friggin' uh, mess? Like, yeah. Her clothes are just like- and clothes. Her clothes are strewn everywhere. She's just living out of a suitcase. Mm-hmm. But like, did she have- I guess she did have her bags with her. A little right, duffel bag, though. They were at like a- They were in the car going zigzags. Like, they were in all the hotels. So she had her bags packed. But when they walked out, were, did, were they carrying two bags or just one? I don't remember. But she's had to have had, like, I guess, a bunch of clothes with her yeah. to have with her to have all behind her in this yeah. scene. Did you notice the green dress was hanging out of that bag? Oh, I didn't notice that. The one that she puts on to go downstairs to seduce Gary. <gasps> no way! Yeah. Interesting. I would forget about each and every one of those little pots. <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm. oh shit, I got a heart of you guys. Yep. The bird cage right there. There's the dove cage. I want to repaint my KitchenAid. I want to paint it creamy wet. Really? It's pink. I have a pink one too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I uh when I had my bridal shower, I asked for all pink KitchenAid. That dude. Me too. I have a hand mixer mm -hmm. and a blender. Are we the same person? I know. It's so funny. <laughs> I would not have a. Uh pinned you as a pink person i was not a, a, that year in my life i wanted the pink things okay okay what are those on the in that vase i don't know what the table? flowers those are honeysuckles or something or some kind of lilac maybe he's more they're droopy droopy white he's more like a big dreary no drowsy that's the word i'm looking for drowsy 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 it's funny because sally is probably sally knows her sister's shenanigans but do you think sally's ever straight up seen Jillian tried to seduce a man before? I don't think so, because she was so young when she left. Yeah. So this is all, these are all mannerisms Jillian picked up on the road trying to, mm -hmm. like, get one over on all these stupid guys she's trying mm -hmm. to. I mean, they corresponded with, like, letters and shit, but this is, like, their first real time together as adults. Right. Awkward. Yeah. So Sally's seeing her sister go into this, like, seduction mode trying to, like, get one over on a man. She's probably seeing who her sister really is at this mm -hmm. point. She's like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. What is this bitch's problem? I wonder what that bottle is on the counter beside Sally, that with the blue label. Oh. Dish soap? Some kind of cleaner? Castile? Isn't that soap? Castile? Oh, it is a soap. Mm -hmm. Maybe it says Castile on it? Because there's a little brush next to it, like a scrubbing mm -hmm. brush. You don't think that's real blood? You think they really cut her for this scene? Uh, maybe. It's the raspberry syrup. It's the same thing they use for yeah. the palm scars. Corn syrup? They have paper. Look at the cabinet behind Sally's head. Do they have like wallpaper back there not on that one but on that one doesn't it look oh, like yeah. shimmery and shiny is it the reflection of the glass you know how some glass has that like sheen? oh yeah 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 you're right i think it's the pattern of the glass because yes, you could kind of see it behind um jillian's mm -hmm. head look oh, wait, what pause, does it say pause pause pause, pause 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 ah fuck it went too far bb stone ski club gymnastics yearbook staff honors student council <laughs> great memories i'm, I'm on, on my, my way. way love and friendship X X X O O O O. That's like how I sign off all my my uh, letters. Except I'm usually X O X O. I don't but like that. There's three X's and four O's. That kind of bothers me. Ooh, X's and O's. L King, check out our WMSR episode about Jimmy. Holy shit, it's all connected. That's all um, I'm saying. Wait, hold on a second. Let's look at this woman's portrait for a second. Mm -hmm. That is not a high school student. That is a grown ass woman. That is a grown ass librarian aged woman. Oh, dude, check out the dude to the left. Doesn't that look like Jimmy with the long I hair? It looked, I thought it looked like Griffin. Oh, really? When he was younger, like his American yeah. American werewolf in London type days. Mm -hmm. And with the hooded eye. Yeah. And wait, but his picture is cut off. It says something Stephens. Mm -hmm. The end of his thing says good people, chess club, AACP. What's AACP? American Association of Colleagues of 
pharmacy pharmacological so do you think this is high school or do you think this is college could be college well college does college even have a yearbook i don't think colleges have yearbooks do they not that i know of so this has got to be high school all right so phoebe stone you are high not school? a high schooler no it's got to be college you think he's going out with high school girls because this no. was two years prior i don't I don't think this was while he was going out with her. I think this is just a reference photo to show the girls what she looked like and like oh. all of her accomplishments in life because she was like, you know, it from judging by her repertoire here on her yearbook photo, it looked like she had like a lot of things going for her. She was bright, mm -hmm. bright young girl and then she got killed by Jimmy. So are we ever able to see the picture he's holding underneath? I'm trying to like pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I uh, think it's her graduation of, picture of her. Yeah, it's a graduation picture with like parents or something. I'm under the impression it was a high school photo, a yearbook photo. Oh, really? Because I okay. don't know if colleges have yearbooks, but I don't know if they ever show the picture like underneath of like her death scene. I don't yeah, know if they yeah. show that. I don't think they show that. Yeah, like you see how like Jillian just like whatever. I don't give yeah. a shit about this girl. Yeah, but then she's kind of like when she hears about the brand burn into her face, she's like, shit, that could have been me. Mm hmm. Her tone changes. Sally's face is like, see, see, yeah. see, he's a bad dude. Yep, yep. Like, Gary wasn't picking up on their mannerisms of them looking at each other like that, because that's a look of guilt to me. And Sally, like, wringing her hands together? Uh-huh. You know what's crazy? Like, you know that little business card that Gary uses to scoop the Belladonna into the little bag? Mm -hmm. That actually, like, that says Gary Hallett on it. Does it really? Yeah, so just think of how, like, detailed the props department is. Like, oh, shit, we gotta make this guy a business card. <laughs> Like, you know that guy behind the woman okay there's gary and then a woman and then a guy behind them the guy is wearing the same hat that michael wears he has that like same emblem oh. Oh, it's so fast though the kid with the and chicken box. oh here there's that kid with the ice pop deep throat in the fuck out of it <laughs> oh my god gary's a chocolate guy and again pause that lady behind this lady with the short bangs, mm -hmm. the same Puritan woman from the intro that says witch. Uh, it is? Yep. That's her. Double booked. Double booked. Yeah, she's uh, extra all around. Ensemble. Ensemble. Ensemble cast. You see that guy waving it or that kid waving his money around like, like he's at a bar? Yeah. Where are they? This looks like nighttime. That must be a library. Where else are you going to get that? She's holding the book open like. Carla with the ritual disembowelment. Fucking she Carla. Fucking knows her shit. She a witch. So she has this dress, but she also has a sweater with the same pattern. Oh, oh yeah. And she wears at the phone tree day. You're right. I love it. It's so pretty. I and are those the flowers that are on the kitchen table? The white. Are they the those same white ones? flowers that we didn't know what they were? Yeah, those look like del delphiniums. Delphiniums. What are the first ones? The snowdrops. Those aren't snowdrops. Snowdrops kind of look like upside down tulips. They looked more like like the the um the stems kind of look like delphinium stems because they were like like wiry a little bit. Fucking Dwight. Fucking Dwight. We still yeah, look it. at that end of that walkway. Why is why is it blocked off like that? That woman is not going to walk anywhere. Oh yeah. Where is that woman fucking walking? All right. Where is that woman walking to? And also. That's just the end of the street and the end of the dock? Maybe it's just the end of the sidewalk. The road keeps going up that way. Interesting. What does the sign say on the uh, left? Does it, I don't know, does it ever pan over a little bit so we could see what it says? No. It's funny how he mimicked her body language. Yeah. While they were standing there. Because she's got the power. He just invites himself over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no leaves on the fucking trees. Oh, so this is definitely before the solstice. How cool are those bird skeletons? <gasps> Do you think the girls made those? Yeah, this is where the exorcist or the uh, possession starts. She's getting those pains. Why is there so much glass breaking in this goddamn movie? They just don't care about having to replace- Dude, it's expensive to replace glass paneling. That vase? Oh yeah, the panel on the door when Sally leaves. Yeah. yeah. You're right. They're just, they're just breaking windows left and right like it's nothing. This is like almost too, like the regular movie speed is almost too fast for me now. Yeah. I need to, I need to look at all the shit. I know. It's hard to commentary on everything we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. That's why we got the show. That's why we got the show. How are they getting those labels printed? Yeah, do you think the aunts have a printer? <laughs> I can't picture them having anything electronic. I know. Where do we think Kylie found that? 
diary mm. in the attic maybe I think so like she was testing her she knew that that wasn't about her dad she just wanted to see what her aunt was gonna say and she's like are you really gonna lie to me right now you gonna lie to my fucking face daddy had brown eyes what the fuck are you talking about don't bullshit a bullshitter right exactly as you we were saying how kids are the biggest uh gaslighters really jillian you're gonna gaslight your niece because she's still a kid she's a little peter pan she's not growing up yeah in a way, I feel like Jillian is more immature than these little girls, right? I do too. Yep. Dude, remember when we were talking about how, okay, if the possession happened when she went outside and is Jimmy like over her shoulder in this scene? Mm. I know she's having like a heart to heart moment, but like, do you think that's why she's wearing sunglasses inside? Maybe like he's like, I need to cover up, you know, the windows to the soul, you know, because like she doesn't wear glasses apart from the pool scene, right? Right. And she doesn't wear them outside when they're having breakfast does she uh, i don't think so yeah why is she wearing sunglasses inside i don't know <laughs> i never thought about that and wouldn't it be even weirder if like say that was jimmy and jimmy was having like this heart to heart with a kid like love makes you feel like you're spinning and spinning and you can't well, you know it, wouldn't it be wouldn't it have been creepy if she was just like do you know what the love is like and like his voice to like this little girl Jesus Christ. You spin, you put your arms out, then you spin, and you spin. spin. <laughs> and sometimes fall down. And sometimes you fall, and you know you get back up, and you keep on spinning. <laughs> those are the same ones, the same Oh, flappers. yeah, yeah, yeah. What are those? I don't know. I don't think those aren't snowdrops. Snowdrops grow up through the ground like uh, tulips. They're short, little shorties. Lily of the Valley. Lily of the... There it is. That is what it That's is. That's it. Lily of the Valley, isn't that a flower they used to use to like symbolize like mourning or death or something like that i know lilies but i don't know but i think lily of the valley is on our topics list yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah i think you're right there's a live dove back there and two live doves <laughs> notice that oh my god do you think the aunts are still doing those spells absolutely look at all the candles hanging behind sally yeah on the left wow so they just like dripped all those right that room must be so hot Oh, God. I can't see adult Sally being okay with the aunts continuing to kill doves for these stupid spells. Mm -hmm. stupid spells. Yeah, but it's not her house. This is so intimate. I like that they took the time to paint some of the terracotta pots and the other ones mm. they just left natural. That picture of Gary on his ID. Gerpa hurler. <laughs> <laughs> this girl flipping these pancakes. You're, You're about, about to. to. Step sad, you... Did you see Sally's? She like rolls her eyes. Yeah. Oh, there's the key. The bag 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 bag. So pretty. I wish the cat was in You're the movie. Good baby. Those orange things on the windowsill. Now it looks like they're candle holders. It, it looks like they have a gold rim around them. Oh, really? She is shaking the fuck out of that syrup. That's a lot of syrup. Holy cow. I love the lanterns. With the Asian lanterns and the kimonos. Do you think the aunts had a stint in like Asia or Asia? something? I don't know. Well, during the, like, Victorian times, remember how we talked about, like, the world was exposed to so many other cultures? Different cultures. Yeah. All, travel. Right. It was huge. I just think it's so interesting that the aunts have, like, such a uh, affinity for, like, well, mostly Frances. She's got the Asian kimono, these lanterns. Mm-hmm. She clearly bought J little Jillian a kimono. It's funny how they have like a buffet table back there wait, also. Wait, wait, pause, pause, pause. You see the apple on the buffet table? It's green, isn't it? A green apple. Do you think that's Michael, his spirit, the presence of his spirit, just like giving Sally his blessing to proceed with Gary? Maybe. I just think that's a little weird. We have not seen a green apple in this film until- For a while. Since Michael passed. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's like just like a little symbol of Michael in the corner there, just like watching over this whole scene, just putting Sally on the right track to finding her one true love and giving his blessing, saying like, I was not the one. I give you my blessing. Go be free, young child. Go oh, God. Young get child. lost in the throes of passion. Oh, scary. Young child. I'll watch from the corner like a fucking spook spook. <laughs> All right. All right. Any oh wait, are those more Lily of the Valleys in the back behind Jillian's head? That's what I was thinking too. That I'm paused right as she's like handing. Yeah, same. Yeah, it looks like that. I, I wasn't gonna say anything because I was like, that's stupid. I don't know if that's the same thing. It looks like they're the same flower, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> We're gonna have to deep dive on that. Oh yeah. She is wearing her sunglasses here. Oh yeah, and she pulls them off when the toad starts doing yeah. thing. <laughs> Gary's expression on his face, like, what the fuck? Why would you take that syrup out of my hand? <laughs> 
you know, somebody was standing right off camera ready to scoop that shit out of the ocean. Yeah. And then here goes uh, Jillian with the uh, belching. And the ribbit ribbit. The ribbit ribbit. Is that wisteria to the top right? Just, like, hanging down? It doesn't have any purple on it, so it obviously isn't in bloom yet. I wasn't sure if the, uh... I couldn't tell. The scene went back too fast. Yeah. I don't know. I can't tell. What do you mean? Look she got a shirt of his wide open. He was getting comfy there. It wasn't that syrup. Syrup. And Sally's holding her chest like she was also feeling that like belching kind of pain that that uh, Jillian was feeling. I'm just gonna say Bubble Pipe did such a good job with recreating this scene. I can't wait yes. to talk about it. They just throw everything in the sink. They just throw yeah. broken glass in the sink. Just some place to collect it, I guess, that they can rinse it and throw it away. Do we ever see a garbage can in this house? Yeah, they threw the they threw the pancakes in oh the that's right yeah 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 yeah. so then why did she just throw the, the glass in the garbage why is she throwing i it think because she was also holding like utensils and cloth napkins and shit mm -hmm. so angry this is when the tension this is the uh polter guy polter pineapple geist pineapples causing the tension stirring up tension right there are the keys right there red tabby maybe it's just her house key maybe she's like well i don't want to get locked out but she breaks the glass she could just put her arm through that little hole that's and unlock the <laughs> it's funny so many apples on that table behind Jillian. Right. It's like, is Michael watching over? Being mm -hmm. like, I'm here. Mm hmm There goes Gary. And she just runs into town. That's so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so far. So That's far. Broken a sweat. Why did she take the car uh the car? There was a little sign hanging over that garden gate there, that back gate, but I can never pause it in time. You know when you Google Maps this place, that gate isn't there anymore? This little gate right there? That's not there. Check out our Marie's Island episode, episode 42. Yeah. I don't know if they put that there for the movie. Oh my god, look at all those photos. Was that the brand mark in the flesh? What are all those photos? Were those, Was that of Jimmy, like, walking out of buildings and stuff? Like The one was definitely Phoebe and her parents at the graduation. Oh. Yeah. That's the one they used in the previous scene, right? Yeah. Should we back up and look at those pictures? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna back up. The one that Sally's holding in her hand. What is that? Just right? Is it looks like a car and like three people walking. Yeah. Yeah. It's like three guys and a car, like the grate of a truck or something maybe. And then like right below that, before Gary like takes his, takes the photos away, you could see there's a brand mark in flesh. There's a, like a close up what? photo of a brand mark in flesh. The one definitely looks like Jimmy coming out of a door. Yeah. And then right below that here look i'll screen i'll screen share this okay. with you see the brand mark oh is that what that is yeah i always thought that was sally's envelope and like the wax seal on the envelope but i think you're right i know that's the envelope the letter came in that's below that oh my gosh okay i gotta go look at this so that's that's a brand mark flesh photo and then Ew. right above that is three guys with standing by a car and then right above that it looks like jimmy coming it out it does of look like jimmy coming out oh right? my god what yeah all right he moves the photo a little bit and you can get a better look at these guys yeah yeah in the car yep who is that is that jimmy so, in the middle i was gonna say jimmy's the bigger one on the right looking off to the side oh, okay the long hair these guys who are these other dudes who are these other guys there's the letter there, See, oh then, yeah so he moves at that so that was the flesh photo Ooh, with the i've never noticed that that's the brand mark photo wow. and then that's sally's letter ew <gasps> oh my god what hey, but wait okay but wait what what um that remember how you said branded on the side of her face that's not a face that's not a face that is somebody else so that's a that looks like the back of a leg because you can kind of see the crease of the like, legs like, together like the back of a knee or something or like the inside of a thigh and like that yeah or on the right is like the knee yeah 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 maybe what? So that's, that's somebody else so that well we know he had a friggin a list of women he fucking killed right but like we know that just from like reading between the lines, but Gary only says Phoebe, right? He doesn't say that there were any other missing people. No, maybe Phoebe was the most recent one. Yeah. And I've then maybe noticed this picture. Yeah. And then this must just be all of the pictures that Gary has collectively, I guess, had in his evidence and just was like going through all the evidence trying to find this guy. Wow. 
All right. So that must have been somebody else that Jimmy murdered. Now Sally's opening her letter. Okay. And then there's a another picture of Phoebe and her parents behind that that picture of Jimmy coming out of the doorway. Yeah, she's like, I gotta go through all the evidence. Oh, damn. He's in the spirit world. There's that white shirt he changes into behind him. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He already had that laid out for later. <laughs> he's got a breakfast shirt and he's got a work shirt. Uh-huh. Was that his dinner shirt? Dinner shirt. He was planning on getting a dinner after that. Yeah. Breakfast and dinner. Yeah, he didn't have lunch that day. Yeah, it goes from like morning breakfast to him leaving to her chasing him to nighttime. Her to nighttime. Yeah, there's no middle of the day in this whole day. I'm telling you, she's like two and a half, right, almost three miles away from town. Maybe it just took her all day it took to walk her home. All day to walk home. I guess maybe she did a couple yeah. loops around town. She first. didn't. She didn't run home like she ran to Gary. She she like took a snail's pace <laughs> until she heard her little girl screaming for her, and then boom. And then boom, she was suddenly home. I think she also has the power of teleportation, because how the fuck? That's teleportation, Kyle. <laughs> a telekinesis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I tailored it for our specific. Tailored it. Gary is handsome in this scene. I give him that. Mm-hmm. Like the like rugged looking. I think it's him. I can't remember. I gotta watch this scene, but one of them full on shoves their tongue way the hell in there. A oh, damn. A oh, damn. He was like, this is coming off. He's like, I can't, I can't, I can't, but 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 I, but I can, but I can, but I can. Oh, it was his tongue for sure. He was like, Ugh. <laughs> she's on his bed in sneakers. Ew. He does have some weathered, freckled, southwestern skin, though. Mm-hmm. Been in the sun too long. Yeah. Probably doesn't wear his sunscreen. Nah. Yeah. Gary, Gary, you need to up the SPF, bro. SPF. All right, there's the little hill right. out she's of town. Walking. Yeah, she's walking so slow. Yeah. Right? Do you think, okay, say this is maybe like the storm coming in and it just is like darker. Uh And by the time they figure out Jillian, let's see when she's running to the house. If it's still daytime, it took him all day to change his shirt. (laughs) (laughs) It's still daytime. And then they have to figure out Jillian's thing and then the coven comes. So then it's nighttime. Wait, by the time that she's talking to Gary out on the little under the roses, the whole I wish for you two conversation, it's dusk already at that point. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The sun's still coming in here. You can see sun. Yeah. It's like gray light. Here's Gary. What the fuck? He must have driven there because. Yeah. 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 He got there way too quick. It took Sally all day to get there. Here we go with the daguerreotype. Or fucking Jimmy. Or Jimmy. I never noticed those butterflies on the ceiling until we uh until I got Joseph's card deck and then I was like wait there's butterflies in the movie and then I went through and I was like oh there they are Mm -hmm. but I feel like I remember him saying that he didn't notice those either he put the butterfly in for another reason interesting yeah I wonder how they actually put this effect on him did he shoot this on a on a green screen and then they superimposed his effect I don't know. Yeah, it seems kind of like the, maybe they based. they did the makeup part and maybe they just enhanced it with like saturation and brightness. I would have loved to have seen like the behind the scenes of this actually shooting this scene. Mm-hmm. Those purple, those are those lilacs behind uh, Jimmy? Oh, yeah. Or lilacs. Maybe, uh, I don't think so. It's funny how he got burnt. Burned? Burnt? Yeah. Just yeah, like yeah. his victims got burned. <gasps> That's right. He got branded. Got Just branded. Ooh, I didn't even pick that up. Branded, bitch. Yeah. Fuck you, Louis Lamore. No, not Louis Lamore. <laughs> Louis Lamore. <laughs> Fuck you, Louis Lamore. What did the poor Louis do? He didn't do anything. <laughs> what did he do to you? The moon. There we go. Now the moon is out. So, so yeah, it was nighttime by the time they had this conversation. So, but that moon is getting bigger. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, can we pause for a second? Pause, pause, pause. What? You got something bubbling. What is it? Okay, what? So wait, so between how many days are between a full moon and a new moon? Because that is just coming off a new moon. And when we saw the girls, they killed him on a full moon. Hold is on. it like a week and a half? Oh, wait, didn't we want to do an episode like moon spotting? I have no idea. Want to do a I'm just curious how many that? days are in between because that gives us an exact time. Not exact. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. But, like, it gives us a good timeline of death to exorcism. Okay, so how many days, about, there's about 15 days between 
Okay. Uh, Almost two a weeks. New moon and a full moon. Okay. Yeah. The uh, full moon comes about 15 days, 14.8 to be exact. After the new moon, the midpoint of the cycle, half of 30 equals 50. So yeah, a calendar month is 30 days. So half of that, 15. There you go. So this moon that Gary is Gary is looking at, this is 14 days later. Uh-huh. After they kill Jimmy. This is two weeks later. Okay. So, so that could be. That could check out. All right. So it's not slam, bang, bang, back to back. So between when the girls come home from the solstice and they have midnight margaritas. So by that point, Jimmy, Jimmy might have already been dead for a week at that point by the time they had midnight margaritas. Maybe. But your math before saying that they came home pretty soon after the that they buried Jimmy, right? Like the next day, maybe the following day. Yeah. So within between, that weekend, at least. Yeah. Between when they come home and midnight margaritas maybe there were a few extra days in between there because right after midnight margaritas happens the next day is when gary shows up yeah <laughs> yeah my head is just i my need gonna explode. i'm going to make a flow chart <laughs> right after we wake up i really want to do the moon spotting episode i think we should do okay. that all right soon. i'm gonna I'll, yeah let's do it all right i'm at um, Gar Gary's looking at Sally, looking at him. Goddamn second. Hold on just a goddamn second. The bad guy. That's what I do. But who's the bad guy? Is it Jimmy or is it Sally? Sally's the murderer in this. I didn't give a shit about finding Jimmy. It, exactly. Your letter brought me here. I didn't give a uh -huh. rip about Phoebe. But I just have all this other evidence for no fucking reason. Right? If he's there for her. <laughs> yeah. Who, get, who gives a fuck about all that evidence? <laughs> it's just to fill up the briefcase so it looks like I'm working. Yeah. He's a trash uh, trash detective. Sure. Detective. Yeah. So little Sally's rose petals are falling on him. Did he paint that star on that horse's ass? I think it's branded. That or he, sometimes they buzz it in, like shave oh, their okay. It looks blue. Did it look blue? Like I think because it's a white horse, when the hair is shaved down, it's mm -hmm. a little darker toward the root. The root. I don't know anything about horses. <laughs> just bullshitting me yep he looks like a mess <laughs> mm -hmm. he just saw a freaking pineapple geist he has had a hard day i mean at least he got a free breakfast out of it mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i'll make out sesh do you think he's still gonna go to dinner after this in his white crisp shirt yeah does he just leave he just right? leaves there because wow. she goes back inside to go yeah. tend to her sister mm -hmm. he must go grab uh, some uh, red lobster or something red lobster and then go home back to that fish market went to get chowder chowder that's too bad gary because by the last book you're toast <laughs> you're toast oh, no. <gasps> tears yeah oh, her ugly cry is so ugly it hurts it hurts it hurts are those white roses along that fence mm, could be anna cleaves no what's her name sybil sybil the other sister i wonder why she walked around to the front door hmm Oh, yeah, she was in the back by the roses, right? Why'd she walk mm. all the way around the house? <laughs> I, never, I never put that together. Yeah. Maybe she kind of followed him to the car? Mm, I don't maybe. know. And look at that magenta light in the back. Where could I was just from? thinking that. Where could that be coming from? I like. I know this is on a soundstage at this point, and like it's stage lighting, but like realistically speaking, right. if this was in their house, what would that magenta light be coming from? Do you think they have like a like stained glass window on the back of the house oh, that's lighting in the light or like a lampshade cover with like a silk scarf? Maybe. Maybe. It's pretty though. See again, yeah. blues and reds. I love a good light. I am. And they didn't have um, those like can lights back in the day. Those like um, LED. You know the LED ones that can change color? Mm-hmm. Ooh, her hat is so good. I've never noticed. Ah, her hat, hat was so really good. good. Both of their hats. On point. I like how they made the time to like brew some tea and have a snack. A little while, charcuterie board. Well, Jillian's just strapped to this fucking chair with a demon present. Well, you gotta eat. You gotta eat. Exactly. I like how the aunts were probably like, before we even deal with this shit, we Let's need to have some food. We need some tea. We need a, char we need a charcuterie board. A charcuterie board. I'm a witch. I'm a witch. Just came out. Come on, Carla. You didn't fucking know. You work with the girl. Linda, too. I always thought this was Sarah saying it, but it's not. It's right? not. It's yeah, not you're Sarah. right. Those look like science projects. Uh huh. 
the the frames they take off the walls. Do you think those were science projects the little girls did? Maybe. maybe. Oh my god, it must be so hot in that room. Oh, man. Look at all the nasty ass toads. This scene with the candles lighting on the mantle. I remember this seeing this scene specifically in a movie trailer that I went to go see a movie like with my dad. Not even this movie. It was a trailer. And I saw this scene and I was like, oh, what is this movie? What but, is I that? Never, but I never saw Practical Magic in the theater. Hmm. So I guess I missed the boat on that one. Hmm. Disappointed. I wish I did see it in the movie theater. Be free, froggies. So they're in the garden dumping them out of the garden? Yeah. I guess outside of the garden gates. I guess. Look at fucking Carla with her broom. You're telling me she's not a witch? She was prepared for this. The entire movie, she was waiting for this scene. Yeah, let's all just put our face over this caustic uh, solution. Why? Yeah, really. You know what that that reminds me of? Hmm. It looked like there were like peppercorns in there and stuff. Oh yeah. It reminds me when you go to like a hot pot, <laughs> like like those Asian hot pot restaurants. Oh. Like, you cook your own meat in the in the soup. Mm, that sounds so good right That's now. That's what it looked like. Now I want hot pot. That's Sarah. The chick that was like, I always wanted to see inside your house. She's got short hair. Short mom hair. Look at Linda's face. She yep. just goes, shit. And they bring the little ones in there too? Like, ugh. This is their initiation into mm -hmm. not being trash, which is like their, like their uh, mom and aunt. I thought you were talking about the coven, the rest of the coven, like, and you're a witch now. And that too, yeah, the rest of the coven too. Like, they all adjusted to that Latin real quick. I know! Right? And we get- I would be like, can you write that Are down, please? supposed to say the yes? De maladico. I wonder if they had to throw their brooms away after this. Ooh, or burn them. Maybe Sally was burning right. them in the pile. Yeah, <gasps> maybe. Because they have all that stank-ass energy on them. And plus, mm -hmm. remember in our brooms episode when I was telling you about- my husband and the Hindu culture mm -hmm. about when somebody dies, you're supposed to throw your brooms away and get wow. new. I wonder if they th threw all these brooms away. Yeah. Did you see that Puritan woman behind her head? I missed that in the portraits episode. We talked about the Puritan woman, didn't we? That falls and off the, the, one that, the one that falls. Yeah, but mm -hmm. uh, behind her head, you could see a close up of it. Mm. I just saw it when it fell. Oh, yeah, you could see it actually fall off the wall. What does she say? Fight this, you bitch. Fight this, you oh, okay. Bam. Ow. Man. My back hurts watching this. This is a long day, if you think about it. <laughs> what a long day. Right? It started with Gary coming for breakfast. Mm-hmm. And this. That's, this is the whole day. And Jillian was already feeling like shit because she didn't get a good night's sleep, and then she's on right. syrup duty. Yeah. And then she's got to deal with a whole fucking possession. I got a possession at six. We got to get <laughs> this breakfast rolling. Oh my god. I like how she's got the blue lace on her. And like in the books, mm -hmm. that's supposed to be for protection, right? Mm -hmm. Not really doing its job in this movie. Their wigs are so good. Like her wig, like you know that's not her hair. But like other wigs in like Twilight and like other movies are just so bad. You have the potential These were to wigs. make them fine. These were wigs? Everyone's except Sally's, they said in the commentary, where it was a wig. <sighs> I would have never even guessed. Yeah. It looks natural. Mm -hmm. We got the salt and the lime. And more possibly still laced tequila. Is that a different bottle? Does it say the Diablo on it? That is Diablo. Is it? Yeah, look. Oh, yeah. What is it? It's his brand. <laughs> Jimmy only drinks the tequila of the flowers. What do you think would happen if they did not expel his spirit? He probably would have killed Jillian, you know? <sighs> But then he wouldn't have a host body. But he's we didn't we just talk about this on the last no. one of the last episode? He would have found another host. She, that's, that's why he goes that's why he goes from woman to woman. Yeah. Those are his hosts. Did you notice that they cut themselves with the knife like backwards? Like the yeah. knife is like upside down. Oh, yeah. Such a good scene. Bye bye. I like how we're only getting flashbacks of the scenes in the movie, not anything else that happened in their lives. <laughs> it's not important. Not important. Oh, but let's bring Maria back for one last shot, even though she had nothing else to do with the entire movie. She's probably like, you broke my fucking curse? Like, <laughs> I was in turmoil when I set that curse. You motherfucker, I can't believe you broke my curse. Yeah. But they didn't break the curse. As we, far as we know. I don't think they broke that curse. Did he go yeehaw? 
Does he go, yeah? Is, is that what he does? Yeehaw! Let's clean house! You got some pine soul? <laughs> Where's the pine soul? There's the lime and the lie. Through I like the how kitchen. they're just they're just carrying this lime and lie solution with no gloves, no protection on their hands from this caustic solution. Jillian touches the bottom of the pot. Yeah. Everybody stand over the fumes. It did not just cut that looks like tomato sauce. It does. Right? Do you think they just boiled like tomatoes? Watery ass tomato sauce, yeah. Watery tomato sauce. They, it's to, it looked like Campbell's tomato soup. That's what it looked like. Like condensed soup. I freaking UPS. UPS, you were right. Was that UPS? Yeah, yeah, it was the brown truck with the yellow map on the side. It wasn't- it definitely wasn't FedEx. But does she open a FedEx? It? Wait, wait, hold on. I think it is FedEx. No, I think that's UPS. UPS has, look red, UPS has the red and brown envelopes. That's not a FedEx envelope. It's UPS. Gary, hold on. Can we look at that letter for a second? Sure. It just says Maria's Isle- Hmm. Interesting. What? Wait a minute, what? Why would the letterhead say Maria's Island if that was coming from the office of Gary Hallett? That's, that's her who address. Resides, who resides in Phoenix. That would be her address at the top. But don't you think it should, like, have Gary's letter, like, his, ad or his office address at the top? Like, a letterhead? I'm sorry. What is that zip code? What is that area code? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! 01674? Hold the Where phone. is that? Hold the phone! 01674. Oh, one, six, seven. It's Worcester. Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay. Are we going to have to do a whole episode deep dive on Worcester? <laughs> I should find that so fast. Mine's not coming up. Oh, one, six, oh. seven, four. Yeah, it's Worcester, Massachusetts. Yeah, Worcester. Hmm. Weird. That is very weird. Worcester. What's See, that? we're learning stuff all the time. Like, why would they not keep it consistent and have the 02568 zip on And Worcester's there? not even... It's not even anywhere near the coast. Maybe it is his address. Maybe he was like going back to Arizona and he stopped in Worcester. Wait, wait. But why does it say Maria's Island? Oh, and I don't know. It says Maria's Island, MA 01674. That is not the Maria's Island zip code that we did a whole entire episode on and that they had in the beginning of the movie. Like the, the sign in the town clearly said 02568. Do you think that case number? 860 is a phone number. No. I'm going to look for 860 area code. Wait, wait. Hartford. One, two, Hartford, Connecticut one, is 860. It is seven numbers, and 860 is an area, I guess, would be the area code if that were a phone number. So, so it's what, a, what does it it's say? A, it's a Hartford area code. Connecticut? Yep. What? They just used a random phone number as a case, Maybe. As a case I'm number? Maybe. Huh. Um, and they don't use James, they don't use his uh, middle initial here. It's mm -mm. just James Angelov, not James L. Angelov. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Dear Ms. Owens, after further investigation, this office concludes that James Angelov's... I like how it just says this office, not the office of Gary Hall or like right. the police department that he works for. Right. This, <laughs> this is a fake letter. He it's just was like, he put this together and was like, yeah, you're absolved of your crimes. It's huh? fine. Meanwhile, this case is up in the hotel lobby. This, but this case is probably still open. She's probably still got a warrant out for her arrest in another state and has no fucking idea because yeah. Gary wants to live happily ever <laughs> after with her. So he just threw this bullshit letter together. The zip, the area code, the zip code ain't even consistent. That's not even Maria's Island. And he was Worcester like, man Worcester. with a, with a Hartford phone number. This cause of death was accidental. Jewelry found in the ashes of the structure provided positive identification. What structure? Sincerely, Gary Hallett, Special Investigator, GLH slash CU. What, what is GLH? What is that? What does that mean? And like, there's no letterhead. There's no professional letterhead. There's no identification of the office he works for, the police department that he works for. I just find this letter very, uh hack it's a hack job that would have been some shit if they had a ups truck with a fedex envelope <laughs> that would have sent me spiraling yeah why'd they do that why why and would they mag do magpie so cute we tell you baby so she's standing on the roof again yeah letting that go bye bye michael bye bye michael. go get my go get gary for me the and moon the is in the same phase so it's is it like the next month maybe it was a little more um crescent in the last scene so you think it's only like a day? I don't know. 
Where is she coming from here? Right? She just went on a little power walk to <laughs> town have, and back. Doesn't she have Uggs on with this beautiful dress? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what? Jillian pulling her ratchet. I don't know how we saw that at one point. It's in, like, a yeah behind-the-scenes thing. Maybe. <laughs> I love how they're just the little girls are just hanging out in a tree. Climbing trees. Her hair is so cool. Yeah. And that was not a wig? This is her actual hair? Mm-hmm. Beautiful hair. Beautiful house. Beautiful, beautiful hair, beautiful house. I want to know what's in that little attic, that lighthouse portion of this house. Fucking Dwight. I think it's just the stair. Like, it would just be big enough for the stairs to come up through. Or you mean the very, very top portion? The very, very top, yeah. I want to be there on Halloween. I know. Like hot cider. Ooh, and the cookies yeah. and candy apples. Which, by the way, if you guys are listening to this, this is... Right, this episode comes out right before our very last song episode of the season, which is our All Hallows Eve episode, which yes. we wrote a whole song about this scene, yes. and it just gives gives me such feels. It is a beautiful song. It's one of my favorite. I'm glad it's on it our is. first. It's gonna be on our first EP. I can't and wait to record that ends one. And a kiss. Oh, and then we have Stevie. Lion, hold you, yes, be Hanging us out. Well, we got we got to watch it. I'm sure if we watched it again, it would be totally different things we have to say oh, about I'm it. Oh, sure. I'm sure we would ha constantly have stuff to pull apart from this movie. I never fucking noticed that friggin' zip code in that letter. It's different. I know. When we see Sally's envelope, can we see the return address? Is there anything or is there just a two address? I never looked closely at that envelope. No. But that's so crazy. We did an entire episode on Maria's Island and this damn zip code, 02568. And it's different on the on the very last letter that Gary sends her. Yep. Well, that was the first time that me and Christina watched that movie together all the way through. I did not fall asleep this time. No, but, but it, it felt lost. too fast. It did feel so fast. And the scenes go by so fast. And there's so much that we want to pick out mm -hmm. in every single scene. Like, we, could, we probably could have paused and talked about each scene in and of itself, like mm -hmm. 20 minutes each. Each right. Scene, right right and also our eyes are trying to like ping pong all around about things we've already discussed in other episodes that we're like oh i wonder something we didn't catch before but one of us brought up and we're like oh oh yeah that's in this scene yeah. just trying to like keep up with it it was yeah. very fast very fast i mean maybe we'll do this again at some point maybe we'll do it again on the second year anniversary yep. of the podcast Yay. maybe this will be our uh our thing our um uh what's it called tradition tradition, tradition. tradition. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed. That is all we have for you guys today. Just a reminder, you can check out all of the sources pertaining to today's episode via our hero page. The link is in our show notes. And thanks again to our patron and Palmiers for creating this app and keeping creators like us organized. If you guys do want to support the podcast on Patreon, you can support us for as little as $1 a month. That's our seedling tier and that gets you access to our patron-only polls where you get to weigh in on what topics you would like us to talk about next. It also gets you our monthly calendar so you can see what topics we have coming up for the month and it also gets you a welcome shout out on the show. Our $3 Lavender Bud tier get to our show notes for each episode in an aesthetically pleasing pdf our after hours posts if there's any extra tidbits or behind the scenes info pertaining to any of our episodes we'll post those along with the blog post or extra photos and access to our specially curated spotify playlists we have created playlists for our wmsr episodes as well as well as production dream playlists for each song episode and more our $5 Lilac tier gets you access to our private Facebook community where we host a monthly live stream. Plus, you'll get access to our Discord server where we host our monthly watch parties. And also on the Discord, you can join in on the discussion with other Magnolia Street neighbors via the various interesting channels and threads. And then here's the uh, $8 Rose tier. This gets you access to extra audio visual content such as a once a month full length video episode, unlimited bonus videos, uncut footage, cutting room floor footage, bloopers, outtakes, meditations, exclusive interviews, and old home videos from the vault, or spell or ritual videos 
and more. Uh, it also gets you bonus content to coincide with our song episodes, such as full-length demo streams of our original Practical Magic inspired music, plus lyric sheets, guitar chords, and original scratch demos, or bonus video performances of our songs and more. Lastly, we have our $15 Wisteria Vine tier. Just like a twisting Wisteria Vine, there's a way for you to stay connected with us, the Stinas. In this tier, we invite you to join our private Marco Polo video messaging app. The app is totally free for both Android and iOS. Sign up with your phone number or email and we will help you do the rest. This is a great way to chat with each other in a more intimate group setting face-to-face -face via video recording. We love to show each other our pets, our gardens, or anything else you'd like to share. And just a reminder that the higher the tier you sign up under, the more rewards you get because you get all of the rewards of the tiers below it. You can upgrade or downgrade or even cancel at any time. So to support the podcast, head to patreon.com slash Magnolia Street Podcast. Yeah, and there are additional ways to support us and our podcast that don't cost you any money. If you do listen on Spotify, please give us a star rating. If you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, please give us a written review. We love sharing those on our Instagram. And if you're on Instagram, we would really appreciate any reposts or blurbs about our podcast and make sure to tag us at Magnolia Street Podcast in your feed, posts, stories, and share us with your practical magic love and friends. Um, lastly, guys, a week from when you're hearing this, less than a week, our campaign is going to be wrapping up. So if you haven't looked into our concept album, our project, our campaign just yet, go to the link in the description to see our campaign page. Here, Magnolia Street, buffed and polished and beautifully recorded at Plaid Dog Studio. And um, help us get back in the studio with uh, whatever contribution you can do. Every little bit has helped so, so much. Um, but this campaign is going to run until November 2nd, I think I said. Yeah, right? and this is going to help us record four more songs. So if you guys like our first single, Magnolia Street... Your contribution could help us get back in the studio and record those. Yeah, we'd be so grateful to do that. And thanks for, thank you for everything. Thank for you for everything, guys. One, this is uh, it. All right. I know. <laughs> what the fuck? It's like we're making those goodbye noises. Like, yeah. gonna... see you later. All right. All right, man. So I guess I'll be, I'll be the one. I'll pull the bandaid off. All right. Thank you for a beautiful season. We'll see you in season two. Actually, no. We have one more song episode after this. I keep forgetting. All right. Stay tuned for our very last episode next Friday. We are dropping our last song episode of the season, All Hallows Eve. And we're going to also tell some more spooky stories on that episode. So stick around for the Halloween grand finale. And thank you so much. And without further ado, I'm Justina. I'm Christina. And we'll, we'll see, see you next, next time. time. At that house. Down the street At that house on Magnolia Street Would you go down to Magnolia Street With the wisteria girl wow And the house of magic and mystery So would you go down to Magnolia Street Hello my baby, hello my darling <laughs> Hello, my ragtime guy. I wore my pleather pants for this event. <gasps> Come on, Irene. There he is. There's Mr. Apples. Miss, Mr. Apples. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Handsome. Ka chow. Mr. Handsome Apples. It's like a third nipple. Plus Santa. Plus Santa. <laughs> <laughs> These fucking kids. You can tell them nonsense, dear. Ugh, that banister work. We're on the committee. Representing. Who's that guy? He looks shady. Whipped cream. Christina loves talking about weak ankles. You drive. Totally. Check your back seats. He's North Dakota, you asshole. Calm down. Calm down. Do you want to shorten the sentence? Wash a row, wash a row. Not a choice. Watch his bowl, Sal. Implements. He even looks fine when he's dead. I want you to be my wife. Fuck you. Dory Cantor. Dory Cantor. Jimmy, is that you? Go away. Go away. Just to get you to shut up. I get you to shut up. Agants. Here comes Gary. A little early for roses, ain't it? What is this bitch's problem? Fucking Dwight. You spin, you put your arms out, then you spin and you spin. <laughs> you sometimes fall down. Sometimes you fall, and you know you get back up and you keep on spinning. This is so intimate. Gerper Hurler. I step sad. You wasn't that syrup. Syrup. Ew. 
Holds it down. He's in the spirit world. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Louis Lamour. Goddamn second. Hold on just a goddamn second. The bad guy. That's what I do. I'm a witch. Sally just came out. Are we supposed to say this? Let's clean the house. You got some pine soul? 